Section 1 and Hashem appeared to him. There were numerous moments in history when the goal of eternal peace and unending happiness for all mankind was within reach. Both Adam and Noach had the opportunity to cause universal change and bring about endless fulfillment. The Zohar likens a path to permanent peace to the creation and care of the garden. Adam is compared to the force that causes rain water to fall upon and nourish the land, and Noah represents a person who manufactures the tools needed to tend the garden. The appearance of Abraham in our world corresponds to the force that influences the flowers to grow and blossom. Now that Abraham's name includes the additional letter he signifying the ritual of circumcision, he is now prepared to receive the great light of the Creator as expressed through the tetragram and one of the holy names of the Creator that radiates his spiritual energy. The relevance of this passage, the path to personal peace, is an arduous process. That each of us must endure, we can however accelerate this process through our connection to this portion. The light of the Creator fills our soul through the merit and power of Abraham. The energy channel through our patriarch nurtures our soul, inspiring us to seek higher levels of spiritual growth. The strength to blossom in all our spiritual endeavors is revealed through the light of these verses. One Rabashi opened the discussion. It is written, The flowers appeared on the earth. The time of the singing of the birds has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Sure, Hasherim 212. The flowers appeared on the earth means that when the Holy One blessed be, he created the world. He endowed the earth with appropriate power so that everything was in the earth, but it did not produce any fruit until Adam was created. As soon as Adam was created, everything in the earth became visible. That is, the earth began to reveal the powers and products that were implanted within it. And then it was said the flowers appear on the earth too. Similarly the heavens did not give any powers to the earth until humankind appeared as it is written and no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet grown for Hashem Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. Bear she 25 all the offspring and products were concealed in the earth they did not appear and the heavens were prevented from pouring rain on the earth because humankind did not yet exist because it had not yet been created the revelation of all things was delayed as soon as humankind appeared however the flowers appeared on the earth and all the hidden and concealed powers were now revealed three the time of the singing of the birds has come means that a recital was composed of songs and praises to the holy one blessed be this was not done before humankind was created and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. This is the word of the Holy One, blessed be he which did not exist in the world before humankind was created, but as soon as humankind appeared, everything appeared for after Adam sent everything disappeared from the world, and the earth was cursed as it is written, Cursed is the earth for your sake. Bear she 317, when you till the ground, it shall not henceforth give its strength to you. Bear she 412, and thorns also, and thistles it shall bring forth to you. Bear she 318, 5, when Noach appeared in the world, he prepared spades and hose, which means that he prepared tools to till the ground, thus it is written of him, This one shall comfort us from our work and the toil of our hands. Bear she 529, he shall give us tools so that we may be freed from production using our bare hands for which we had been destined until now. Afterwards, however, he drank of the wine and was drunk, and he was uncovered within his tent. Bear she 921, and later the people of the world sent before the Holy One blessed be he and the powers of the earth disappeared again thus all the improvements of Noach were lost and so it remained until Abraham appeared six as soon as Abraham appeared the flowers appeared on the earth this means that the powers of the earth were amended and revealed the time of the singing of the birds also pruning has come referring to the time when the Holy One blessed be he told him to circumcise himself the term pruning alludes to the removal of the foreskin thus the time was ripe for the covenant to appear in Abraham meaning when he was circumcised only then was the verse the flowers appeared fulfilled through him and the word of the Holy One blessed be he was revealed openly to him as it is written and Hashem appeared to him after he was circumcised seven rabbi laser began to explain that this verse refers to events after the circumcision of Abraham before the circumcision the Holy One blessed be he spoke to him only through the lower grade Spoke through a vision which refers to the Mukba while it is still at the stage of the illumination of the left side as it is written after these things the word of Hashem came to Abram in a vision the upper grades were not attached to this grade which means that the upper grades of Zeir and Ben were not attached to the Mukba as soon as Abraham was circumcised the flowers appeared on the earth these are the lower grades brought forth and established by the lower grade that is called a vision so that they may be united with all the upper grades eight the time of the singing of the birds also pruning has come alludes to the time of pruning and cutting of the bad branches which are the branches of the foreskin because this clipper was in charge before he was circumcised this is according to the secret of the verse a whisperer separates close friends Mishlei 1628 and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land this is a voice that comes from the innermost aspect of all the voice alludes to Zeir and Pen and the innermost aspect of all is Ima from whom Zeir and Pen emanates and comes forth so that voice Zeir and Pen is heard in our land which is the Mukba meaning that Zeir and Pen mated with the Mukba by the main Mukba female waters that were elevated through the precept of circumcision and this is the voice that cuts the word into an utterance this means that it has the ability to articulately cut the speech thereby achieving its perfection non come. And behold as long as Abraham was not circumcised only that grade dwelt upon him as we explained that is the grade of Mukba while she was called a vision but after he was circumcised it is written and Hashem appeared to him but it is not mentioned to whom because it is not written and Hashem appeared to Abram and he answers if it were written to Abram then what greater sort of praise would there be than that which existed before he was circumcised because even then it was written and Hashem appeared to Abram, Bereshi 12, 7, 10, the words, and Hashem appeared to him contain a secret. This means that he appeared to that grade that spoke to him. In other words, Zeir Anpin, which is why Yudhi Havah appeared to him, namely to the Mukba. This had not happened before he was circumcised when the Mukba was still separated from Zeir Anpin, and now the voice that is Zeir Anpin was revealed and was associated with speech, which is the Mukba, when he spoke with him. Thus Abraham benefited from the mating of male and female and became a chariot for both of them. Therefore, it is written, and Hashem appeared to him, which alludes to the mating of male and female. 11, the verse, and he sat in the tent door. Bereshi 181 says, and he but does not identify him, and he replies, the verse reveals a wisdom that indicates that all the grades rested upon that lower grade after Abraham was circumcised. So the phrase teaches us that, and he referring to the Mukba in the tent door. As she became the gateway for all the grades come and behold and Hashem appeared to him this is the secret of the voice namely Zeir and Ben that is heard and attached to the utterance speech namely Malchut and revealed through it 12 in the verse and he sat in the tent door of the words and he alluded to the upper world namely Ima that stands over him referring to the Mukba to shine upon him the Mukba is described as the tent door because she has become the gateway for the lights of words in the heat of the day mean that the right side which is Jesus shown this is the grade to which Abraham cleaved another explanation of in the heat of the day is that it refers to the time when one grade approached another with great passion as Zeir and Ben approached the Mukba then they were described by the words in the heat of the day 13 and explaining the words appeared to him Rabbi Abba said that before Abraham was circumcised he was blocked from receiving the supernal Lights as soon as he was circumcised everything appeared including all the lights as his cover was removed and the session arrested upon him in full perfection as should properly become and behold it is written and he sat in the tent door he refers to the upper world to bind that rest upon the lower world which is the mukba he asks when does bind rest upon the mukba and he replies this is why the verse concludes within the heat of the day dash when the passion of a certain righteous who is the yizid of zeir and is aroused to rest in the lower world which is the mukba that is when there is a mating between male and female and the mukin abided well within the mukba 14 immediately after the mating of male and female was completed it is written and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him bereshit 18 2 and he asks who are these three men and he says they are abraham it's hakin yaakov or chisit bura and tifaret of zeir and that are Named Abraham Itzhak and Yaikov, and he saw them standing over that grade which is the Mukba, and from them the Mukba draws sustenance and nourishment. 15 And then when he saw them, he ran to meet them, because the passionate desire of the
Mamre gave him good advice about being circumcised when the Holy One blessed be he told Abraham to circumcise himself. Abraham consulted his friends or told him you are more than 90 years old and you shall pain yourself. 18 Mamre however said to him do not forget the day when the Chaldeans threw you into the furnace of fire and famine took over the world as it is written and there was a famine in the land and Abram went down into Egypt. Bear she 12 10 and you smote all those kings that your men pursued and the Holy One blessed be he saved you from them also that nobody could do you any harm so rise and fulfill the precept of your master the Holy One blessed be he said to Mamre you advised him to perform the circumcision by your life I shall reveal myself to him only in your chamber this is why it is written by the terebinths of Mamre section 2 the soul when it rises from earth to heaven the Zohar presents the spiritual significance behind the Torah story and speaks of Abraham sitting under a hot blazing sun when three people come to visit him the blazing sun is a metaphor for the immense light of the creator revealed through the divine instrument of the tetragrammaton and correspondingly through the words of the Zohar the relevance of this passage the phrase blazing sun indicates that an extraordinary amount of spiritual light is suddenly being revealed in this specific section of the Torah this concept can be Understood through the analogy of a light bulb, a bulb glows at a constant level of illumination just before the bulb burns out. However, there is a momentary burst of added light. The Zohar is our instrument to capture the intense spark of light that is momentarily shining forth in this specific verse of the Torah. Midrash Hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 19. The sages began their interpretation of this passage with the verse, Your oils are fragrant for your flowing oil. You are renowned Sher Hashirim. 13. Our sages have taught that when the soul of a human being rises from earth to heaven, referring to the time when a person sleeps at night, it stands in the divine illumination. The Holy One, blessed be he, visits at 20. Come and listen. Rabbi Shimon Bar said, When the soul of a righteous person stands in the place where the Sheshanah of his blessed glory rests, meaning that it is worthy of receiving the illumination of Chakma, which is the secret of standing. Upright and is worthy of sitting by her to receive the garment of Shesedim, which is the secret of sitting. The Holy One, blessed be he who is Zeir and calls upon the patriarchs who are Shesed, Bura, and Tiferet is three columns, and he says to them, Go and visit so and so the righteous person who has come and welcome him in peace in my name. This means that the three columns should pass on the illumination of the mating, which is called peace. The words in my name refer to the Mukba and they claim it is not proper for a father to go and visit his child, but rather the child should seek after his father to see him. 21 The Holy One, blessed be he, then calls upon Yaakov and says to him, You who suffered the sorrow of raising children, go and welcome so and so the righteous person who has come here, and I shall go along with you as it is written, Those who seek your face, Yaakov, Sila, Tehillim, 24 6. It does not say seek in the singular, but in the plural because it refers to the souls. Of the righteous Yaakov welcomes as they seek his welcome. Rabbi Shia said this we understand from the first part of the verse as it is written. This is the generation of them that seek him, which teaches us that the intention of the verse alludes to the souls of the righteous, the seekers, namely the leaders of the generation. Twenty two Rabbi Yaakov said in the name of Rabbi Shia Yaakov, the patriarch is the throne of glory and the teachings of Eliyahu who also stayed Yaakov, the patriarch is a throne by himself as it is written. Then will I remember my covenant with Yaakov. Vayikra 2642 The Holy One blessed be he established the covenant with Yaakov alone more than the covenant he established with all his fathers. He made him a throne of glory for his divine presence to rest upon distinguishing him from his predecessors. And the reason is that his forefathers who are Abraham and Itzhak are not able to shine without him. Therefore he and himself includes their lights as well as his own. And thus becomes a throne to himself. 23 Rabbi Eliezer was sitting and studying Torah when Rabbi Akiva arrived. He said to him, Sir, what are you studying? He replied, The passage where it is written, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Ishmuel 28 What does and to make them inherit the throne of glory mean? This is Yaakov the patriarch for whom he made a throne of glory by himself that would receive Torah for the souls of the righteous. 24 And the Holy One blessed be he goes with Yaakov on the first day of every month. And when the soul sees the glory of the mirror which is the Shechinah of Master, then the soul praises him and bows down in front of the Holy One blessed be he. This is the meaning of bless Hashem my soul. Talim 1041 25 Rabbi Akiva said, The Holy One blessed be he stands over the soul and the soul begins by saying, Hashem my Elohim, you are very great. Continuing with all the verses to the end as the passage reads, Let the sinners be consumed. Out of the earth of the 35 Rabbi Akiva continued as well as this it praises the Holy One blessed be he thanks him for the body that is left in this world and says bless Hashem my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name Tehillim 103 one the words all that is within me allude to the body at first the soul praises and thanks the Holy One blessed be he for its own achievements then it says bless Hashem my soul Hashem my Elohim you are very great and then it praises and thanks him for the body meaning that the splendor of the soul is drawn downward to shine upon the body and then it says bless Hashem my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name these praises are offered for the light of the body 26 and the Holy One blessed by he goes along with Yaakov how do we know this from the passage where it is written and Hashem appeared to him by the terebinths of Mamre this is Yaakov who is called Mamre so the Holy One blessed be he did indeed go with Yaakov and he asks wherefore is the name Mamre and he answers because Yaakov inherited 200 worlds in Eden and he is the throne because he became the throne of glory and Rabbi Yitzhak explains the numerical value of Mamre is 281 so there are the 200 of Eden which Yaakov attained as it is written and those that guard the fruit thereof 200 sure Hashirim 812 and 81 is the numerical value of Kai's throne thus Mamre's numerical value of 281 comes from the 200 worlds of Eden which is the secret of Chakma that is called Eden and from the throne which is the secret of Shesedim that clothed Chakma for this reason it is said and Hashem appeared to him by the terebinths of Mamre and for this reason Yaakov is called Mamre he includes the aspect of Eden and the aspect of the throne together which are the secret of Mamre hence and Hashem appeared to him 27 Rabbi Yehuda asked what is the meaning of by the terebinths Hebelonia if Mamre is Yaakov why does it Say the terebinths of Mamre and he answers it meant to say his might as it is written by the hands of the mighty one of Yaakov. Bear she 4924 thus the terebinths of Mamre bears resemblance to the mighty Yaakov because Elonia means mighty and strong and Mamre is Yaakov the verse and he sat in the tent doors as it is written Hashem who had me shall abide in your tabernacle or tent. Tehillim 151 this means that the tent door is the secret of the illumination of the right. Column which is the secret of the covered chesed in the verse in the heat of the day is as written but to you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in its wings. Malachi 320 this refers to the illumination of the left column and this is the secret of the illumination of Chakma without chesed which is described as the sun coming out of its sheath because the light of Chakma does not shine without the sheath of chesed and when it does shine without. Chesedim it burns according to the secret of the verse in the heat of the day is when the wicked are condemned by it but the righteous are healed by it because they elevate the main and female waters and draw down the Chesedim in order to clothe Chakma 28 Rabbi Yochain and Benzakai said at that time when the soul is at the stage of the heat of the day the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and shares his abundance with the soul and when the patriarchs of Abraham Itzhak and Yaakov heard the Holy One blessed be he referring to the entirety of Zeir and moved towards the soul meaning that the patriarchs were aware that the soul was in the state of the heat of the day and in need of the place of the clothing of Chesedim dash they asked Yaakov to go with them and welcome the soul in peace 29 and Abraham and Itzhak stand over the soul this means that after Yaakov he shared the abundance of Chesedim by welcoming it with peace the two columns of Abraham and it's Hak shown upon IT as it is written and he lifted up his eyes and looked dash referring to the soul and lo three men stood over him the three men are the patriarchs Abraham it's Hak and Yaakov who stood by him observing the soul and the good deeds it has performed this means that they
Righteousness determines the particular course the soul travels and the heights it can attain the higher the soul ascends is directly proportionate to the measure of light it receives this portion awakens a deeper awareness of the light our soul can achieve if it is righteous as well as the ability to ascend to greater heights and receive greater revelations of spiritual energy during sleep 31 the verse and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him refers to those who criticize his behavior and examine his deeds as he confesses them with his mouth and because the soul sees all this it leaves the body and reaches the gullet pharynx where it remains until it confesses and retells all that the body did together with it in this world and the soul of the righteous is happy with what it has done and is happy with its deposit we have learned that rabbi Itzhak said the soul of the righteous feels great desire for the moment when it shall leave this world which is Worthless so that it may enjoy itself in the world to come. Section 4 When Rabbi Elizer became ill, the Zohar recounts the death of Rabbi Elizer, the teacher and master of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was the teacher and master of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yukai, the author of the Zohar. When a righteous soul departs this world, he reveals his greatest amount of light and energy. This light is the total accumulation of his spiritual accomplishments during his lifetime. In addition, the light that Rabbi Elizer was unable to reveal during his lifetime also became manifest at the moment of his passing. Sadly, Rabbi Akiva was not present when his master left this world. The grief Rabbi Akiva endured was twofold first, for the physical loss of Rabbi Elizer, and second, for the potential volume of light that would not be revealed to mankind. It is this unrevealed light that gives the force of darkness a stronger hold on the world. Rabbi Akiva's pain was for the repercussions. Of this increased darkness and the suffering mankind would inevitably endure Kabbalistically the pain experienced by a devout person serves as a vessel to draw light a counterbalance that arouses the positive energy of the creator in our physical world the relevance of this passage all of our deeds and behavioral actions in this physical realm of existence bear positive and negative repercussions both personally and globally by raising our consciousness towards the importance of positive deeds and the potential of positive deeds left unfinished this portion stimulates personal change in order to reveal greater spiritual light our own vessel is expanded by connecting to Rabbi Akiva's pain for the lack of light in our present world 32 the sages discussed the time when the great Rabbi Elizer became ill and was about to die the day which Shabbat even Rabbi Elizer made his son Horkinos sit to his right even revealed great and deep secrets to him but Horkinos's mind was not Ready to hear him at first because he thought that his father's mind was not sufficiently clear only after he saw that his father's mind was completely clear did he receive 189 sublime secrets from him. 33 when he reached the secret of the marble stones that are mixed with the supernal waters Rabbi Elizer wept and stopped talking he said get up and go over there my son he asked him why he replied I see that I am soon to pass from the world go along and tell your mother that my teeth island shall disappear and reach a higher place in other words he gave her a hint about his approaching death and after I have departed from this world I shall come to see them the members of the family but they should not cry because those above are near not those below though the human mind cannot grasp this 34 as they were still sitting the wise men of the generation came by to visit him however he cursed them for not coming to serve him as we have learned it is greater to serve the Torah than study. In the meantime Rabbi Akiva arrived he asked Akiva Akiva why have you not come to attend to me he responded Rabbi I had no spare time he was angry and said indeed I wonder whether you shall die naturally on that account he placed a curse on him so that his death would be the worst of them all this means that he placed a curse on the other wise men who did not come to serve him so that they also would not die naturally and he said that the death of Rabbi Akiva shall be the cruelest of them. All 35 Rabbi Akiva went and said to him Rabbi teach Torah to me Rabbi Elizer opened his mouth and as he spoke about the works of the divine chariot the fire surrounded them both the wise men said from this we learn that we are not worthy nor do we have the privilege to listen to the words of his teaching so they sat outside the gate after everything was over the fire disappeared 36 and he taught the secret of impure white spots macula as bright as the snow 300 halachic rules and 216. Explanations of the verses of Sher Hasharim Rabbi Akiva's eyes poured with tears like water then the fire reappeared and surrounded them both again when he reached the verse stay me with flagons comfort me with apples for I am sick with love Sher Hasharim 25 Rabbi Akiva could not bear any more he raised his voice and burst out bellowing like a bull and he could not speak out of fear of the Shechinah that was there 37 and he taught him all of the deep and sublime secrets that exist in Sher Hasharim and made him solemnly swear that he would never use any of these verses if he did then holy one blessed be he would destroy the world because of him as it is not his desire that people use it because of its supreme holiness afterward Rabbi Akiva left and burst out crying his eyes pouring with tears and said woe my teacher woe my teacher for the world is to remain an orphan without you all the other wise men entered and stood by him they asked him questions about Torah and he Answer 38 Rabbi Elizer felt confined he raised both his arms and laid them on his heart he said woe to the world the upper world has again concealed and hidden all light and illumination from the lower world just as it was before he came into the world woe to my two arms woe to the two parts of the Torah as you shall be forgotten by the world on this day and the Zohar states that Rabbi Yitzhak said during the entire lifetime of Rabbi Elizer the halasha would shine from his mouth as on the day it was given on Mount Sinai 39 Rabbi Elizer said I have learned so much Torah gaining wisdom and serving sages that even if all the people of the world were to be writers there would not be enough to write of it and my pupils have no lack of my wisdom only as a coal pencil mascara in the eye as much as a teardrop that is shed by an eye when a drop of coal enters it and I lack very little of the wisdom of my teachers perhaps only as much as a person can drink from the sea and the Zohar concludes that he said this only to show gratitude to his teachers and to hold them in more favor than himself. This means that what he has omitted from his teachers' wisdom, which is as much as a person can drink from the sea, is more than a drop of cold pencil in the eye, which he said of his students' omissions. Thus he shows that he feels gratitude to his teachers and is grateful to them more than to himself. 40 And they were asking him the law of footwear of you on the Levirate. Right, if IT becomes defiled as his soul left him, he announced it is pure. Rabbi Akiva was not there when he died as the day of Shabbat ended. Rabbi Akiva found him dead as he ripped his clothes and tore his flesh. The blood started to roll over his beard. He wept and shouted as he stepped outside and said, Heavens, O heavens, tell the sun and the moon that the light that shone more than day is dark. And 41 Rabbi Yehuda said, When the soul of a righteous person wishes to leave the body, it feels. Happy because the righteous is confident that he shall receive his reward as he dies therefore it is written when he saw them he ran to meet them referring to the three angels that accompanied the Shechinah as she came to receive his soul with happiness as he welcomed the angels where does he welcome them as we have learned at the tent door where he bowed himself toward the ground toward the Shechinah this means that the soul bowed to the Shechinah that had come to it as the Shechinah is called earth 42 Rabbi Yochanan then opened the discussion by quoting until the day breaks and the shadows flee away turn my beloved and be you like a row or a young heart sure Hasherim 217 until the daybreak is a warning for a person who is still in this world it is like the blink of the eye come and behold what does it say even if he lived a thousand years twice he lived 66 on the day of his death it all seems as one day to him 43 Rabbi Shimon said the soul of a person warns him and says until the daybreak and it shall seem to you as the blink of the eye while you are still in this world the words and the shadows flee away are equivalent to the verse that reads because our days upon earth are a shadow of 89 so I beg of you turn my beloved and be you like a row or a young heart 44 there is another explanation for until the daybreak according to Rabbi Shimon ben Bazi this is a warning for humankind while still in this world which is like the blink of the eye just as a row is swift of blink so you should be as swift as a row or a young heart in performing your masters which is so that you may inherit the world to come which is mountains of spices called the mountain of Hashem the mountain of pleasure the mountain of delight end of Midrash Hanilam section 5 and lo three men as the white light of the sun refracts into the seven colors of the rainbow the spiritual light of the creator refracts into many colors that express all his various attributes Kabbalistically physical light is merely a lower
Frequencies spoken of in this portion The influence of these forces in our personal life is augmented when we understand their purpose and relevance in the world Citrate Torah concealed Torah 45 The authority and will of the king namely the Shechinah appears in three colors and these are the three colors of the eye white red and green One color represents the eye sight from afar at this distance the eye is unable to clearly visualize what it sees until it achieves partial vision by Contracting itself thus it is written Hashem has appeared from afar to me Yermeah 312 This is the secret of the illumination of the central column as there can be no revelation of the lights without IT 46 The second color represents the eye sight when the eye is closed this color is seen by the eye only through a slight shutting and therefore it is not a clear vision The way to see is by closing the eye and then opening it a little to thereby receive its sight because this vision is not clear it requires interpretation in order to understand what the eye has perceived therefore it is written what do you see your male 113 this is the secret of the illumination of the left column when the lights are stopped because of the lack of chesedim 47 the third color represents the brilliance of the mirror which can be seen only when the eye is shut and it is rolled backward as a result of this rolling the shining mirror is seen this is the secret of the illumination of the right column but the eye is able to absorb this third color only by envisioning the illumination of the brilliance by shutting the eye which means the second color is included in the first color 48 therefore it is written the hand of Hashem was upon me Yeshitzkel 371 and but the hand of Hashem was strong upon me Yeshitzkel 314 this ability to see by shutting the eye is accomplished by willpower and is related to Bura and all these are conceived by the true prophets namely the first Two colors and only Moshe the most faithful had the ability to see high above to the point at which the brilliance is not seen at all. This refers to the third color which is the shining mirror of him. It is written my servant Moshe is not so who is faithful in all my house. Bimidbar 127 49 the words appear to him mean that the Shechinah appeared to him through those grades that are attached to her own aspects referring to Michael on the right side Gabriel on the left side revile to the front and Uriel to the back. This is why the Shechinah appeared to him by the terebinth lit among those oak trees the shadows of the world to show them the first circumcision the holy imprint according to the secret of the faith in the whole world. 50 of the words and he sat in the tent door he asks where is the tent door and he answers this is the place that is called the covenant which is the secret of faith namely the nook of the phrase and the heat of the day refers to the secret too. Which Abraham cleaved, which I asked the might of the right side, his own grade 51. The tent door is the secret of the gate of righteousness, the gateway to the faith, which is the Nukba, and the secret of the judgments of the Nukba, and it is called the gateway because Abraham entered the holy imprint of circumcision there. Without this, he would not have entered the covenant. This is why it is called the gateway, and the heat of the day refers to the aspect of the righteous, the grade of the united oneness, which is entered and joined by whoever is circumcised and is signed by the holy imprint because the foreskin has been removed from him. He enters into the illumination of these two grades, the righteous and righteousness, which are the secret of faith. 52. The verse and lo, three men refers to the three angels' messengers who clothe themselves with air and come down to this world in a human image, and they were three just as there are three above, namely Chesed, Bira, and Tiferet of Zeir and the rainbow the Nukba appears only in three colors white red and green this is exactly like the three colors of Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and 53 and these three people are the three colors white red and green the white color is Michael because he is on the right side as he comes from Chesed of Zeir and which is white the red color is Gabriel who is on the left side as he comes from Bura of Zeir and which is red the green color is Raphael who comes from Tiferet of Zeir and which is green and these are the three colors of the rainbow and the rainbow which is the Nukba does not appear and is not seen without them therefore it is written appear to him because the appearance of the Shechinah is seen by these three colors in other words the verse and lo three men stood by him explains the verse and Hashem appeared to him so and Hashem appeared means that the Shechinah was revealed to him and this revelation was made by the appearance of the three Colors of which the verse concludes, and lo, three men stood by him, dash, namely Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, 54, and each of the three angels served a different purpose. Raphael, who governs the power to heal, helped Abraham recover from the circumcision, another Michael, who came to inform Sarah that she shall bear a son, rules over the right side, all the abundance and the blessings of the right side are handed over to him, 55, and Gabriel, who came to overturn SDOM, rules over the left side, and is responsible for all judgments in the world as judgments come from the left side, and the execution is done by the angel of death, the king's chief baker, who executes the sentences that are passed under Gabriel's rule, 56, each and every angel accomplished his mission as his proper. Gabriel goes on his mission to the holy Neshama, while the angel of death goes on his mission to the Nefesh of the evil inclination, in spite of all this, the soul does not leave the body until it sees the Shechina. 57 When Abraham saw the three angels join one another he saw the Shechinah in her own colors and he knelt because the angels are the three colors of Zeir and in which the Shechinah clothes herself as it is written and knelt himself toward the ground this is similar to what is described of Yaakov of whom it is written and Yisrael knelt himself upon the bed's head Beershe 4731 that is he bowed to the Shechinah which is called the bed's head so here as well he bowed to the Shechinah 58 and he addressed the Shechinah by the name Adonai as he said Adonai my lords if now I have found favor Beershe 183 in the same manner the righteous is addressed who is Yisrael of Zeir and called Adon master then the Shechinah is called Adon the lord of all the earth Yahashua 311 because she is lit up by the righteous who is called Adon master and shines in her colors the colors are drawn from the three columns of Zeir and because she reaches perfection on high through them 59 from this we learn that the mirror of below referring to the Shechinah is drawn from Bina above these colors which are the secret of the three angels acquire the power to draw the lights from above from those supernal sources that are the three columns of Bina itself 60 because they accompany and support her with everything she is called Adonai this name was revealed to Abraham entirely through the secrets of the supernal ones by the lights of Bina and they appeared to him completely exposed which did not happen before he was circumcised clearly before he was circumcised the holy one blessed be he did not wish to issue a holy seed from him however as soon as he was circumcised the holy seed immediately came forth that seed was its hawk 61 because of this because of his circumcision the Shechinah appeared to him in those holy grades in keeping with the secret of the verse and the wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament Daniel 123 the first Brightness is the brilliance that shines when it is lit up the second brightness lights up shines and sparkles in many directions 62 the brightness moves up and then down shines throughout all aspects is drawn and comes forth and never ceases to shine and the brightness procreates 63 this brightness which is hidden and concealed glows brighter than any sparkle which means that its sparkle is greater than any other sparkle in the world and all the grades are located within it it goes forth and disappears concealed yet exposed sees yet does not see this book which refers to the border or limitation as the Hebrew term means both book and border is the source of the well which is the nukva of Zeir and it comes out to shine only during the day because Zeir and shines during the day and it disappears at night when he does not shine and he delights himself at midnight with the company of the souls of the righteous that are the offspring he issued in the garden of Eden 64 the brightness shines and lights up the entire Torah which is the secret of Chakma to all this is seen as it receives Chakma because all the colors are concealed within it it is called Adonai the three colors are seen below it and three colors are seen above it everything is received from the three above and still they are not seen because they do not receive Chakma directly themselves and it sparkles with twelve sparkles and lights that emanate from it all together there are thirteen according to the secret of oneness that includes them all by the secret of the holy name Yudhi Hebabhe within the secret of the endless world Hebain Sof that which includes them all is called Yudhi Hebabhe while the twelve grades of the Nukva are called Adonai 65 when the lower brightness which is the brightness of the twelve called Adonai joined the upper brightness which is Zeir and called Yudhi Hebabhe they formed one name through which the true prophets attain there Prophecies and look into the supernal brightness. The name is Yadalaf Hedalaf Babnan Hayyad, which is a combination of Yudhi Hebabhe and Adonai. Through this combined name, they achieve sublime visions because by this name
not revealed 68 nine names are engraved in 10 AAIS Kedar Yad AIS Chakma AAIS Asher AAIS Banya Yad Hebab Hey whose vowels are like Elohim IS Yisrael Sab and Tabun LIS Jesus Elohim IS Buri Yad Hebab AIS Tiferex OT IS Net Sash and Hot and Adon and Shade both refer to Yezid Adon is the crown of Yezid Shade is Yezid itself 69 these 10 names are each engraved according to its aspect and all these names were engraved and entered the Ark of it. Covenant which one is it? It is Adonai the one that was revealed and appeared after the circumcision to Abraham. In other words, the name Adonai is the secret of the Mukva after she had received the other ten names which are all the grades of Atzalut. But before he was circumcised, he did not achieve the secret of seeing until the circumcision he saw only through the Mukva without her being attached to the upper grade. Seventy Michael is the name of the right that is Jesus which cleaves to it. Name Adonai and serves it more than the other angels wherever the secret of the name Adonai appears so does Michael. If Michael disappears so does Elohim which is the Mukva together with Shade which is Yezid. Seventy one in the beginning there were three men who were dining while enclosed in an image of air. They most certainly ate because their fire ate and consumed everything thus bringing contentment to Abraham and he clarifies that they were truly fire. This fire was covered by an image of it. Here and was not seen the food that they ate was a burning fire and they ate it and Abraham received pleasure from the 72 as the Shechina departed it is written and Elohim went up from Abraham Bereshit 1722 so Michael immediately departed with her as it is written and there came two angels to SDOM Bereshit 191 at the beginning it is written three but now it reads two angels from this we conclude that the angel Michael who is to the right also departed as the Shechina rose and only two angels remained 73 the angel seen by Minoch who descended and was enclosed by Israel he did not come with those angels of Abraham but came down on his own to inform Minoch who is a descendant of Dan that he shall have a son 74 because Minoch is not as important a man as Abraham it is not written that he the angel ate rather it is written though you detain me I will not eat of your bread Shoftim 1316 and for it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven that the angel of Hashem ascended in the flame of the altar of twenty here however it is written and Elohim went up from Abraham it is not written that the angels departed from Abraham this is because Michael left with Elohim while Raphael and Gabriel remained seventy five of them it is written and there came two angels to SDOM at evening at evening when judgment hovers above the world and afterward one angel departed and Gabriel alone remained to overthrow SDOM because of the merit of Abraham Lot was saved therefore he was also privileged to have the two angels come and visit him and of Sitray Torah section six who shall ascend into the mountain of Hashem when an individual strives to understand his purpose in life and seeks the truth of the Creator his soul will seek to reunite with the light of the Creator upon leaving this world unfortunately the vast majority of mankind journeys through this physical world without any inkling of his truth. Purpose or understanding as to the meaning of his existence. Consequently, a man who directs no effort towards spiritual enlightenment and blindly pursues the material world will automatically seek the path of negativity when it departs its physical existence. The paths of the spiritual world mirror the pathways we forge in the physical world. The relevance of this passage: there are definite negative blockages within our consciousness that repress our intrinsic desire to seek the meaning of our existence and purpose in life. By helping to remove these impediments, the words and wisdom of this passage stimulate us to pursue the truth of our being. It is a well-known Kabbalistic principle that states: the more we seek to comprehend our purpose and the reality of the Creator, the more spiritual light we receive. Seventy-six. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the text: "Who shall ascend into the mountain of Hashem, or who shall stand in His holy place?" Tehillim two hundred and forty-three. Come and behold, no man is aware of. The reason for his existence in the world men do not seek to know the purpose of their lives on earth as the days pass by with no return they rise up and stand before the Holy One blessed be he as they were all created and have actual existence of their own how do we know that they were created because it is written the days were created Tehillim 139677 and when the days depart from this world they all approach the supernal king as it is written and the days drew close for David to die. I may lash him 21 and the days drew close for Yaakov to die Bereshit 4729 when a person is in this world he is not aware of nor does he look for the reason he was created for him every day is considered as if it passes by an emptiness and when the soul leaves this world it does not recognize the path through which it is elevated because the path that leads up to the place where the luminous sublime soul shine which is the garden of Eden is not shown to all souls after it departs from. Him the soul follows the same way that person followed while in this world 79 come and behold if a person is drawn after the Holy One blessed be he and longs for him while in this world then later when he departs from this world he also follows the Holy One blessed be he and he is shown a path to climb that rises upward to the place where souls shine in other words it follows and continues the same path that his desire followed and longed for each day while in this world 80 Rabbi Abba said one day I came upon a town that belonged to the children of the east they shared with me a part of the wisdom that they knew from antiquity then they searched for books of their own wisdom and gave me 181 inside this book it was written that according to the intention of a person's desire in this world he draws a spirit from above upon himself similar to the desire that he clung to if his desire is to achieve something holy and divine then he draws the same from above and brings it down upon himself 82 if he wishes to cleave to the other side and is intent upon it he draws the same from above down and brings it upon himself they used to say that to draw something down from above depends mainly on speech deed and the wish to cleave to it this is how that certain side that he cleaves to is drawn down from above 83 and I have found in that book all the rites and ceremonies for worshipping the stars and constellations as well as what is required to worship them and how to direct one's will toward them in order to, to draw them closer 84 in the same manner for whoever desires to cling to the Holy Spirit above it depends on the act words and the intent of the heart so that he may succeed in drawing it down upon himself so that he may cling to it 85 and they were saying whatever path a person follows in this world is the path along which he is drawn when he leaves this world and whatever he clung to and pursued while in this world he clings to in it. World of truth if to holiness then to holiness if to impurity then to impurity 86 if to holiness then he is drawn toward that same side of holiness he clings to it above and becomes a serving minister before the holy one blessed be he among all the angels and so he is attached to the supernal world and stands among those holy beings as it is written then I will give you access among these that stand by Zechariah 37 87 and so in the same manner if he has cleaved to impurity while in this world then he is drawn to the impure side he becomes one of them and is attached to them and they are called the demons of people so when he departs from this world they take him and cast him into Gehenna into that place where the impure who have defiled themselves and their spirits are judged and punished he then clings to them becoming a demon just like the demons of the world 88 I said to them my sons the sayings of this book are close to the sayings of the Torah but you should stay away from these books so that you will not be attracted to those beliefs and all those aspects that are mentioned there otherwise heaven forbid you may abandon the service of the Holy One blessed be 89 people are led astray because of these books the people of the East were wise and inherited this wisdom from Abraham who gave it to the sons of the concubines as it is written but to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from his son while he had lived eastward to the East country Bereshit 256 afterward they developed their wisdom in many directions 90 but the seat of its hawk the portion of Yaakov is not so as it is written and Abraham gave all that he had to its hawk but 5 this is the holy portion of faith that Abraham cleaved to and from the side and faith did Yaakov come what is written about him it is written and behold Hashem stood above him Bereshit 2813 and but you Israel are my servant Yaakov. Yeshua 418 for this reason a person should be drawn after the Holy One blessed be he and cleave to him always as it is written and to him shall you cleave Devarim 10 20 91 come and behold it is written who shall ascend into the mountain of Hashem Tehillim 243 and after this he continues to explain that he that has clean hands this means that he has not made an idol with his hands and his hands did not hold what they should not have held furthermore it should be explained that the phrase clean hands means his hands were not defiled and he did not defile the body with them as those who
has not lifted up his soul in vain he shall receive the blessing from Hashem section 7 and lo 3 Manand 8 a discussion arises as to whether Abraham the patriarch perceived the three angels Michael Gabriel and Raphael as angelic entities or as physical beings according to the Zohar Abraham was able to perceive them as angels by virtue of his circumcision which removed negativity and elevated his consciousness the lesson being conveyed concerns. The importance of a person's consciousness and its ability to influence perception the relevance of this passage two people often perceive a singular image or event differently because their individual consciousness are on two different levels both perceptions are indeed correct however one perspective is limited if it remains on a lower level of consciousness and the other is far-reaching if it occupies a higher level achieving transcendence over this physical realm by raising our own. Consciousness is the intent of this portion we achieve a heightened sense of awareness perceiving the true spiritual reality during the day-to-day -day rigors of physical existence 93 come and behold after Abraham had circumcised himself he sat down and was in pain the Holy One blessed be he sent him three visible angels to inquire of his well-being you may wonder how they were visible for who is able to see angels as it is written who makes his angel spirits also wins Tehillim 1044 94. And he replies he certainly did see them because they came to earth in the image of men and it should not be hard for you to understand because they are definitely holy spirits but when they come down to this world they enclose themselves with fear and the elements of covering and enveloping until they appear to people exactly in their image 95 come and behold Abraham saw them in the image of men and even though he was in pain because of the circumcision he ran forth to greet them so that he would not miss anything and would not behave differently than before his circumcision when he always accepted and welcomed new guests 96 Rabbi Shimon said he definitely did see them in the form of angels this can be understood from the words and he said me lords have Adonai with the letters Aleph and Dalit these letters which form the name of the Shechinah are the first two letters of the name Adonai for it was the Shechinah that was approaching and these angels were her supports and thrown there are the three colors white red and green that are under the Shechinah 97 and he saw that they were angels because after he was circumcised he was able to see what he did not see before he was circumcised at first he thought they were human beings later he realized that they were angels on a mission from the Holy One blessed be he they fulfilled this mission when they said to him where is Sarah your wife Bereshit 189 and informed him about its hot 98 in the word Allah to him which appears in the verse and they said to him the letters with thoughts are Alakya and Bob and the sign Ao alludes to what is above implying the Holy One blessed be he and they asked about him Aolud where is he and he replied behold in the tent this means that he was attached to the Shechinah because here it is written in the tent and there it is written the tabernacle tent that shall not be taken down the Shea 3320 thus it refers to the Shechinah just as in it. Letter verse come and behold because Ao has dots already why is it then written I where and he replies because the secret of the faith is the union of the male and female as one this is why they ask of the Holy One blessed be he where is he Ao and they ask of the Shechinah where is Gayh this means that they aroused him to form a union of the Holy One blessed be he with his Shechinah the verse continues and he said behold in the tent because therein lies the bond of Everything namely the Mukba who is called the tent and the Holy One blessed be he 99 of the question where is she he asks did the celestial angels not know that Sarah was in the tent if so why then is it written that they asked about her saying I where and he replies the angels have no knowledge of this world except what is given them to know come and behold for I will pass through the land of Egypt I am Hashem Shemot 1212 and he asks the Holy One blessed be he has so many messengers and angels why did he have to pass through the land of Egypt by himself and he replies because the angels do not know how to distinguish between the sperm of the firstborn and that which is not only the Holy One blessed be he alone knows this 100 this is similar to the text and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man Yashis 94 why do the angels need this mark because the angels know only what they are informed of for example how do they know all that the Holy One blessed be he plans on doing in the world they know because the Holy One blessed be he sends announcements throughout the heavens informing them of what he is about to perform in the world the angels hear these announcements and no 101 in the same way when the angel of destruction roams the world people should hide at home and not be seen at the marketplace this will prevent the angel of destruction from destroying and hurting them as it is written and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning Shemot 1222 because from them from the angels we can and should hide but there is no need to hide from the Holy One blessed be he as it is written can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him says Hashem Yermeah 2324 102 where is Sarah your wife he did not understand why they asked about her when they heard she was in the tent they did not enter it to inform her instead they remained outside while they informed Abraham and he answers they did not want to announce the good news in front of her so immediately after he said behold in the tent it is then written he said I will return and definitely come back to you at this time next year and lo Sarah your wife shall have a son Bereshit 1810 come and behold it was very polite and proper that they said nothing to Abraham before he invited them to eat this way it did not seem that he invited them to eat because of the good news they brought him therefore only after the verse stated and they ate did they inform him about the good news 103 he asked it is written and they ate but two celestial angels eat and he replies for the sake of Abraham's honor it seemed as though they ate this means that they made it seem as though they were eating Rabbi Lazar said they did actually eat because they are the fire that consumes fire and it is not as though they were eating so they ate everything Abraham offered them because from the side of Abraham they ate on a Supernal level this means that the drawing down of Chesedim is the secret of eating on a supernal level and Abraham is the secret of Chesed therefore everything he offered them came from his own attribute from the attribute of Chesed and they ate just as they eat above in the heavens 104 come and behold everything Abraham ate was according to the rights of purity and because of this he served it to the angels who ate in his home he observed the rights of purity so strictly that an impure person could not serve at his home unless he Abraham immersed him in a ritual bath if he was slightly impure or he made him keep purity properly for seven days at his home if he was severely impure afterward he immersed him 105 come and behold it is written if there be among you any man who is not clean by reason of uncleanliness that chances by night Devarim 2311 what should he do the verse continues when evening comes on he shall bathe himself in water if it twelve but if he becomes Defiled through any other severe cause like gonorrhea or leprosy on the impurity of menstrual flow which include two kinds of defilement then the ritual immersion for cleansing himself from the nocturnal pollution at evening is not sufficient under these circumstances he should keep purity for seven days then he should immerse again there is no difference between he who experienced nocturnal pollution before he was defiled with the other kind of defilement and he who was defiled only afterward. Abraham and Sarah dedicated their lives to help people make the transformation to a more positive and spiritual way of life Abraham and Sarah's devotion to this objective aroused genuine miracles of nature the relevance of this passage a miracle a wonder of nature is essentially a mirror reflecting a profound spiritual change within human nature because our natural inclination is self-indulgence at the expense of others the light of this passage gives us the strength to overpower our natural Tendencies and a portion part of our life to the service of others exemplified by Abraham and Sarah when a person dedicates his life to sharing with others the Creator causes great wonders to be revealed in order to help him toward this pursuit 106 Abraham and Sarah prepared ritual baths for every person he for the men and she for the women and why was Abraham occupied in purifying other people because he is pure and is called pure as it is written who can bring a pure thing out of it. Impure not one of 144 where pure applies to Abraham who came out of Terak who is impure 107 Rabbi Shimon said this is why Abraham engaged in ritual immersion to rectify Abraham's great and what is his great it is waters namely Shesedim that are called waters because of this he prepared people to be purified with water and when he invited the angels his first words were as it is written let a little water I pray you be fetched Bereshit 184 to strengthen himself with that. Grade which contains water namely Chesed 108 this is how he purified people from all sins including those from the impure side and idol worshipping and just as he purified the men so did she purify the women therefore all those who came to him were completely purified from idol worshipping and defilement 109 come and behold wherever Abraham lived he planted a tree but it did not grow proper
but whoever was impure was not accepted. Abraham then knew if a person was unclean. If this was the case, he purified him with water 112. And there was a spring of water beneath the tree. If a person who was slightly impure needed an immersion, the water immediately rose and the branches of the tree ascended upward. Abraham thus knew that he was impure and had to be immersed in water immediately. But if a person did not need to be cleansed immediately, the spring dried up. Then Abraham knew that he was still impure and needed to wait for seven days. 113. Come and behold, even when he invited the angels, he told them to rest yourselves under the tree. Beersheet 184. In order to test them in this way, he examined every person. And the secret is that he said this for the sake of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is the secret of the tree of life for everyone. This is why he told them and rest yourselves under the tree, which is the Holy One. Blessed be he and not under idol worshiping. 114. Come and behold Adam sinned by eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil as it is written but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil Beersheet 217 but after he sinned thereby bringing death upon the entire world it is written and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever Beersheet 322 and when Abraham appeared he ameliorated the world by using another tree the tree of life to introduce the proper faith to all peoples of it world the sacrifices that occurred inside the ancient temple and the incense that was burned were powerful tools that were used to remove forces of negativity and evil from the entire world the absence of the physical temple in our day prevents us from utilizing these instruments the zohar however explains that the words of the torah that speak of the sacrifices and incense rouse those same forces of purification into being moreover they transform prosecuting angels into entities that speak only good and favorable words about a person in the supernal courts the relevance of this passage it was foreseen that a time would come when many physical tools of spirituality would be lost to the ages the gift of the Torah the Zohar and specifically this passage replenished the spiritual energy lost in the absence of such tools accordingly we can purify negative influences in our own life and the world at large in addition we arouse the power to transform decrees of judgment into words of praise on our behalf Midrash Hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 115 Rabbi Shia said in the name of Rabbi if we look into this passage we should do so wisely if this passage discusses matters of the soul as he started to explain then there is no connection between the beginning and the end nor between the end and the beginning this means that it is hard to explain the end of the passage in relation to the soul referring to the words let a little water I pray you be Fetch therefore the end is not connected to the beginning and vice versa but if the passage discusses the departure of man from this world let the whole passage deal with this so either we explain the whole passage in this way or the other we should continue to explain the meaning of let a little water I pray you be fetched and wash your feet as well as the meaning of and I will fetch a morsel of bread Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and Abraham ran to the herd and he took butter and milk there she 184 to 8 116 when Rabbi Dimi arrived he said the soul could have no use for the body were it not for the sacrifice offering implied here that appear in the verses let a little water and so on even when the offering ceased as the temple was destroyed the Torah did not cease to exist thus he can delve in study of the Torah and it will help him even more than the sacrifices 117 Rabbi Yoshan and said when the Holy One blessed be he described the sacrificial offerings in Detail Moshe said, Master of the universe, this is all right when the children of Israel live in their land, but what shall they do when they are exiled from their land? He replied, Moshe, let them study Torah, and I shall forgive them for its sake more than for all other sacrifices in the world, as it is written, This is the Torah of the burnt offering of the meal offering. Vayikra 737. This means that the Torah is instead of the burnt offering, instead of the meal offering, instead of the sin offering. And instead of the guilt offering, 118 Rabbi Crespidae said, For whoever utters the phrases of the sacrificial offerings in the synagogues and in academies for the study of Torah and meditates on them, it is a sealed covenant that all those angels who mention his sins in order to persecute him can only do him good. 119. And what proves this to be true? This passage and lo, three men stood by him. What is meant by stood by him? It means to judge him and pronounce his sentence as soon as the Soul of the righteous saw this it is written and Abraham hastened into the tent what is meant by into the tent this refers to the academy for the study of Torah and what does he say he says make ready quickly three measures this refers to offerings to which the soul alludes as it is written and Abraham ran to the herd then they are pleased and appeased and cannot do him any harm 120 Rabbi Pinches continued the discussion with the passages and behold the plague had begun among it. People be midbar 1712 Moshe said to Aaron take a censer but 11 the plague was stated but 13 we learn this through the use of similar words it says here quickly in the verse and take it quickly to the congregation there it is written make ready quickly three measures as in the first verse the word quickly here applies to a sacrificial offering as a means of salvation that supports the explanation of Rabbi Crespidae 121 Rabbi Pinches then said once while I was walking I met. Eliyahu and said to him, Sir, may you say to me something for the well-being of the people? He said to me, The Holy One, blessed be he signed a covenant with this provision. If the angels who report the transgressions of man enter his presence while human beings simultaneously recite the sacrificial offerings that Moshe commanded and say them with full intention and with all their hearts, then all the angels will mention their names for good. 122 Eliyahu said to me, Further, there is a signed covenant stating that when there is a plague among people, he sends forth this announcement among all the hosts of the heavens. If the humans enter the synagogues and yeshivas on earth and recite with all their heart and soul the paragraph of the incense that Israel once performed, the plague will stop. 123 Rabbi Yitzhak said, Come and behold, it is written, and Moshe said to Aaron, Take a censer and put fire in it from off the altar and put on incense. Aaron asked him why Moshe replied. For the wrath has gone out from before Hashem, it then says, and he ran into the midst of the congregation, and behold, the plague had begun among the people, and he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. The Midbar 1711 to 13, hence the angel of destruction lost his dominion, and the plague was stayed. Thus it is stated expressly that the incense stopped the plague. 124 Rabbi Acha went to the village of Tarsha, where he stayed at, and the people of that village whispered about him, saying, A great man has arrived here, let us go to him. They said to him, Do you not have mercy on us because of the plague? He said to them, What plague? They replied, The plague struck the village seven days ago, and every day that passes it becomes worse. 125 He responded, Let us go to the synagogue and plead for mercy in front of the Holy One. Blessed be he as they were on their way, people came up to them and told them the names of people who had died or were about to die. Rabbi Acha said, to them this is not the time to stand around talking time presses 126 choose 40 men from the worthiest among you and divide them into four groups I shall be among you 10 men should go to each of the four corners of the city there you shall recite with the might of your souls the phrases of the incense offering which the holy one blessed be he handed over to Moshe and you should also recite the phrases of the sacrificial offerings 127 and so they recited those phrases three times in each of the four corners of the city he then told them let us visit those who are about to die choose from among you people who may go to their houses and recite what we have said when they finish say these verses and Moshe said to Aaron take a censer and Aaron took and he stood between the dead Bimidbar 1711 to 13 they followed these instructions and then the plague ceased 128 they heard a voice that said secrets primary secrets have been sweetened above for the judgment of heaven does not apply here because people know how to cancel the judgment. Rabbi Acha's heart became faint and he fell asleep. He heard them say to him, As you have done this, go and tell them to repent because they have sinned before me. He woke up and made them repent and atone completely for their deeds and they took it upon themselves never to cease studying Torah and they changed the name of the village to Matamaxia, the village of mercy, because the Holy One blessed be he showed mercy towards it. Village 129 Rabbi Yehuda said, It is not enough for the righteous to cancel the decree, they must bless them as well, and you should know that it is indeed so because the soul says to the body, Make ready quickly three measures of a fine meal and other phrases, and so it cancels the sentence of judgment and what is then written. And he said, I will return and definitely come back to you at this time next year. Behold, this is the blessing 130. Now, what do the angels do after seeing that? This person has taken good advice upon himself. They go to the
Be with Sarah Beersheet 1811 because the soul preserved its stature and the body remained on earth for all those years advanced in days. It is after many years and days that it ceases to come to and fro like other men and it is announced that the body shall be resurrected 134. What does it say? After I am grown old shall I have pleasure in 12 after being wasted in the dust for many years until this day shall I have pleasure and be renewed. My Lord being old also means that it has been many years since you left me and you have not visited me since 135 and the Holy One blessed be he said is anything too hard for Hashem at the time appointed to be 14 what is meant by the time appointed this is the time that is known to me for the resurrection of the dead and Sarah shall have a son that is it shall be revived as a three year old 136 Rabbi Yehuda the son of Rabbi Simon said because the soul is replenished by the splendor of above the Holy One blessed be he tells the angel to go and inform the body of such and such that I shall resurrect it in the future at the appointed time when I shall resurrect the righteous and it replies after I am grown old shall I have pleasure after I have waxed in the dust and have dwelt in the soil and worms have eaten my flesh and I am a clod of earth shall I be resurrected 137 the Holy One blessed be he says to the soul as it is written and Hashem said to Abraham is anything too hard for Hashem at the time Appointed Beersheet 1813 to 14, which is known to me, I will resurrect the dead, I will return to you that same body which is sacred, renewed as before, because you are like the holy angels, and that day shall be married before me, and I shall rejoice in them as it is written, May the glory of Hashem endure forever, let Hashem rejoice in his works. Tehillim 10431, end of Midrash Hanilim, section 8, and he said, I will certainly return to you, the Creator informs. Abraham that though Baron his wife Sarah will be able to give birth to a child, the Zohar explains that only the Creator himself possesses the key to childbirth. The relevance of this passage, whereas man has the power to effect many miracles over nature by changing his own nature, it is only the Creator who can bestow the gift of childbirth. The words that convey this truth allow us to receive and share the energy of childbirth with all of those in need of it. 138, and he said, I will. Certainly return to you at the season. Bear sheet 1810. Rabbi Yitzhak asked, Why is it written, I will certainly return? I should have said, He will certainly return as the key to impregnating barren women is in the hands of the Holy One. Blessed be He and not in the hands of any other messenger. 139. As we have learned, there are three keys that were not handed over to any messenger the keys of life of the resurrection of the dead and of the rains as they were not handed over to any messenger. Why is it written, I will certainly return? Which means that the angel will return at this time and visit her. And he replies, It is clear that the Holy One, blessed be He who stood by them, said this phrase, This is why it is written, I will certainly return to you. 140. Come and behold, wherever it is merely written, and he said, Or and he called without mentioning who said, Or called, it is a reference to the angel of the covenant, namely the Shechinah, and no other, and he said, Appears in the verse, and he said, If you will diligently hearken to the voice, Shema 1526, but the verse does not mention who said this. It is also written in the verse, and he called upon Moshe, Vayikra 11, but again it does not say who called again. It is written, and to Moshe he said, Shema 241, but it does not say who in all these places it is the angel of the covenant, namely the Shechinah, and everything has been said in reference to the Holy One, blessed be he, because the Shechinah is the Holy One, blessed be he. This is why it is written, and he said, I will certainly return to you, and lo, Sarah, your wife shall have a son, thus the Holy One, blessed be he, who has the key for impregnating barren women in his hands alone, may say, I will certainly return. Section 9, and lo, Sarah, your wife shall have a son, when we do not pursue spiritual growth for the purpose of drawing close to the Creator, our true Father, we behave as disrespectful, uncaring children. Therefore recognizing the Creator as our true Father should be motivation for spiritual growth and transformation. The relevance of this passage a child cannot truly grow and develop to its fullest without the tenderness, care and nurturing that a loving parent provides when we live life without appreciation or comprehension of the Creator. We cannot grow and develop spiritually the influences of this passage arouse an awareness of the Creator our true source and origin along with all the other precious qualities found in children who seek security and comfort from a parent. 141 And lo Sarah your wife shall have a son. Bear sheet 1810 He asks why does the verse not read and lo you shall have a son and he replies so that he may not assume that he will be born to Hagar as before Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion by saying a son honors his father and a servant his master Malachi 16 the words a son honors his father refer to its hawk honoring Abraham 142 when did he honor? Him Itzhak was thirty-seven years old when Avraham bound him on the altar and offered him as a sacrifice. Avraham was so old that he could not have countered an attack from Itzhak, not even a kick with one foot, but Itzhak honored his father who bound him like a lamb and showed no resistance in order to fulfill his father's will. 143 An example of a servant honoring his master is Elizar to Avraham whom Avraham sent to Torah on their Elizar honored Avraham by fulfilling his wishes as it is written. And Hashem has blessed my master greatly. Bear sheet 2435 As well as and he said I am Avraham servant of it. 34 He did all of this to show respect to Avraham. 144 Elizar is a man who carried silver gold precious stones and camels. He himself was good looking and impressive in appearance. Nevertheless he did not say that he was a dear friend or a relative of Avraham. Instead he said I am Avraham servant in order to raise the esteem of Avraham and make them respect him. 145 Therefore. The verse reads, A son honors his father and a servant his master dash, but you Israel, my children, you are ashamed to say that I am your father or that you are my servant. So if then I am a father, where is my honor? Malachi 16, thus it is written, and lo, a son, this is definitely the son who, unlike Ishmael, properly honors his father. 146, and lo, Sarah, your wife shall have a son, as she died because of him when she heard of him being bound upon the altar, and because of him she suffered anguish in her soul until she bore him, and lo, Sarah shall have a son, means that she was exalted on his account when the Holy One blessed be he sat in judgment on the world, because at that time on Rosh Hashanah when Itzhak was born, Hashem visited Sarah. Clearly he remembered Sarah for the sake of Itzhak. This is why Sarah shall have a son. Another explanation of and lo, Sarah, your wife shall have a son is that because the woman receives the child from the man, the female has the child, therefore. The verse says, And lo, Sarah shall have a son, 147, and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Bear she 1810, and he asks what do the words which was behind him mean should it not have been written, and she was behind him as if to say that she was behind the informing angel. He replies, There is a secret here, and Sarah heard it refers to the words tent door which correspond to the lower grade that is the gate of faith, namely the Sheshanah which was behind him means that the upper grade who is the Holy One, blessed be he confirmed the declaration ever since Sarah came into the world. She did not hear anything from the Holy One, blessed be he save at that moment. 148, yet another explanation is that Sarah sat at the tent door in order to listen to their words, and she heard the good news that Abraham received. This is why it is written, and Sarah heard it in the tent door which he was behind him. IT means that Abraham sat behind the Sheshanah 149 now. Abraham and Sarah were old advanced in days lit coming with days Bear sheet 1811 and he asks what is meant by coming with days and he replies this means that they are coming to the end of their days Abraham was a hundred years old and Sarah was ninety they reached their fill of days as is proper coming with days can be read as for the day has come which can mean that the day has ended here as well coming with the days means that their days were completed 150 and the manner of women ceased to be with Sarah at that hour she suddenly saw herself having pleasure again as the manner of women revived within her thus she said my lord being old also meaning that Abraham was too old to be able to beget children however she did not say that she herself was too old section 10 her husband is known in the gates Rabbi Yehuda reveals a powerful secret the light of the creator manifests itself in direct proportion to a person's degree of certainty in the reality of the Creator if we doubt the existence of the Creator there is no God force in our personal life it is our consciousness that creates our existence for this reason it is only our absolute conviction and certainty that will bring forth the Creator's existence and influence in our lives giving us an active role in the process of creation the relevance of this passage all of us are born into this world with varying
is high above as it is written, his glory is above the heavens. Tehillim 1134. But the supernal beings say that the Shechinah is down below as it is written, his glory is over all the earth. Tehillim 5712. So that all the supernal and human beings declare, Blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place because he is unknoble and no one is able to grasp him. Thus, how does one explain the verse? Her husband is known in the gates. 153. Most certainly, her husband is known in the gates refers to the Holy One. Blessed be he who is known and conceived according to what each one assumes in his mind and is able to grasp with the spirit of wisdom. Thus, he is able to understand according to what he is able to assume. Therefore, it is written, Her husband is known in the gates. Have she Aram, that is those assumptions have she URIM, which everyone forms according to his own mind, even though full knowledge of him is far beyond the reach of anyone. 154. Rabbi Shimon asks, Her husband is known in the Gates, what are the gates? They are the same as the gates mentioned in Lift up your heads, gates, and lifted them up, you everlasting doors. Tehillim 249. It is through these gates which are the supernal grades that the Holy One blessed be he is known for were it not for these gates, no one would have been able to commune with him. 155. Come and behold, even the soul of man cannot be understood directly, it is grasped only through the members of the body which represent the grades that belong to them, which reveal the actions of the soul. This is why the soul is conceivable and at the same time inconceivable. It is conceived by the members of the body, but is not conceivable in its own essence. In such a manner, the Holy One blessed be he is conceivable and inconceivable. He is the soul to the soul and the spirit to the spirit, hidden and concealed from all but to he who merits those gates, namely the supernal grades that are the openings of the soul. The Holy One blessed be he is made known so. He is conceivable by the supernal grades which are his doings but he is inconceivable from the aspect of his own essence. 156 Come and behold there is gate upon gate grade upon grade through which the glory of the Holy One blessed be he is made known. This refers to the tent door which is the gate of righteousness which is Malchut. Thus it is written open to me the gates of righteousness. Tehillim 11819 and this is the first gate to enter from this gate. All the other supernal gates can be seen. So whoever enters this gate knows the other gates as well because they all rest on it. 157 But now this lower gate which is called the tent door and the gate of righteousness is unknown because the children of Israel are in exile. As a result all the gates are gone from it thus they are incapable of knowledge and conception. But when Israel shall return from exile all the supernal grades will be destined to dwell upon this gate of righteousness as should properly be 158 then. People will have knowledge of the supernal wisdom of which they previously knew nothing as it is written and the spirit of Hashem shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of Hashem Yeshua 112 in the future all these shall rest upon this lower gate which is the tent door namely Malchut and they shall all rest upon King Mashiach to judge the world as it is written but with righteousness shall he judge the poor before section 11 and he said I will certainly return to you the Zohar expounds upon the right column aspect of Abraham and the left column aspect of Isaac in the metaphysical scheme of things both the right and left columns of energy are basic building blocks in creation similar to the proton and the electron this spiritual truth is conveyed through the biblical story where Abraham names his son Isaac as opposed to the tradition of it. Mother naming the child the story is a metaphor indicating the importance of the right and left column the desire to share and the desire to receive respectively the relevance of this passage mankind's behavioral actions always embody a particular blend of the right and left columns of energy our ego's desire to receive versus our soul's desire to share we develop an awareness of the importance of the actions we take through the right and left column pathways this allows us to continually seek balance through the process of transforming our desire to receive for the self alone into actions of receiving for the sake of sharing with others 159 therefore it was this great namely the tent door which is Malchut that informed Abraham of its hawk's birth as we have explained the words and he said I will certainly return to you at the season although it reads and he said it does not say who said so this is the tent door because and he said refers to the Shechina and Sarah Heard this grade which is the tent door from which she had heard nothing before as it was speaking with Abraham as it is written and Sarah heard it the words of the tent door which declared I will certainly return to you at the season and lo Sarah your wife shall have a son 160 come and behold the love of the Holy One blessed be he for Abraham is so great that its hawk was not born until after Abraham was circumcised and only after he was circumcised was he informed of its hawk. Because only then was the seed holy before he was circumcised the seed was not holy and then it became as it is written wherein is its seed after its kind bear sheet 112 which refers to a kind as holy as Abraham 161 come and behold before Abraham was circumcised his seed was not holy because it passed through the foreskin and clung to the lower foreskin but after he was circumcised his seed issued in holiness and it clung to the holiness of above and he begot up above thus Abraham clung. To his grade which is Jesus properly come and behold when Abraham begot its hot he was born holy as should properly be so these waters which allude to Abraham who is Jesus conceived and bore darkness in other words its hot who is the secret of the left column was darkness before he was clothed with the chesedim of Abraham after he issued from Abraham he was clothed by his chesedim and became light 162 one day Rabbi Lazar asked his father Rabbi Shimon why did the Holy One blessed be he name him its hot before he was born as it is written and you shall call his name its hot bear she 1719 and we should not say it was because she said Elohim has made laughter had second for me bear she 216 because even before he came into the world the Holy One blessed be he called him its hot before reason was given for it 163 he replied but we have learned that fire which is the left aspect and viewer received water which is the right aspect and she said as water came from the aspect of viewer this means that the left and right were combined and became included in each other thus the left aspect became the aspect of the one that gladdens Elohim and man and it is required of beloved who are drawn from the left column that they bring happiness to that side namely the left side with musical instruments and praising songs that correspond to that side this means that musical instruments and praising songs are also drawn from the left side and this is why it's hot. Means laughter and enjoyment he came from that side the left side and clung to it 164 come and behold it's hot himself his pleasure and laughter because he exchanged water for fire and fire for water thus the left and right are included in each other because it's hot is the aspect of the left which is the fire that became included within the water which is Jesus and the right aspect this causes all delight and happiness to be drawn from the left side this is why the holy one blessed be he. Named him its hot, he will laugh even before he came into the world and announced it to Abraham 165. Come and behold the Holy One, blessed be he allowed all children except its hot to be named by their parents, even women named their children. But here the Holy One, blessed be he did not allow its hawk's mother to name him only Abraham as it is written, and you shall call his name its hot. Bear sheet 1719 you and no one else in order to exchange water with fire and fire with water. Which refers to the inclusion of the left with the right and the right with the left, so that its hot may be included within its side, the right side. Section 12 and the men rose up from there before any negative occurrence befalls an individual. The Creator always sends us a gift. This gift is an opportunity to perform a positive action so that we can protect ourselves from any judgments decreed against us. This principle is concealed in the biblical story of Abraham the three angels were sent to Abraham by the Creator when Abraham invites these three angels into his home it is an act of true kindness consider Abraham's situation he was 100 years old it was the third day after his circumcision which is the most painful day and the weather was unbearably hot nevertheless Abraham put aside his own self-interest and welcomed the three strangers angels into his home where he bathed and fed them his positive action saved the life of Abraham's nephew Lot when the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed the relevance of this passage it is human nature to be governed by the primal instinct of self-survival yet it is also uniquely human to put aside one's own needs in consideration of others albeit a much more difficult duty to perform we are empowered with the strength to overcome our natural tendency to be self-absorbed in our own problems we create the consciousness and awareness to recognize opportunities for sharing in turn our positive actions of sharing will give us the ability to overcome or circumvent difficult situations in life. 166 After Abraham was told about its hawk, it is written, and the men rose up from
Because he raises his eyes and notices that Mark he avoids him this is why the Holy One blessed be he arranged beforehand to make him meritorious 168 come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he planned to execute judgment on SDOM he prepared a meritorious act for Abraham by sending him a present which refers to the three angels because of them he became deserving thereby he saved Lot the son of his brother from destruction this is why it is written and Elohim remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow of Beersheet 1929 and not and Elohim remembered Lot as a result of Abraham's meritorious act he was saved and remembered means that he remembered the previous meritorious act that he performed with the three angels 169 in the same manner when harsh judgment hangs over the world the Holy One blessed be he remembers the charitable deeds that men performed every time a person performs a meritorious action it is noted above therefore even when there is harsh judgment on the world the Holy One blessed be he remembers the good that a person has done and has merited through other people as it is written but charity righteousness delivers from death Mishlei 114 according to this the Holy One blessed be he arranged in advance that opportunity for Abraham to perform a meritorious act so that by his merit Lot would be saved 170 come and behold and the men rose up from there and looked toward SDOM they rose from the meal that Abraham prepared for them thereby performing a meritorious act and even though they were angels who do not need a meal he nevertheless attained merit because of them and they purposely left no food over from the meal so that Abraham would attain merit through the act as it is written and they did eat as by their fire the food was eaten and consumed 171 you might say but there were three angels one of fire one of water and one of air since Gabriel is made of fire Michael is made of water and Revile of air only Gabriel could have consumed the food with his fire Michael and Revile were not able to do so as they are not made of fire and he replies each and every one of them includes the others in himself so each one of them was made of fire water and air this is why it is written about all of them and they did eat dash the fire and each of them consumed the food similarly to this and they saw Elohim and did eat and drink Shema 2411 meaning that they were indeed nourished from the splendor of the Sheshana which is considered as eating us in this passage as well and they did eat means that they nourished themselves through their eating from the side to which Abraham was attached namely the right side which is Shesedim and this is why they left nothing from what Abraham offered them so that they could draw down as much Shesedim as possible 172 on the same principle one should drink from the cup of benediction so that by his drinking he will merit the blessing. Of above hence the angels also ate from what Abraham had prepared for them in order to be nourished from the side of Abraham namely from the light of Shesedim as the sustenance of all the angels above proceeds from that side 173 the verse and look toward alludes to the awakening of the quality of mercy to save Lot we learn this by comparing verses it is written here and look toward and it is written elsewhere look forth from your holy habitation to Aram 2615 because the looking there alludes to mercy there it does so here as well 174 and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way Beersheet 1816 that is he escorted them Rabbi Yesus said if Abraham knew that they were angels why did he have to escort them Rabbi Lazar responded even though he knew they were angels he did for them what he was accustomed to do for people thus he escorted them because it behooves one to escort his guests since everything depends on this in other words the precept of inviting Yes, depends on escorting them which is the final act and it is not considered a precept until after the person concludes it 175 as he was escorting them the Holy One blessed be he appeared to him as it is written and Hashem said shall I hide from Abraham that which I do with it 17 the phrase and Hashem applies to him and his heavenly court which is the Mukbah as the Holy One blessed be he accompanied them 176 come and behold when a person escorts his friend he draws the Sheshana to join him and walks along with him to protect him this is the reason why a person should escort his guest he joins him with the Sheshana and draws the Sheshana to join him section 13 shall I hide from Abraham the creator never allows any intense judgments to rain down upon creation without first warning the righteous souls who dwell among mankind this warning offers the righteous the opportunity to take the necessary positive measures to counteract Decree judgments these righteous souls warn others and create opportunities for people to change their ways the relevance of this passage according to the wisdom of Kabbalah positive actions of sharing are not founded upon the big concepts of morals ethics or codes of right and wrong rather there is a direct dividend to the doer of good deeds our charitable actions and positive behavior serve our own spiritual interests particularly during times of great judgment we are given the ability to recognize opportunities for sharing and spiritual change when we are preoccupied with our own hardships and appreciation for the righteous living among us is awakened within our soul furnishing us with greater protection from any negative events that might be looming over the horizon 177 therefore because of this that is because he escorted his guest he was fully meritorious and Hashem said shall I hide from Abraham that which I do Rabbi she opened the discourse with the verse 4. Hashem Elohim will do nothing until he reveals his secret to his servants the prophet Amos 37 blessed are the righteous of the world that the Holy One blessed be he chose them and all that he has done in the heavens and shall do in the world he accomplishes through righteous people and he never hides anything from them 178 for the Holy One blessed be he wants the righteous to join him this is so that they may warn people and advise them to repent their iniquity so that they will not be punished by celestial punishment and so that they will have no excuse to complain to him saying that he did not warn them and they did not know therefore the Holy One blessed be he reveals to them the secret that he is about to punish them he does not want them to be able to claim that he is punishing them without a trial 179 Rabbi Lazar said woe to the wicked who do not seek to know and do not know how to refrain from sin hence the Holy One blessed be he whose deeds are just and whose Actions are right never act before he reveals his plans to the righteous so that other people will have no excuse to complain about him similarly men should act in a way that prevents other people from uttering accusations against them therefore it is written and you shall be clean before Hashem and before Yisrael Bimidbar 3222 180 and the righteous should act accordingly to prevent other people from complaining about the Holy One blessed be he and warn them that if they sin and do not guard themselves the attribute of judgment of the Holy One blessed be he might have a reason to accuse them and how may they escape this attribute of judgment by repenting and performing good deeds 181 come and behold and Hashem said shall I hide from Abraham Rabbi Yehuda said the Holy One blessed be he has given the entire land to Abraham as an everlasting heritage as it is written for all the land which you see to you I give it Bereshit 1315 as well as lift up your eyes and see Ibn 14 later when the Holy One blessed be he wanted to uproot and destroy these places namely SDOM and anymore he said I have already given the land to Abraham and he is the father of them all as it is written for a father of a multitude of nations have I made you Beersheet 175 so it is not fitting for me to smite the children without informing their father whom I have called Abraham my friend Yeshayah 418 therefore I must inform him thus and Hashem said shall I hide from Abraham that which I do 182 Rabbi Abba said behold the humility of Abraham even though the Holy One blessed be he said to him because the cry of SDOM anymore is great Beersheet 1820 although he delayed himself by informing Abraham that he wanted to punish SDOM he did not pray before him to save Lot from punishment why so that he did not ask for a reward for his deeds 183 because of this even though he did not ask for IT the Holy One blessed be he sent for Lot and saved him for the sake of Abraham as it is written and Elohim remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow Beersheet 1929 184 what is meant by in which Lot dwelt why were they named after him this has been explained it is because they were all wicked and there was nobody among them who was good save Lot from this we learned that wherever the wicked stay that place is doomed to be destroyed from the verse in which Lot dwelt we learned that for all the other people who dwelt there it was not considered to be a dwelling place but rather a place of destruction and desolation unfit for habitation and this was because they were wicked people 185 of the verse the cities in which Lot dwelt he asks could it be that Lot lived in all of them and he replies because of his presence in those cities they were not destroyed and the people were able to dwell there this is why they are named after him but if you say this was because of the merit of Lot you are incorrect it was because of the merit of Abraham 186 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold the service that a person does for the righteous protects him in this world in addition even
What is the point of noting the fact that the Sheshana did not leave Abraham during the time when the Holy One blessed be he was with him? Rabbi Shimon said it is certainly so and you are definitely right. 189 come and behold it is written and Hashem said lit and said Hashem because the cry of S-D-O-M and Amora is great. At first it is written and Hashem said Bereshit 1817 which applies to him and his heavenly court namely the Sheshana and later it is written and said Hashem. Because the cry of S-D-O-M and Amora is great which does not refer to Hashem alone but rather to the upper grade Y-U-D-H-A-B-H hey, hey, that appeared to him over the lower grade which is the Sheshana Midrash Hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 190 and Hashem said shall I hide from Abraham what is written before and the men rose up from there and looked toward S-D-O-M in order to punish the wicked and what is written after shall I hide from Abraham 191 Rabbi Kista said. The Holy One blessed be he does not execute judgment on the wicked until he has consulted the souls of the righteous this is as it is written by the blast also soul of Eloha the Parashio 49 and shall I hide from Abraham the Holy One blessed be he said how can I punish the wicked without consulting the souls of the righteous telling them that the wicked have sinned before me and I am about to punish them this is as it is written and Hashem said because the cry of S-D-O-M and is great and because their sin is very grievous 192 Rabbi Abayu said the soul remains standing in its place and is afraid to come nearer and say anything to him until Matatron says he will present it then it may say what it wants this is as it is written and Abraham drew near and said will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked Beersheet 1823 far be it from you to do after this matter of 25 193 perhaps there are 50 righteous within the city of it 24 hence the soul starts by saying master of the universe they may have learned the 50 portions of the Torah and even though they did not learn the portions for its sake alone they are still entitled to a reward in the world to come and should not be sent to Gehenom after this it is written and Hashem said if I find in Sdom 50 just men within the city of it 26 194 he commented but there are more than 50 portions in the Torah there are 53 but as Rabbi Abba who said every one of the five books in the Torah includes the Ten Commandments which is the secret of the Ten Divine Injunction sayings by which the world was created multiply by the five books and you have Fifri 195 the soul goes on saying Master of the Universe even though the people did not study the Torah they may have already been punished for their sins in court and have been forgiven as it is written 40 stripes he may give him and not exceed Devarim 253 and if they have felt ashamed in front of them this is sufficient for them to be pardoned and not be sent to Gehenom the following verse says I will not do it for the 40 sake Beersheet 1829 196 the verse continues perhaps there shall be 30 found there but 30 maybe there are righteous people among them who have achieved the 30 attributes indicated in the verse now it came to pass in the 30th year Yeshiskel 11 and that are included within the 32 paths which are formed by the 22 Hebrew letters and the 10 the latter at times are counted as 8197 it speaks further perhaps there shall be 20 found there Beersheet 1831 perhaps they will raise sons to study the Torah thereby receiving the reward of the 10 commandments twice every day this is according to Rabbi Yitzhak who said he who educates his son in the Torah and takes him to the house of his rabbi teacher in the morning and in the evening is described by the words of the Torah as though he has performed the entire Torah twice a day what does it Say and he said I will not destroy it for the twenty sake of it one hundred and ninety-eight it goes on perhaps ten shall be found there but thirty-two it says master of the universe maybe they were among the first ten who arrived at the synagogue if so they have earned the reward of all the people who came in after them and it is written I will not destroy it for the sake of the ten one hundred and ninety-nine the soul of the righteous has all this to say for the sinners and because they have nothing it is written and Hashem went his way as soon as he left speaking to Abraham and Abraham returned to his place Beersheet 1833 what is to his place it is the place of his well-known grade two hundred rabbi said it is behooves for a person to pray for the sinners so that they may repent and not enter Gehenom as it is written but as for me when they were sick my clothing was sackcloth three thousand five hundred and thirteen and rabbi continued a person should never pray that the sinners may leave the world because had the holy one blessed be he Taken Terak out of this world for worshipping idols Abraham would have never come into the world the tribes of Israel would not have existed nor would King David or King Mashiach the Torah would not have been given and none of the righteous and pious men with all the prophets would have been in the world Rabbi Yehuda said because the Holy One blessed be he sees that the sinners have nothing from all that was mentioned above it is written and there came two angels to S.D.O.M. Bereshit 191. Section 14 I will go down now and see the literal Torah story states that the Creator came down to see the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah before they were destroyed Kabbalistically these stories signify the energy of the Creator shifting from the frequency of mercy into one of judgment the Creator himself however never stands in judgment of us it is our own actions that determine which frequency of energy we draw down upon ourselves the analogy of electrical energy helps convey the Zohar's principle we can utilize electrical energy to light and power entire cities or we can place our finger in a wall socket and electrocute ourselves the nature of the energy has never changed it was our free will as to how we connected into this energy that changed the relevance of this passage we generate an awareness of the consequences attached to all our behavioral actions along with the understanding that the creator is not at fault for the hardships we endure in life by knowing that all our actions influence the amount of light we receive we are inspired to seize control over how we interact with the world and in turn how the world interacts with us 201 I will go down and see whether they have done Hibasu altogether according to the cry of it which has come to me Beersheet 1821 he asks to whom did he the Holy One blessed be he say you should destroy because the Zohar explains this verse as Hibasu was in the imperative mode there by saying destroy if you say that he addressed these angels by saying destroy who has ever seen the light that he spoke with Abraham while commanding the angels rather he addressed Abraham saying destroy because all those places were under his supervision another explanation I asked that he addressed those angels saying destroy 202 and he asks if he addressed Abraham saying destroy Asu why I asked it written in the plural instead of the singular namely destroy Asa and he responds he said this because he addressed both Abraham and the Shechinah that had never left him this is why he said destroy Asu he then said that we need to clarify what we said about his address to the angels saying destroy for it looks as if the Holy One blessed be he talked to Abraham while commanding the angels and he explained this is so because the angels stood by waiting to execute judgment and this is why he said destroy in the plural 203 another explanation of Asu is translated from the Aramaic they have worshipped which refers to the people of S.D.O.M. He asks but did not the Holy One blessed be he know that he had to go down is not everything revealed before him and he responds but I will go down means to descend from the grade of mercy to the grade of judgment and the phrase and see means to determine suitable punishments 204 we have learned that there is seeing for good and seeing for evil seeing for the good is illustrated in the verse and Elohim looked upon the children of Israel Shema 225. Seeing for evil is illustrated in the verse I will go down now and see in order to choose their punishments this is what the Holy One blessed be he meant by asking shall I hide from Abraham section 15 Abraham shall surely become in every generation there is a circle of righteous souls living among us through their spiritual actions and presence in this physical existence they literally uphold and sustain our world their positive energy balances out. All the negative actions committed by self-centered and unspiritual people among us this prevents the scales of judgment from tipping too far over to the side of negativity which would cause great destruction in the world interestingly these great souls often conceal their true identity and appear to us as mirrors of ourselves in the form of difficult people in our lives they reflect all the negative traits that we ourselves possess but fail to recognize the relevance of this passage protection from negative influences is bestowed upon us through the merit of righteous people past and present we achieve the self-restraint and judgment to consider difficult people in our lives as reflections of our own negative traits the wisdom and inspiration to change ourselves instead of always trying to change others emerges through the letters that form this passage 205 of the verse seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation Beersheet 1818 he asks why does this bl
Acceptable time Tehillim 6914 This shows that some times are acceptable while other times are not so there are times when he listens to the prayer and times when he does not there are times when he is present and times when he is not this corresponds to what is written seek Hashem while he may be found call upon him while he is near to Shea 556 Thus we can conclude that there are times when he is not present and cannot be found namely during the time of judgment if this is true how can you say that while he sits in judgment on one he sits in mercy on the other 207 Rabbi Lazar said that the verses sometimes refer to individuals and sometimes refer to the entire community for the individual it changes according to the times of the entire community however he always displays mercy even when he sits in judgment here it applies to one place while there it applies to the whole world to which he always shows mercy and never changes this is why he blessed Abraham at the time when Judgment was executed on SDOM. Abraham is considered as the whole world because it is written, These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. Have Bihibaram, Bereshit 24, and we have learned that Bihibaram contains the letters of Bihibaram with Abraham, therefore he was considered as the whole world. 208, the numerical value of the letters in Yuyah shall become his 30, and we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he arranged for each generation to have 30 righteous men just as Abraham had for his generation. This means as it is written, These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. Bihibaram, which is a combination of the letters Bihibaram for whose sake the world was created, and he says there are 30 righteous men in each and every generation for whose sake the world was created as it was created for the sake of Abraham. 209, he opened with the verse, He was more honorable than the 30, but he Attained not to the first three two Shmuel 2323 he was more honorable than the thirty refers to the thirty righteous men whom the Holy One blessed be he had called upon to come into this world in every generation so the world will not remain with it the men of Nehu the son of Yehoiada it is written he was most honorable among the thirty as he was one of them but he attained not to the first three because he is not of equal importance as the first three upon whom the world is established. 210 thus but he attained not to the first three means that he is not equal to the three upon whom the world is established he was not counted as one of them he deserved to be included among the thirty righteous men but he was not on a level with the first three and was not privileged to be associated with them as an equal you shall become as we have learned is numerically equal to thirty and for that the Holy One blessed be he blessed him so that he could become equal to all the thirty. Righteous people section 16 whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it the nativity and spiritual darkness that enveloped the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah was so intense that outsiders refused to step foot within the city boundaries the wisdom being distilled concerns the self-awareness of the dark side of our own nature when we associate with negative people we inevitably fall into their negative sphere of influence because our own negative side ignites and ultimately dominates us leading us down a path of darkness we are to avoid negative people out of concern for our own dark side this kind of inner reflection and self-awareness is a prerequisite for spiritual development the relevance of this passage perhaps the greatest deception the angel Satan ever devised was convincing the rational mind that he doesn't really exist this artful deception extends to the dark side of our own nature and awareness of our own negative Character traits begins to emerge in our consciousness so that we can uproot them and transform our nature. The self-recognition further helps to protect us from external negative influences. 211 Come and behold the Holy One blessed be he said to Abraham the cry of SDOM anymore is great because their conduct towards other people has reached me as a result of this conduct the whole world avoids setting foot in SDOM anymore thus it is written he breaks open a water course in place. Far from inhabitants forgotten by foot travelers they are dried up they are gone away from many of 284 he breaks open a water course in place far from inhabitants means that the water course which alludes to SDOM break open for all the inhabitants of the world who entered there because if any of them saw somebody give food or drink to a stranger they cast him into the deep river along with the person who received the food and drink 212 this is why all people of the world were Forgotten by foot travelers, that is, they avoided setting foot in there, and whoever did enter, they are dried up, they are gone away, which means that they dried the strength of their bodies with hunger by not giving them anything to eat nor to drink. As a result, they no longer look like human beings, as it is written, they are dried up, they are gone away. Eo 284 here, it is written, they are gone away, and elsewhere it is written, her paths wander. Mishle 56 in both verses, it means that her paths wander and cannot be found, they are gone, means that they avoided the roots of convoys and other paths in order not to enter there. Even the birds in the sky stopped themselves from entering there, as it is written, there is a path which no bird of prey knows. Eo 287, and because of all this, the entire world cried out against SDOM anymore and against all the cities which were considered all the same. 213, the cry of SDOM anymore is great. Abraham asked the Holy One blessed. Why he answered because their sin is very grievous and this is why I will go down now and see whether according to the cry of it and he said it should have been said according to the cry of them because it is written the cry of SDOM anymore thus there were two cities if so why does it say the cry of it in the singular and he answered this has already been clarified 214 come and behold from the side underneath the sound of hailstones all the tangles of the shoulder rise and are gathered into one drop which then enters the holes of the great abyss where five become one when their voices are clear they unite as one then a voice from below enters among them and becomes one with them 215 for that voice goes up and down demanding that judgment be drawn down so when this voice rises to demand justice the holy one blessed be he reveals himself to ensure justice is done 216 rabbi shimon then said it is written according to the cry of it to whom does this Cry belong and he replied this is the decree of judgment that demands justice every day so the phrase the cry of it refers to it judgment as we have learned for many years the decree of judgment demanded from the holy one blessed be he the penalty for what the brothers of Yosef had done when they sold him the decree of judgment cried out aloud for justice to be revealed this is why it is written according to the cry of it which has come to me it refers to the cry of the decree of judgment 217 and he asks what is meant by the phrase which has come to me and he responds there is a secret here as you may read in the evening she would return lit comes and in the morning she would return Esther 214 the words which has come to me are written in the present tense to indicate a repeated action similarly the verse the end of all flesh has come before me Bereshit 513 is also written in the present tense the phrase then destroy has already been explained Section 17 Will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? A discussion takes place concerning Abraham, Noah, and Moses, specifically their role in protecting mankind. Three distinct levels of selfless love for others are exemplified through these three great spiritual leaders. Noah built the ark and did all that God had commanded of him, but his efforts and concern ended there as he did not continue to fight and lobby on behalf of mankind. Abraham took the cause of his fellow man. A step further when he argued with the Creator in an effort to save Sodom and Gomorrah, however, once Abraham realized that the argument was lost, he accepted it. Moses, on the other hand, never gave up the fight for his fellow man, even when all hope was lost, offering his own life in exchange for saving the entire nation. The relevance of this passage, spiritual complacency, can cause the noblest person to fall to lower levels of being, therefore, spiritual involvement may be compared to the endeavor of. Climbing up the downward moving escalator one must constantly progress forward against opposing forces the moment we stand still anywhere along the journey we immediately begin to regress the light of this passage inspires us to continually grow spiritually so that we evolve the consciousness of true caring self-sacrifice and unconditional love for others through selfless love we protect all mankind and ourselves 218 and Abraham drew near and said will you also destroy the righteous with it? Wicked Bereshit 1823 Rabbi Yehuda said who has met a father as merciful as Abraham come and behold in regard to Noach it is written and Elohim said to Noach the end of all flesh has come before me make you an ark of gopher wood Bereshit 613 to 14 and he remained silent and did not beg for mercy while as soon as the Holy One blessed be he said to Abraham the cry of SDOM anymore is great I will go down now and see it is written and Abraham drew near and said will you also destroy the Righteous with the wicked 219 Rabbi Lazar said even Abraham did not act perfectly as he should have done but Noach did nothing he did not ask for mercy on behalf of the righteous as Abraham did or on behalf of the sinners
Until he said yet now if you will forgive their sin and if not block me I pray you out of your book which you have written of it 32 and even though they had all sinned he did not budge from there until he told him I have pardoned according to your word Bimid bar 1420 there is a section missing here that must have been overlooked as this passage was copied and this is the correct version we have discussed and learned that he did not budge from there until the Holy One blessed be he forgave. Yisrael as it is written and Hashem reconsidered the evil which he thought to do to his people Shema 3214 and I have pardoned according to your word this must be the correct version for it is impossible for the Zohar not to mention the pardon for the sin of the calf and to read I have pardoned according to your word Bimid bar 1420 which was said about the spies 221 but Abraham considered only whether there might have been any righteous among them and because there were not any. Righteous among them he did not pray for any of them this is why there has never been a person in the world who protected his generation as has Moshe the faithful shepherd 222 and Abraham drew near and said means that he prepared himself before besieging perhaps there are 50 righteous he started with 50 which is the beginning of knowledge until he descended to 10 which is the number of the last of all grades 223 Rabbi Yitzhak said Abraham stopped at the number 10 which represents the 10 days between between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur during which the 10 Svirat of Malchud are prepared to ascend to Bina this is why he started to plead for the 50 but stopped at 10 these symbolize the 10 Svirat of Malchud which are corrected during the 10 days of repentance as he reached 10 he said from here downward Malchud is not sweetened by Bina which is also called repentance therefore he concluded that this was not a place for repentance and he did not. Continue imploring and reducing the number under 10 section 18 and the two angels came to SDOM during a discussion concerning the two angels who executed the decree of destruction upon the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah the Zohar expounds upon the protective power of the Torah through its study the Torah is called the tree of life Kabbalistically the tree of life is a realm of pure order and serenity it is the origin of all human happiness well-being and contentment the Torah becomes the tree of life by virtue of our consciousness and certainty in its powers our awareness is the mechanism that activates the tree of life forces the relevance of this passage as a lamp requires electrical current before it can illuminate a darkened room Kabbalistic tools such as the Torah are in need of spiritual current in order to become active spiritual current is the stuff of consciousness and certainty we develop a true sense of appreciation and certitude. In the power of the Torah and the tree of life energy that radiates through its verses 224 and the two angels came to SDOM at evening Bereshit 191 Rabbi Yossi said come and behold it is written and Hashem went his way as soon as he had left speaking to Abraham Bereshit 1833 as the Sheshanah had departed from Abraham and Abraham returned to his place then the two angels came to SDOM at evening there were only two angels because one had departed with the Sheshanah 225 as Lotsah. Then he ran after them why he invited everyone who came to his city into his house and offered them food and drink if so then how come the people of his own town did not kill him as they did his daughter 226 for what reason was she killed the daughter of Lot offered a piece of bread to a poor man as soon as the townspeople found out they covered her with honey and put her on the roof until she was stung to death by beast 227 and he replies because it was at night Lot thought that the Townspeople would not see him nevertheless as soon as they entered his house the townspeople gathered and surrounded the house 228 Rabbi Yitzhak asked why did Lot run after the angels as it is written and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them Rabbi Shizkiah or Rabbi Yesa one responded that he saw the image of Abraham among them the other said that he saw the Shechen arresting upon them and he drew an analogy it is written here and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them and elsewhere. And when he saw them he ran to meet them from the tent door Beersheet 182 so just as he saw the Shechen there he saw the Shechen here as well 229 this is the reason why Lot seeing them run to meet them and he said behold now my lords have Adonai spelled with Aleph and Yod that is the name of the Shechen in our scriptures it is not written and he ran to meet them but rather rose up to meet them according to the Zohar the words rose to meet them mean that he rose up and ran to meet them otherwise it should have been written he rose up before them the verse continues turn in I pray you he asks why is it written turn in I pray you when it should have been written draw near I pray you what is meant by turn in and he responds he did not want them to enter the house in the regular way so his townspeople would not see them this is why he said turn in I pray you 230 Rabbi Shizkiah began the discussion by saying it is written for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heaven Eo 2824 how important it is for all human beings to observe the works of the Holy One blessed be he and to study Torah day and night he who studies the Torah is glorified by the Holy One blessed be he on high and down below because the Torah is the tree of life for all those who occupy themselves in it it grants them life in this world and offers them life in the world to come 231 come and behold it is written for he looks to the end of the earth in order to supply them with food and provide for their needs the earth is malchut ends of the earth refers to all that issues from her because it is he who takes care of her always as it is written the eyes of Hashem your Elohim are always upon it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year Devarim 1112 232 it is written of this earth namely malchut she brings her food from a farm Mishle 3114 and then she provides the beasts of the fields which are the angels of the world's Briya Yitzra and Asiya with food and sustenance as it is written she rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens Ibid 15 233 this is why it is written for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heaven alluding to all the people in the world in order to supply them with food and provisions each and every one according to his needs as it is written you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every Living thing Tehillim 14,516, 234 There is another explanation of the verse for he looks to the ends of the earth which is that he observes the makings of men and watches closely over what people are doing in the world he sees under the whole heaven which means that he watches and keeps an eye on each and every person 235 come and behold as a result of the Holy One blessed be he seeing the actions of SDOM anymore he sent forth those angels to destroy SDOM it is written and lot seeing which means that he was seeing the Shechina and he asks but who can possibly see the Shechina and he replies he saw a light shining and rising high above their heads and then he said behold now Adonai and my master spelled with Allah and Dalit which is the name of the Shechina thus for the sake of the Shechina namely that certain illumination that shone upon their heads he said turn and I pray you into your servant's house 236 the verse continues and sleep and wash your feet but Abraham did not do so rather he said at first wash your feet and only later and I will fetch a morsel of bread Lot however said turn in I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and then and wash your feet and you may rise up early and go your ways and this was to prevent other people from knowing about them if other people happened to know about them and approached them they could claim that they had just arrived a short while ago as they had not even washed their feet from the dust of the journey 237 and they said no but we will abide in the street all night because that was the practice in these cities guests slept in the street because no person invited them to his house this is why they said we will abide in the street and then it is written and he pressed upon them greatly bear sheet 193 238 come and behold when the holy one blessed be he executes judgment on the world one messenger performs it but now during the Overthrow of SDOM we see two messengers as it is written and two angels came to SDOM is not one angel sufficient and he replies there indeed was only one the scriptures mentions two because one came to save Lot while the other came to overthrow the city and destroy the land therefore there was only one assigned to overthrow SDOM section 19 the garden of Eden and Gehenna man is constantly tested by his own negative inclination in order to provide him with the opportunity to exercise free will man activates free will the moment he resists his natural selfish tendencies the righteous people of this world are those who have conquered their negative natures and subjugated all evil inclinations it is upon their merit that our physical world is sustained the man who conquers his own negative nature and ego is far stronger and far greater than the man who conquers armies or builds empires the Zohar explains that the garden of Eden and hell exist both in our physical realm and in the supernal worlds the true righteous dwell in the garden of Eden above while the most wicked of men dwell in the lower realm of hell there
Hardships that strike in our personal life during difficult times when life feels like hell on earth afflictions have a cleansing effect on our soul awareness and acceptance of this spiritual truth accelerates the process and trying times pass more quickly Midrash Hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 239 Rabbi opened the discussion by quoting the verse Now these are the nations which Hashem left to test Israel by them Shoftim 31 Rabbi said I have been looking into that world namely the eternal world and saw that the world can exist only because of righteous people who have control over the desire of their hearts as it is written this he ordained in Yehoshaphat for a testimony Tehillim 816 Rabbi Yehuda then said why did Yosef merit that high grade and kingdom the answer is because he overcame his lust as we have learned the heavenly kingdom awaits he who overcomes his lustful desires 240 as Rabbi Cha has said the Holy One blessed be he has created the evil inclination solely for the purpose of trying humanity and does the Holy One blessed be he intent on trying humanity yes how do we know this from the verse if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and the sign or the wonder came to pass for Hashem your Elohim tests you Devarim 131 to 3 241 and why does he intend on trying it as all the deeds of humankind are well known to him so as that humankind should have no excuse to complain see what is written and lots sat in the gate of SDOM which means that he was sitting and reprobing the people Rabbi Yitzhak asked what is the verse but the wicked are like the troubled sea Yishayah 5720 even when the wicked is on trial he shows insolence and confirms his guilt as it is written but before they lay down Bereshit 194 242 Rabbi Yitzhak continued just as the Holy One blessed be he created the Garden of Eden upon earth so did he create Gehenom as well and just as he created the Garden of Eden above so did he create Gehenom there the earthly Garden of Eden is referred to in the verse and Hashem Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden Bereshit 28 and earthly Gehenom is referred to in the verse a land of gloom as darkness itself Yoh 1022 243 there is a garden of Eden above as is written but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with Hashem your Elohim Ishmuel 2529 and, and the spirit shall return to Elohim who gave it Kehilah 127 and there is a Gehenom above as it is written and the souls of your enemies these shall he sling out as out of the hollow of a sling Ishmuel 2529 244 the garden of Eden below is American Samoa we have said the garden of Eden above is for the souls of the completely righteous so that they may be replenished by the great light of above Gehenom down below is for those wicked who refuse to perform circumcision did not believe in the Holy One blessed be he nor in his religion and did not keep the Shabbat and these are those who worship it stars and constellations and who are condemned with fire as it is written and they came out from fire and fire shall devour them Yashiskel 157 and and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the man Yashiah 6624 245 the Gehenom above is for those sinners of Israel who have transgressed the precepts of Torah and have not repented they are rejected and stay outside until they are punished and they wander around the whole world as it is written the wicked walk on every side Tehillim 129 246 and they are sentenced to stay there for 12 months later they reside with those who receive their punishment at their death each to a place according to what he deserves the sinners who worship the stars and the constellations are constantly punished by fire and water and they never emerge again as it is written neither shall their fire be quenched Yashiah 6624 247 the sinners are sentenced in Gehenom according to what is written and Hashem reigned upon SDOM and upon Amorah brimstone and fire Bereshit 19.24 and they never emerged from there and shall not rise for the day of judgment as it is written which Hashem overthrew in his anger and in his wrath Devarim 2922 in his anger refers to this world and in his wrath refers to the world to come 248 Rabbi Yitzhak said in keeping with what I have explained there is a garden of Eden above and another below there is a Gehenom below and another above Rabbi Yaakov said the wicked who have defiled their circumcision desecrated the Shabbat in public desecrated the festivals and have rejected the Torah the resurrection of the dead and so on all shall enter Gehenom below they shall be punished there and shall never rise up again 249 but they shall rise on the day of judgment and for the resurrection of the dead they are described by the words and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 122 and they are also described by the words and they shall be abhorrent to all flesh have Darion Yeshayah 6624 what is Darion Darion which means that all shall say die enough, Arion of seeing them they shall have had enough of seeing them but of the righteous in Israel it is said your people shall also be all righteous Yeshayah 6021 and of Midrash Hanilam section 20 and Hashem reigned upon SDOM the various levels of judgment that occur in hell are expounded upon by the sages of the Zohar these judgments were expressed in our physical world during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah and the time of Noah and the flood the implements of water fire and brimstone were used to bring about judgment during these times of intense negativity the Zohar reveals that the 72 names of GT along with the angels who are connected to each particular sequence of Hebrew letters that form the 72 names were the contents by which the force of Judgment expressed itself in our physical realm. The relevance of this passage, the 72 names of God, is an ancient formula encoded in the Torah passage that tells the story of the parting of the Red Sea. This instrument emits both merciful and judgmental forces into our world through this passage of Zohar. We arouse the protection and positive aspects from the 72 names and the corresponding angels, thereby removing negative elements and judgments from our life. 250 next is the verse and Hashem. Reigned upon SDOM and upon Amor, Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse Behold, the day of Hashem comes cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. Yeshayah 139. Behold, the day of Hashem comes alludes to the earthly courthouse, which refers to the judgments that issue from Malchut during the time when she is at the stage of illumination from the left before being combined with the central column, which is called the decree of judgment, comes is as explained in reference to the phrase which has come to me which means that she always comes at the beginning of every union which has come to me is so because it does not execute judgment before it enters and receives permission the same is explained by the verse the end of all flesh has come before me which means that it came to ask for permission 251 another explanation of behold the day of Hashem comes is that it refers to the saboteur of below namely the angel of death when he takes the soul away this is why the verse calls him cruel both with wrath to lay the land desolate alluding to SDOM and Amor which were thrown over and deserted the phrase and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it refers to those who inhabited that land 252 after this it is written for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof Yeshayah 1310 because it was from the heavens that he rained fire down on them and wiped them out of the world and it is written I will make men more rare than fine gold Ibn 12 This is Avraham whom the Holy One blessed be he raised up and cherished more than any other person in the world 253 Rabbi Yehuda related these verses to the day when the temple was destroyed on that day both the celestial and earthly beings darkened along with the stars and heavens Rabbi Lazar explained these verses as follows the day on which the Holy One blessed be he shall raise the congregation of Israel up from the dust namely at the time of redemption shall be known on high and down below as it is written but it shall be one day which shall be known to Hashem Zechariah 14 7 and on that day the Holy One blessed be he shall take revenge on the idol worshippers 254 so when the Holy One blessed be he takes revenge on the worshippers of the planets and constellations it shall be said I will make men more rare than fine gold this is King Mashiach who shall rise up over all peoples of the world and be so honored that all of humanity will bow before him and obey him this is as it is written they that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him kings of Tarshish shall bring presents Tehillim 729 to 10 255 come and behold even though this prophecy referring to the verses that read behold the day of Hashem and I will make man dash was said specifically about Babylon is written the burden of Babylon Yeshayah 131 it is said nevertheless about everything it is also written in the same passage for Hashem will have mercy on Yaakov and the people shall take them and bring them to their place Yeshayah 141 to 2 it seems that the sages of the Zohar had a different sectioning of the Bible because in our books these verses appear in the following chapter 256 the phrase then Hashem
Behold, we have learned that when judgment hangs over the world, people should not be at the marketplace. This is because when judgment comes, it does not distinguish between the righteous and the wicked. Therefore, one should not be there. And it has been explained that this is why Noach hid in the ark and did not look upon the world as judgment was executed. And so it is written, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. Shemot 1222 that I as until judgment is executed. And this is why it is written, Escape for your life, look not behind you. 258 As they were walking, Rabbi Yehuda said to Rabbi Yitzhak, The judgment that the Holy One blessed be he executed at the great flood and the judgment of SDOM were both judgments of Gehenom because the sinners in Gehenom are punished by water and fire. 259 Rabbi Yitzhak responded that SDOM was sentenced by the judgment of Gehenom as it is written, and Hashem reigned upon SDOM and upon the more brimstone and fire. From Hashem out of heaven one was punished with the aspect of water, the other with the aspect of fire, and both are the punishments of Gehenom. The sinners in Gehenom are punished with both these aspects of judgment because there is a Gehenom of snow which is water and there is a Gehenom of fire. 260 He said to him, The sinners are sentenced to twelve months in Gehenom where they are cleansed that is purified later. The Holy One blessed be he raises them from Gehenom and makes them sit. At its gates watching other sinners enter and receive punishment and they ask for mercy for them and after this the Holy One blessed be he is merciful to them he raises them up and away from the gates of Gehenom bringing them to the place required for them from that day onward the body rests in the dust while the soul inherits its appropriate place 261 come and behold we have learned that even the generation of the great flood was punished with fire and water only cold water came down from above and boiling water from below from the bottom of the earth as fire so they were punished by the two judgments because the judgment of above is executed with two kinds of judgment water and fear and this is why there was brimstone and fire in SDOM because the brimstone comes from water as is known 262 he asked him will the people of SDOM rise in the future for the day of judgment he responded we have already learned this those people of SDOM anymore will not rise for judgment in the future during the resurrection of the dead this is proven by the verse and that the whole land there is a brimstone and salt and burning which Hashem overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. The Barim 2922 which Hashem overthrew means in the present world in his anger means in the world to come and in his wrath means at the time when the Holy One blessed be he shall resurrect the dead. 263 he said to him come and behold just as their land was destroyed forever so were they. Destroyed forever behold the judgment of the Holy One blessed be he is judgment for judgment namely a just retribution just as they did not revive the soul of the poor with food or with drink so in the same way the Holy One blessed be he does not give their soul back to them in the world to come. 264 come and behold they refrain from giving charity which is called life thus the Holy One blessed be he withheld life from them in this world and in the world to come and just as they blocked. The pathways and roots for other people so did the Holy One blessed be he blocked the pathways and roots of mercy from them so that they could not receive mercy in this world or in the world to come. 265 Rabbi Abba then said all the people of the world will rise at the resurrection of the dead and be judged but of the people of SDOM it is said and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 122 yet the Holy One blessed be he is merciful because he punished them in this world and they accepted his punishment they shall not be punished in the future with all judgments but only with a few of them. 266 Rabbi Shia said that it is written and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow and he asks what is meant by when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt since he dwelt only in one of them and he replies Lot did dwell in all of them as it is written and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward SDOM Bereshit 1312 but nobody accepted him. In SDOM except for the king of SDOM for the sake of Abraham who returned his people and the goods that he had lost during the war of the four kings Sitrei Torah concealed Torah 267 to Sephet and sublime connections namely those righteous people whose Nefesh Rash and Neshama are connected and attached to the greatness of the Holy One blessed be he governors who shatter the powers of the other side the wise in understanding look to know the whitehead namely Eric Enpin whose hair is like pure sheep prepares the throne which is an allusion to Bina and sets it upon pillars of precious stones and gems which I as a reference to Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir Enpin and the Nukba which are the four legs of the throne which is Bina 268 among these stones there is a particular gem this is a reference to the Nukba of Zeir Enpin which is beautiful and glamorous it is a place where the smoke and fire gather and glow through 70 aspects this refers to the decree of Judgment which is the illumination of the left side in the nukba before it is included within the right and she is a place of judgment according to the secret of a burning fire and hot steam of the furnace. These 70 aspects glow in all directions that is to all four winds directions of the world which are named Chakma, Bina, Tiferet and Malchut. 269 these 70 aspects issue from the three colors which are white, red and green while the color of Malchut which is black does not appear there. These sparks are included within the sparks that sparkle in the four directions of the world. A strong spark lies to the left side which clings to the heavens namely Zeir and the judgments that are in these 70 aspects are modified and the books are open as if to say that even though the books in which the judgments or sentences are written are open and seen by all the judgment is nevertheless modified and does not execute any punishment. 270 from here the arrow swords. Spears and the fire of the tower go forth and a strong fire comes out of the heavens Zeir and been clinging to it namely to the Nukva thus when the upper fire namely the judgments of Zeir and been clings to the lower fire namely the seventy judgments of the Nukva no one can cancel the wrath and judgment that belong to the judgments of the Nukva 271 Zeir and been comes down to the world with the eyes glowing like the fiery flames of fire that is with eyes glowing with fire according to the secret of the verse I will go down now and see woe to he who shall run into him when he is armed with swords this refers to the judgments which are called swords he has a sharp sword in his hand and has pity on neither the good nor the bad the verdict of those seventy colors comes down by the left hand with permission granted by the unison to which that side of the heavens is attached 272 he changes into many kinds of judgment every day he changes into many colors this means that they receive a different shape each time it happens when offensive speech is exalted and collected cheaply among the rulers of men all sorts of judgments appear in the vessel of wrath of the Holy One blessed be he and these judgments remain at the top of the world while human beings because of their ignorance are not aware of them 273 brimstone and fire refers to the waste of water and fire that have been drawn from the heavens combined together and released upon SDOM woe to the wicked who do not pay attention for the glory of their master 274 ten names are engraved by the king's authority the ten names refer to the ten there are ten spirot as explained in Sefer Yetzirah the book of formation ten exactly not nine or eleven nevertheless they also add up to a greater number which is a reference to the 72 names this can be explained further these 70 colors that glow in all directions derive from these names that is from the 72 names and these 70 colors were engraved and formed into the secret of the seventy names of the angels which are the secret of the heavens 275 and they are Michael Gabriel Raphael Muriel Comets of Owl Kadumil Machil Zakil Patash of Owl Pedel Tumil Chaz Dial Fsir of Owl Fsiriel Raziel Yafile Siegel of Owl Studeria Gazriel Vatriel Lamel Chirik of Owl Chaskil Riatil Katshil Sheba of Owl Shemel Barkil Yul Kolam of Owl Chaniel Lahadil Machnil Shirak of Owl Shamshil Reveal Kamshil Shirak of Owl Called Melafim Shimaral Riatil Karshil 276 Ahanil Barkil Gadil Dumil Hadriel Vader Gazi Yazahariel Chaniel Tahariel Yazriel Kariel Longil Machil Nahariel Sandia Anil Patshil Fsiriel Kanil Rimil Shadariel Tafil 278 when they are all joined together as one. In one secret by the power of the Almighty namely Zeir Anpin then he is called Bab Yudhe Bab which means that all are united as one this refers to Zeir Anpin and the Nukva together with the seventy angels below her the phrase from Hashem out of heaven refers to the holy name that is engraved with the other seventy names of the secret of the heavens which all
70 names within Zeir and the one from the other so these are dependent on those which means that the lower ones which are the 70 judgments are dependent on the upper ones which are the 70 names of Zeir and they are all connected together and they all shine simultaneously and thus the Holy One blessed be he appears in his glory as we have stated the heavens have a numerical value of 70 and the secret of Yudhei Vavhei without the letter Vav is the secret of the 72 names. Derived from the three verses and he bent and he came in he stretched out Shema 1419 to 21 which appear in the portion of the parting of the Red Sea 280 Vav Hei Vav Yud Lin Yud Samek Yud Tetayin Lin Mem Mem Heishin Lin Lin Hei Alaf Kaf Alaf Kaf Hei Taf Hei Zayin Yud Alaf Lin Dalat Lin Dalat Vav Hei Ayin First Part Yud Zayin Lin Mem Bet Hei Hei Rish Yud Hei Kaf Mem Lin Dalat Vav Kaf Lin Yud Lin Vav Vav Hei Hei Lin Lin Kaf Yud 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 Mem Lin Hei Shet Hei Vav Second Part Nun Taf Hei Alaf Alaf Yud Rish Taf Shin Alaf Hei Rish Yud Alaf Vav Mem Lin Kaf Bet Vav Shin Rish Yud Shet Vav Lin Hei Shet Kaf Vav Kaf Mem Nun Dalat Third Part Alaf Nun Yud Shet Ayin Mem Rish Ayin Yud Zayin Hei Hei Mem Yud Kaf Vav Vav Lin Yud Lin Hei Samek Alaf Lin Ayin Rish Yud Ayin Shin Lin Mem Yud Hei Fifth Part Vav Hei Vav Dalat Nun Yud Hei Shet Shin Ayin Mem Mem Nun Dalat Nun Yud Taf Mem Bet Hei Vav Yud Nun Mem 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 Yud Yud lin tehrish chet mem zedirish fifth part vav mem bet yud hei ayin nun vav mem chet yud dalat mem bet mem nun kavalaf yud ayin chet bet vav rish alaf hei yud bet mem hei yud mem vav mem the sixth part blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever two hundred and eighty one and these are the seventy names that control the seventy lower grades which are the secret of vav yud hei vav hei together with the letter vav and these are the seventy names which are the secret of yud hei vav hei without the letter vav according to the secret of the heavens namely zeir and there are seven firmaments which correspond to the seven spirat of zeir and that are called the heavens each includes ten thereby adding up to the seventy names of the holy name yud hei vav hei and this is the secret of the verses and hashem vav yud hei vav hei rain dash which is the secret of the seventy judgments of the nukta and from hashem out of heaven dash which is the secret that is called. Seventy names included within the holy name Yudhei Vavhei 282 a very deep secret was passed on to the wise in relation to this name that is called the heavens from the secret the sublime mystery that is called man was created and the number of a person's body parts is 248 283 the number of letters in the 72 names adds up to 216 each name has three letters three times 72 equals 216 this name of the 72 names is the secret and most sublime mystery it is the essence of the Torah and it is included in the 22 letters and the 10 sayings their numerical value is 32 which is also the secret of the 32 paths of wisdom therefore this name is composed of 216 letters and 32 pathways which total 248 together and these are the 248 parts of the body 284 this is the secret of Yzeir and Benias called man who rules over the throne which is the secret of the lower 70 which refers to the 70 kinds of judgment and the 70 angels that issue from them these are called the throne and this is the secret of what is written and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it Yechizkel 126 this is Zeir and who is called man he is above on the throne which is the secret of the Nukba and her 70 kinds of judgment and this is the secret of what is written and Hashem reigned upon Sdom which alludes to the Nukba and her 70 kinds of judgment which is the secret of the throne the phrase from Hashem out of heaven refers to the secret of Zeir and who is above upon the throne and everything belongs to the same issue and the same secret this has been passed on to those wise men at heart happy are they in this world and in the world to come 285 as for SDOM its people were punished because they refrained from giving charity as it is written neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy Yeshiskel 1649 and this is why the judgment upon them came solely from heaven because charity and heaven are one as it is written for your kindness is great above the heavens Tehillim 1085 indicating that charity and kindness are both drawn from the heavens above because charity depends on the heavens their judgment is also drawn down from the heavens as it is written from Hashem out of heaven 286 the judgment upon Israel comes from that place as well referring to the heavens as it is written for the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the sin of SDOM each of 46 where Jerusalem is called the sister of SDOM as it is written behold this was the iniquity of your sister SDOM Yashiskel 1649 and this is why their judgment came upon them from the heavens the same judgment as fell on SDOM because they refused to give charity the only difference is that one was overthrown namely SDOM while the other Jerusalem was destroyed the second shall be reconstructed referring to Jerusalem while the other SDOM shall not end of Sitrei Torah. Section 21 but his wife looked back the Zohar divulges the spiritual significance of a biblical story about Lot and his wife in the literal story Lot's wife is turned into a pillar of salt when she turns to look behind her husband in reality she looked into the face of the angel of destruction the angel of destruction can only wreak havoc and devastation when we look him in the face the relevance of this passage our five senses restrict us to a narrow limited view of reality we journey through life wearing blinders consequently we stumble into negative circumstances that create upheaval and turmoil we receive assistance from the creator enlightening our consciousness to his spiritual direction this assistance guides and protects us so that we never come face to face with destructive entities at any time in our life 287 of the verse but his wife looked back from behind him Bereshit 1926 he asked why is it written from behind him rather than from behind her namely behind the Sheshina and Rabbi Yussi replied from behind him means from behind Lot as the angel of destruction went behind him and he asked how could the angel of destruction have followed behind him after sending him away and he replies the angel of destruction refrained from destroying any place where Lot went but the angel of destruction overthrew the place from which he had departed 288 this is why the angel of destruction said to him look not behind you because everything Behind you I will destroy therefore it is written but his wife looked from behind him and saw the angel of destruction as a result she became a pillar of salt as long as the angel of destruction does not see a person's face he does not destroy them but as Lot's wife did turn her face back to look from behind him she immediately became a pillar of salt section 22 a land in which you shall eat bread without scarceness the power emanating from it. Land of Israel is the source of all spiritual energy for the entire world whenever we pray our thoughts and consciousness should be directed towards the land of Israel so that we connect ourselves to this fountainhead of spiritual nourishment the relevance of this passage there are many regions on the planet that emit powerful spiritual forces these geographical locations are the portals through which the light of the upper world enters into the physical dimension the land of Israel is it. Energy center and source for the entire world, and for this reason, it has remained front and center on the world stage for millennia. This passage creates a powerful conduit connecting our souls to the land of Israel, and ultimately, the creator, the source of all spiritual nourishment. 289 Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yussi were standing one day and discussing this passage. Rabbi Lazar said, It is written, The land in which live, which in it you shall eat bread without scarceness, you shall not lack anything in it. Devarim 89 Why are the words in it repeated twice? It has already been stated that the Holy One, blessed be He, divided all the peoples and the lands according to appointed messengers, but the land of Israel has no angel or governor controlling it, only the Holy One, blessed be He alone. This is why He brought the people over whom no one rules except the Holy One, blessed be He, to the land over which no one rules except the Holy One, blessed be He. 290 Come and behold the Holy One. Blessed be he supplied the land of Israel with provisions and food first and then to the rest of the world so all the other nations that worship planets and constellations eat in scarceness while in the land of Israel it is not so because the land of Israel is nourished first and only then the rest of the world which feeds on the leftovers 291 this is why it is written the land which in it you shall eat bread without scarceness in which you shall eat in abundance thus in it you shall eat but only
Zechariah 14 17 would be punished by having rain withheld, but if the family of Egypt does not go up and does not come to Jerusalem, but 18 it is not written that upon them shall be no rain, because it usually does not rain in Egypt and the people there are in no need of it, so what is their punishment? It is as the verse continues, this shall be the plague with which Hashem will smite the nations if it since the Egyptians don't need rain, SDOM as well was well watered everywhere, Beersheet 1310. Which means that it had all the worldly pleasures and delights, for they did not want any other person to share these delights or receive these pleasures there. The people did not receive any guests. 294 Rabbi Shia said the people of SDOM were wicked because of themselves and their possessions and not because of their fertile land. This is true because they refused to give charity. A person who is stingy with the poor is not worthy of continued existence in the world. In addition, he has no life in the world to come, but whoever is good heart towards the needy is worthy of existence in the world, and the world exists because of his merit. He shall have life and longevity in the world to come. Section 23 And Lot went up out of Tor. There are no coincidences in life, no matter how accidental or random an event may appear to be. There is always an existing and underlying order and root cause. For example, Lot is taken advantage of by his daughters. He gets drunk with one and his daughters engage in an incestuous relationship with their father. The Zohar explains that the one corresponds to negative left column energy in this specific situation because it was used for immoral purposes. Remarkably, King David's ancestry is rooted in this incestuous relationship, and from the house of King David will emerge the Messiah. A profound lesson of life is distilled through this controversial chain of events, Kabbalistically, the spiritual and physical worlds are perfectly balanced. The greater the force of negativity, the greater potential for revelation of the positive force. The Messiah is destined to generate the greatest possible spiritual light in this world, and therefore the Messiah must emerge from the lowest and darkest realm. A union between Lot and his wife cannot be considered darkness, so this relationship could not plant the seed of the Messiah. Incest is considered the lowest and darkest form of union, and therefore it can also be. Transformed into the highest and brightest form of spiritual light, the relevance of this passage, the flaming light of a candle holds no genuine value or worth when measured against the brilliant radiance of the sun, though in a darkened room a single flame assumes great importance and significance. We are born into a world of darkness so that our spiritual efforts achieve significance and illumination. Constant striving against our dark side bestows value and worth upon our positive attributes. Awareness and recognition of the importance of confronting our dark side and transforming our negative characteristics into positive attributes arise through the words and wisdom of these verses 295. And Lot went up out of Sur and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. Bear sheet 1930 he asks why did he go up out of Sur and he replies because he noticed that Sur was close to SDOM, that is why he left there. 296 Rabbi Itzhak and began the discussion by quoting and it is turned around and about by his counsels that they may do whatsoever he commands them. Eo 3712 This means that the Holy One blessed be he arranges events in the world and creates destructive lights to accomplish his actions and afterward he turns them around again and again in different ways. 297 He asks and with what does he turn them around and he replies this is done by his counsels that is the Holy One blessed be he plans schemes and invents reasons to turn things around so that they are completely changed and are not similar to what they seem to be previously that they may do refers to the doings of people and the ways in which they accomplish their deeds. This is how he turns things around and changes the activities of the destructive lights and whatsoever he commands them upon the face of the world and the earth means that events change because the activities of people change thereby turning around those same activities that the Holy One blessed be he commands them to accomplish upon earth and they are changed into many different forms in the world all according to the quality of the activities of the people with these words Rabbi Yitzhak began the discussion to understand the issue of Amon and Moab and how they were formed as a result of a corrupt action and how all the kings of Yehuda issued from them even King Mashiach 298 Rabbi Lazar said and it is turned around and about by his schemes this means that the Holy One blessed be he guides the course of events and causes certain actions to be performed in the world as soon as the people are convinced that events are stable the Holy One blessed be he turns them around and about and completely changes them again your Rabbi Lazar disagrees with Rabbi Yitzhak's explanation that in the beginning the activities were disrupted by destructive lights but later were turned around and about and amended by the Holy One blessed be he Rabbi Lazar explains that in the beginning they were Good and worthy of existing in the world, but were eventually corrupted by the doings of the people. As a result, the Holy One blessed be He turned them around and about for the better if the people repent and atone for their misdoings. 299 The word by His counsels is spelled without a yud, which indicates a singular form and could be compared to a potter who shapes vessels from clay. As long as the stone will is still revolving, He can fashion the pot according to His taste and even change its shape. This is possible only while the pots are still turning. 300 Similarly, the Holy One blessed be He turns His actions around and about by His counsels minus the yud, which is a singular form. But what is His counsel? His counsel is the lower court of judgment that is the mukbah of Zeir and which corresponds to the pots of clay turning in front of the potter and He changes them from one vessels to another. 301 And all is done to reflect people's actions. The Holy One. Blessed be he changes the form of the vessels in accordance with the actions of people if the people perform good deeds the clay pots revolve to the right which is Jesus if their actions benefit humanity cessatim and all goodness will be drawn down into the world as long as the stone will turns to the right events will be positive the world will revolve with it and receive the doings and actions from the right column which is Jesus 302 but if people intend to send in the holy one. Blessed be he will direct his counsel which is the nukva that constantly moves and which was revolving to the right to turn around and revolve to the left and he turned the objects and the vessels which were to the right to the left 303 as a result the stone wheels change direction and become actions that will hurt humankind and these stone wheels keep turning in that direction to the left until people perform good deeds again so the direction in which the stone wheels turn depends on. The actions of humankind therefore it is written and it is turned around and about by his counsels that they may do whatsoever he commands them because the counsel which is the secret of the stone wheels depends upon the actions of humankind and it never stands still it constantly revolves either to the right or to the left 304 come and behold the holy one blessed be he has created all the events and actions necessary to accomplish everything properly and everything comes down and is drawn into the world from the main source and root above the holy one blessed be he brought Abraham to be close to him he then begot Yishmael who was born before Abraham was circumcised thus Yishmael was born down below and was not perfected by the sign of the covenant 305 later on the holy one blessed be he guided the course of events by his counsel and Abraham was circumcised and joined the covenant his name was completed and he was called Abraham with the addition of the Hesoth First hay of the holy name Yudhi Hay which is Bina became his crown according to the secret of deriving water from air 306 as soon as the secret was perfected and Abraham was circumcised its hawk was born to him he was a holy seed and was attached up above according to the secret of deriving fire from water and so it is written yet I had planted you a noble vine holy right seed your Maya 221 hence he was not related to the other side which refers to the left side alone. Instead he was included within the right side 307 come and behold two separate nations came forth from Lot and his daughters which were attached to the side that was appropriate for them namely the other side this is why the holy one blessed be he manipulates events and turns things around in the world he wants everything to be well arranged and related to its place in holiness this means that everything should be carefully arranged and properly planned to ensure the proper issuing of it. Kings of Yehuda and King Mashiach this is the meaning of the verse and it is turned around and about by his counsels that they may do whatsoever he commands them. 308 come and behold Lot was worthy of having the Holy One blessed be he produced these two nations from his union with his wife but in order to attach them to their predestined place he produced them from his daughters and this was achieved with the help of wine as it is written and they made their father drink wine. Beersheet. 1933 this wine which is a secret explanation of their actions was prepared especially for them and was found on that specific night in the cave if there had been no wine these two nations would not have come into the world therefore it is written and he drank of the wine and was drunk. Beersheet 921 and this has already been explained. 309 come and behold they called their sons M
to ultimately result in the birth of Mashiach of the younger daughter. However, it is written, nor when she arose a bit 35 without Abab, because her issue was not for the sake of the Holy One. Blessed be he. This is why when reading when she arose about the elder sister, there is a dot over the Bab, even though the younger daughter also produced kings. Namath Ammonite was King Solomon's wife and the mother of Rechabam. Nevertheless, as King David certainly is the most important of all as he is. Mashiach 311 Rabbi Shimon and said the meaning of the verse he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose I asked that he did not know that the Holy One blessed be he intended to raise from her King David and King Solomon and all the other kings along with Mashiach furthermore the phrase when she arose is analogous to what was said of Rod and she rose up before one could discern another Rod 314 and on that day she certainly had an issue because Boaz made it with her to preserve it. Name of the dead and his lineage thus all these kings and all the noble men in Israel were raised through her according to another explanation and he perceived not when she lay down resembles the words and she lay at his feet until the morning it is written when she arose and she rose up before one could discern another this is why when she arose I spelled with a bob with a dot above it the difference between this explanation and the first one is that here he explained the verse. And he perceived not when she lay down as well in the first explanation he did not explain this verse 312 come and behold see how modest Abraham was from the beginning when the Holy One blessed be he determined to execute his judgment on SDOM Abraham pleaded for mercy but he did not plead for mercy for Lot later when it is written and lo the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of the furnace bear sheet 1928 Abraham still did not intercede for Lot and said nothing to the Holy One. Blessed be he in Lot's favor and the Holy One blessed be he did not mention anything to him so that Abraham would not think that the Holy One blessed be he had drawn on Abraham's merits because of that 313 we know that Abraham cared about Lot because Abraham risked his life for Lot by waging war against four powerful kings as it is written and when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive and he divided himself against them be night and he brought back all the goods and also brought Back his brother Lot and his possessions bear sheet 1414 to 16 however because of Abraham's love for the Holy One blessed be he and because he knew of Lot's misconduct he did not ask that the Holy One blessed be he overlook Lot's actions thus he did not plead for mercy on Lot's account neither in the beginning nor in the end beginning with paragraph 314 and onward we find what is known as Midrash Hanilam hidden explanations these hidden explanations of the Zohar appear primarily in the first few sections of Genesis this particular section explains that the story of Lot and his daughters is a parable referring to man and his evil inclination the Zohar explains how the evil inclination always catches us and how we can protect ourselves from it Midrash Hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 314 and Lot went up out of Torah Rabbi Abba who said behold what is written about the evil inclination you should know that it will always exist in human beings until that time of which it is written and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh Yashiskel 3626 and even though it sees human beings punished in Gehenom it returns again in people this is as it is written and Lot went up out of Surah that is out of the agony had today are of Gehenom from there he goes up to seduce people 315 Rabbi Yehuda said there are three directing powers in people one is the directing power of the mind and wisdom which is the power of the holy Neshama next is it directing power of lust which craves all kinds of evil desires and finally the directing power that controls human beings in their behavior and strengthens the body this is called the nefesh of the body of which Rabbi Dimi said this is the maintaining power 316 Rabbi Yehuda said come and behold the evil inclination has control over the last two powers the lusting nefesh always follows the evil inclination we learn this from what is written and the firstborn said to the younger our father is old bear sheet 1931 the lusting nefesh arouses the other and seduces it through the body to cleave to the evil inclination and it says come let us make our father drink wine and we will lie with him what is for us in, in the world to come let us pursue the evil inclination and the lustful pleasures of this world so what did they do they agreed to cling to it thus it is written and they made their father drink wine they feed ravenously in order to arouse themselves and reach the evil inclination through food and drink 317 and the firstborn went in and lay with her father at 33 when a person lies in bed at night the lusting nefesh arouses the evil inclination it clings to it until he clings to every evil thought and it conceives a little which brings that evil thought into the heart of man and it clings to it and remains in the heart without being fulfilled until that lustful desire arouses the power of the body as it did at first to cling to the evil inclination and then evil is achieved as it is written thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father Ibid 36 318 Rabbi Yitzhak said the evil inclination can be seduced only by eating and drinking and by the merriment of wine and it controls humankind as for the righteous what is written of him it is written the righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul Mishlei 1325 and never becomes drunk as Rabbi Yehuda said a Torah scholar who gets drunk is described as a jewel of gold in a swine snout Mishlei 1122 and as well as that he desecrates the celestial name how do sinners behave it is written and behold joy and gladness Yeshayah 2213 at the stage wine takes over a person slaying oxen and killing sheep eating flesh and drinking wine a bit of them the scriptures say woe to them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink Yeshayah 511 to arouse the evil inclination as this inclination is not aroused without wine therefore it is written and they made their father drink wine 319 Rabbi Abihu then said it is written that he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose this means that the evil inclination is not aware of its lying down in this world nor of its rising up to the world to come it is aroused through the power of the body to accomplish its lustful desires in this world as Rabbi Abihu said when the sinners enter into Gehenom the evil inclination is brought there to see them as it is written when Lot entered into Tzor Hebzai agony Bereshit 1923 that is into the agony of Gehenom and from there it rises to seduce people therefore it is written and Lot went up out of Tzor out of the agony of Gehenom 320 and dwelt in the mountain of it 30 Rabbi Yitzhak said what we learn from the words in the mountain is that this is the dwelling place of Lot and his two daughters who are the two forces mentioned before in the mountain means in the body which is as wasted as a mountain that has no goodness in it because he feared to dwell in Surah but three fear and anxiety overtook him as he saw the agony of Gehenom and the misery of the wicked and it thinks it will be punished there however as soon as it realizes that it shall not be punished there the evil inclination goes out and seeks to seduce human beings to follow a 321 rabbi who not discussed the subject in an effort to warn people he would say to them my children beware of the messenger from Gehenom and who is this messenger it is the evil inclination which is the messenger from Gehenom 322 rabbi Abba then asked why is it written the leech has two daughters crying give give Mishlei 3015 these refer to the two daughters of Lot who correspond to the lusting nefesh and the nefesh that takes part in the body and constantly pursues the evil inclination rabbi Yahashua said about Lot it is written he feared to dwell in Surah it is also written there that the leech has two daughters crying give give the numerical value of fear equals that of leech Rabbi Yitzhak said if he was afraid why then does the evil inclination come to misguide people but this is indeed the way of the wicked when he sees evil his fear lasts only a moment he then immediately returns to his wicked ways and fears nothing similarly when the evil inclination sees the wicked being punished it is afraid but as soon as it leaves it fears nothing 323 Rabbi Abba said in reference to the verse and the firstborn said to the younger our father is old what is our father is old this alludes to the evil inclination that is called old as it is written an old and foolish king Kahila 413 it is old because it is born together with person as we have learned Rabbi Yehuda said Rabbi Yossi said that the lusting nefesh says to the other one our father is old so let us follow him and cling to him like all the other wicked people in the world and there is not a man in the earth to come to us means that there is no righteous person upon earth and there is no one who has control over his lustful desire so there are many sinners in the world and we therefore will not be the only guilty ones let us do as all the people on earth do let us since until now this is the way all people on earth conduct themselves let us make our father drink wine let us be happy in this world by eating and drinking and getting drunk we will then cling to our father namely the evil inclination
Inclination has no perception at all so it clings to her and she clings to it later she arouses the other thus after the great thought is attached to the evil inclination the other one comes and clings to it 325 and they made their father drink wine bear sheet 1935 to arouse the evil inclination and cling to it and then they fulfilled their evil thoughts through action and they both became pregnant to the evil inclination as it is written thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father eat of 36 now that their deeds are done each one bears its evil this is the way of the wicked they interact with the evil inclination until it kills them and then drags them down into Gehenna where it leaves them afterward it goes out to seduce more people as has been explained so he recognizes its ways is saved from it and never joins it 326 rabbi it's said this is similar to the example of a group of bandits that prepares ambushes along the roads to rob and kill People they choose one person from among them who knows how to deceive other men with soft words what does he do he first goes among the intended victims to welcome and serve them until the foolish among them trust him his affection and his way of speech and rejoice with him he leads them on with his soothing words so that they follow the route along which the other bandits are hiding and as soon as they reach the hiding place he is the first to kill them the other bandits come kill them and take their money while the victims shout and cry woe to us for listening to him namely to the evil inclination and to his soothing words after they are killed he emerges and goes to deceive other people as before what do those who are clever do when they see him coming to seduce them they recognize him as the one who ambushes their soul so they kill him and travel a different route this is the way of the evil inclination it emerges from among the group of bandits that is it leaves to Hanamdu. Welcome people and seduces them with its sweet tongue as it is written and Lot went up out of Sur and dwelt in the mountain just like the bandits did to prey on people what does it do it walks in front of them and the fools have faith in it and in its love through which it deceives them it serves them as a slave who supplies them with beautiful forbidden women it allows people to be bad and frees them from the commitments of Torah and the yoke of the heavenly kingdom the fools see all this and trust in its love accept its guidance and follow it along the same path where the bandits are hidden the path to Gehenom along which there is no way of turning to the right or to the left and as soon as it arrives with them at that place it is the first to kill them and become the angel of death for them and it makes them enter Gehenom and brings them down to the angels of destruction and they cry out saying woe to us for listening to it namely to the evil inclination but their cries Serve no purpose repentance and remorse are only effective during one's lifetime not after death afterward the evil inclination leaves Gehenom and goes to seduce other people the clever who immediately recognize it will overcome it until they have full control over it then they choose a different route to save themselves 327 Rabbi Yosef traveled to Babylon where he saw young lads who were not yet married they walked freely among beautiful women and did not commit any sin he asked them are you not afraid of the evil inclination they answered we do not come from a mixture of good and bad but were hewn out of the holy of the holies this means that their parents had no evil thoughts at the time of their mating when the young lads were hewn out of them because they had only holy thoughts the young lads were not afraid of the evil inclination as Rabbi Yehuda said that Rab said a person should sanctify himself during sexual intercourse in order to produce holy children sons with holy Attributes who have no fear of the evil inclination this is according to the verse sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy Vayikra 207 328 Rabbi Abba asked what is meant by the verse and hello my Shabbat had plural Yashis called 2020 this means that the mating period of the sages are timed every Shabbat and he warns them that because sexual intercourse is a precept hello means that you should sanctify yourselves during my Shabbat had plural through the precept of mating Rav. Yehuda said that Rav said whoever arrives at a city and sees nice women should lower his eyes and say look how I have been hewn from highly important parents you dangerous obstacle which I as a reference to the clipper that causes the thought of women get out get out of me as he is a holy fruit of Shabbat which means that he was born from a mating during Shabbat the clipper has no control over him so he asks why then should he whisper these phrases as he enters the city and he answers. Because the heat of the hardship of traveling overcomes him, so the evil inclination might also overcome him. End of Midrash Hanilam section 24 Amon and Mo, the original serpent in the Garden of Eden ate fruits from the tree, which is also interpreted as drinking wine through this action. Two negative energy forces came into existence. Do not pronounce Malkin and Peer. The Zohar expounds upon these two negative forces and how they manifest into our world. To influence man, the two children born from an incestuous relationship between Lot and his two daughters were the physical manifestation of these two forces. King David, who is a descendant of these offspring, used this tremendous negativity as a tool to take control over the two negative forces according to the laws of spirituality. In order to attain genuine control over any situation or force, one must have some connection to it. It was destined that King David be seated with this negativity. Because he was ingrained with the spiritual strength necessary to take control over it the moment man seizes control over any negative aspect of his nature for example the trait of jealousy he immediately influences and minimizes the force of jealousy in the entire world the envy that lurks within in the hearts of all men is rooted in one source this principle holds true for all negative qualities the relevance of this passage mankind's natural instinct is to treat multiple symptoms as opposed to curing the one underlying and unseen cause all of our negative traits are rooted in one source we gain control over our own negativity and reactive impulses and their source and origin by virtue of this passage moreover we connect ourselves to any negativity that we came into contact with at prior times in our life and take control over and diminish the root of these forces as well citrate torah concealed torah 329 and lot went up out of sore because of the desire of the king bit of refuse which bears an engraved image is separated from the right side and clings to the refuse of the gold that comes from the left side and it resides within the unholiness which was shaped into the image of the tree 330 when it's hot who is the left column of holiness wanted to rise up in the world by the might of the harsh judgment he overcame the grades of the left and severed them from their sustenance this is how the right column called Avraham became strong he therefore separated that figure from the unholiness 331 the primordial serpent penetrated the fruits of that tree this being the one that it drank and it begot two grades that are interrelated and surround the side of unholiness one is called Malcolm and the other peer 332 one is a hidden advice the other is an open advice and he explained that peer is revealed and all its actions its deeds are performed in the open Malcolm in contrast is hidden and all its actions its deeds are secreted these Kinds of unholy elements were separated and went forth surrounding the great sea which is the Nukba and each and every aspect of impurity turns towards its place 333 in the same manner what occurs in the upper worlds happens with the souls down below Lot who is the refuse of the right separated himself from Abraham and dwelt among the people of SDOM who are the refuse of the gold that comes from the left and he achieved completion from them as is explained in the upper worlds when the judgment was aroused and they were overthrown the holy one blessed be he remembered Abraham and saved Lot thus Lot was separated from the unholiness of SDOM and returned to the holy side 334 his daughters made him drink wine which is the secret of the primordial serpent and they bore him two nations one was named Amon which is hidden and the other Moab which is revealed the great of Amon is the idol Malcolm the advisor of concealment the great of Moab is Peer which is completely revealed. 335 his daughters behaved similarly one said Ben Amilid son of my people I have a son from my nation but she did not name the father this is why he is related to the concealed aspect the other daughter said Mo he came from my father Meavi I have born a son from my father thus the son's greatest peer the unconcealed aspect 336 King David was attached to both Ammon and Moab because Rod issued from Mo and King David from her and David was enthroned by the crown of Ammon which was a testimony to the seat of David as it is written and he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony to Melashim 1112 this crown came from Malcolm which is the great of the children of Ammon as it is written and he took their king's head Malcolm crown to Shmuel 1230 337 Malcolm is the great of the children of Ammon as it is written and it was set on David's head to Shmuel 1230 and from then on it became an everlasting testimony for his sons after him. Through it it became evident who are of the sons of David and worthy of kingship if he was able to bear the crown upon his head then they said that he is certainly from the seed of David even on the day he was born he was already able to bear the weight of the crown upon his head though it was heavy with gold and
Daughters of the evil inclination to arouse the evil inclination to rule the body one is the nefesh that constantly grows within the body the other is the nefesh that lusts after evil desires of this world the latter is the firstborn while the former the first one is the younger 340 the evil inclination always clings to both of these souls in order to seduce human beings and make them trust it so that it may lead them to the place where they are shot by the arrows of death and torn into shreds as it is written till a dart strike through his liver mishlei 723 341 and this is similar to those thieving bandits in the mountains who hide in a frightening spot to which most people refrain from traveling how do they bring people to that place they choose from among them the one who has the sharpest tongue one who knows how to tempt people this one leaves them and travels on the main path to the place through which all people pass as soon as he arrives there and meets them Namely the inhabitants of the world he joins them he pulls them into his net and brings them to that evil spot where the other bandits wait to rob and murder them this is how the evil inclination works it seduces human beings and persuades them to have faith in it while it brings them to the place of the arrows of death end of Sitray Torah section 25 she is my sister before Abraham goes down into the land of Egypt he attaches himself to the divine presence known as the Shechinah the word Egypt is a code for negativity and darkness the spiritual principle concealed in this story can be revealed by analogy if a person lowers himself into a deep darkened pit filled with deadly snakes to retrieve a great treasure he first secures himself to a powerful rope to ensure a safe retreat the rope becomes his lifeline as he enters into a dangerous environment Abraham attached himself to the force called Shechinah before he entered into the pit of Negativity Egypt so that he would maintain a lifeline to the creator the relevance of this passage there are moments in life when negative situations consume us without supernal assistance we fall prey to the traps and lures set up by the forces of negativity we are building for ourselves a secure lifeline to the creator for those difficult moments in life when we stumble and fall into negativity 342 and Abraham journeyed from there toward the south country Beersheet 201 all of Abraham's journeys were to the south which is Jesus rather than in any other direction he planned wisely so that he would be attached to the south 343 and Abraham said of Sarah his wife she is my sister Beersheet 202 we have learned that a person should not rely on miracles if the Holy One blessed be he performs a miracle for somebody he should not rely on a miracle another time because miracles do not simply occur at any given time 344 a person who not only puts himself in danger May use up all of his merits because as it is written I am unworthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the trust. Beersheet 3211 and he asks if Abraham knew that his emergence from Egypt was a miracle why did he put himself into difficulty again by saying she is my sister 345 and he replies Abraham did not rely on himself at all but saw the Shechinah dwelling constantly in Sarah's residence from which she never moved and because the Shechinah was there Abraham relied on her and said she is my sister as it is written sage wisdom you are my sister Mishlei 74 this means that the Shechinah is also called wisdom therefore he said she is my sister 346 but Elohim came to Abimelech he asks could it be that the Holy One blessed be he visits the wicked as it is written and Elohim came to Bilam Bimidbar 229 and Elohim came to Laban Beersheet 3124 and he replies this was only a governor a messenger who was in charge over them as every nation has a celestial governor when angels complete their missions which they receive from Hashem they are called by the holy name Elohim because they represented the aspect of judgment and the name Elohim is an indication of judgment this is why it is written but Elohim came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him behold you are but a dead man for the woman which you have taken Beersheet 203 referring only to the angel that governs his nation and not to the Holy One blessed be he 347 Rabbi Shimon. Open the discourse with the verse, the language of truth shall be established forever. Mishlei 1219, this refers to Abraham whose words were always truthful. The phrase, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. It however refers to Abimelech 348 of Abraham. It is written, and Abraham said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister. This is similar to what he said in Egypt when he said to the Shechinah that accompanied Sarah, she is my sister. So twice Abraham said, she is my sister and referred to the Shechinah when he said it and Abraham did everything wisely. 349, he asks why I asked the Shechinah called sister and he responds because Abraham is related to the right side. He said, she is my sister and the secret corresponds to what is written, my sister, my love, my dope, my undefiled. Sure, Hashirim 52 and Abraham always called her my sister because he cleaved to her and they were never separated. 350 in the end it is written and yet indeed she is my sister, she is the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother Beersheet 2012 so he asks was it really so was she not the daughter of Haran and he replies everything that he said was a reference to the Shechinah she is my sister that he said in the beginning is similar to say to wisdom you are my sister and he concluded and yet indeed what is meant by and it expands the explanation with she is my sister the daughter of my father which means that the Shechinah is a daughter of the supernal Shachma which is the supernal Abba and I am a both of which are called Abba this is why the Shechinah is called his sister and wisdom but not as stated in the preceding paragraph the daughter of my mother this means that my mother I has drawn from the place where everything begins and where everything is concealed which is Eric Anpin from Eric Anpin the secret of Bina that returns to become Shachma is drawn Bina becomes enclosed by Yisrael Saba and Tenuva collectively called I am a so the Shechinah here is not a daughter but rather a mother herself as she enclothes her therefore because she is an aspect of the left from the side of the mother she became my wife in fondness and affection as expressed in the verse and his right hand embraces me sure hasherim 83 she longs for the shesedim of the right so that her chakma may be enclosed by the shesedim all this is according to the secret of wisdom 351 come and behold when they first went down to Egypt he said she is my sister in order to cleave to the faith therefore he called her my sister so that they would not be mistaken and follow those grades outside holiness so here as well with Abimelech he said my sister in order not to be diverted from the proper faith 352 this is because Abimelech and all the inhabitants of the land followed idolatry while Abraham cleaved to the faith so when he entered there he said of the Shechinah she is my sister just as a sister can never be separated from a Brother so here as well Abraham was attached to the Shechinah in such a manner that they could never be separated although a wife can be separated from her husband a sister can never be separated from her brother because two siblings can never ever be separated 353 thus Abraham said she is my sister everybody was enthusiastic about running after and worshipping the lights of the stars and constellations but Abraham cleaved to the faith and said about the Shechinah she is my sister and we shall never be separated from each other you may derive this from the words and for his sister a virgin Vayikra 213 which has been said about the priest but signifies the place where Abraham who is the right column and she said resides the Shechinah is called his virgin sister because from the aspect of the right side the Shechinah is called both a sister and a daughter 354 it is written you shall fear Hashem your Elohim him you shall serve and to him you shall cleave and swear by his name, Devarim 1020, this phrase has already been explained, but nevertheless come and behold, it is not written Hashem to Hashem your Elohim, you shall have fear using the date of case, but only fear heavy T Hashem. So what does the Kizid particle ET mean? It refers to the first grade of the tense Firot counting upward, namely the Nukba, which I asked the region of fear of the Holy One, blessed be he, therefore it is written, you shall fear because there in the Nukba a person should fear his master as she represents judgment 355 and him Hebodo, you shall serve alludes to the upper grade, namely is it of Z E I R Anpin, which resides above this lower grade, which is the Nukba, and they are never separated from each other. These two words ET and Odo him cleave to each other and are never separated. So he asks, What does Odo mean? And he answers, This is the region of the Holy Covenant and everlasting sign Hebo that refers to Yezid because no worshiping is done in ET the which does not pertain to service but to fear but service is above in Yezid of Zeir Anpin which is named Odo and this is why it is written him Hebodo you shall serve 356 the phrase and to him you shall cleave refers to the region where cleaving occurs which is the center of the body namely in the central column which is Tiferet and lies between the two arms which are Shisa and Gbira who represent the two columns left and right the words
Be able to climb back out. What does he do? He fastens a rope high above the pit and says to himself, Now that I have tied this knot, I will enter the pit. Similarly, before Abraham went to Egypt, he secured himself with the knot of faith. Only after this was secured did he travel to Egypt 358, and he did the same when he entered the land of the Philistines. This is why it is written, The language of truth is established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Mishlei 1219. This applies to Abimelech, who said, In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands have I done this. Bear she 205. But Elohim answered him by saying, I know that you did this in the simplicity of your heart. But six, he did not say, And innocence of your hands, as Abimelech claimed. Thus Abimelech lied when he said, And the innocency of my hands. And this is why it is written of him, But a lying tongue is but for a moment. 359. Now restore to the man his wife, for he is a prophet. Bear she 207. Rabbi Yehuda began the discussion with the verse he guards the feet of his pious ones had chased off. Ashmuel 29 chased off is spelled without the letter Yud, which indicates that the verse applies to one pious man, and this is Abraham who is always protected by the Holy One. Blessed be he as he never removed his protection from over him. It is written he guards the feet because the feet allude to Abraham's wife along with whom in order to guard her the Holy One. Blessed be he sent his Chechenah. 360 Another explanation of the verse he guards the feet of his pious ones. Is that chased off is written without the letter Yud, which implies one that one was Abraham who was always accompanied by the Holy One. Blessed be he so that nobody could harm him and the wicked shall be silent in darkness refers to the kings whom the Holy One. Blessed be he had slain during that night that Abraham pursued them. 361 Therefore it is written shall be silent in darkness which means the night namely the Look, Abraham pursued the kings and the night as it became united with the darkness of the kings thus it is written and he divided himself against them he and his servants by night and the night divided upon them and smote them. Bereshit 1415 therefore the phrase and the night divided upon them refers to the Holy One blessed be he who separated judgment from mercy in order to avenge Abraham thus it is written and the wicked shall be silent in darkness and he smote them it should have been written and they smote them in the plural because Abraham and his servants smote them but of course it was the Holy One blessed be he who really smote them for by strength shall no man prevail. Ishmael 29 as he was alone there with Eliezer the numerical value of Eliezer is 318 and Abraham had 318 servants which are mentioned in the scriptures 362 Rabbi Yitzhak said but we have learned that where harm is expected a person should not depend on a miracle to save him and there is no place more dangerous than that into which Abraham pursued the four kings to wage war against them. Why then did he rely on a miracle to happen? Rabbi Yehuda responded, Abraham did not set out with the intention of waging war, nor did he rely on the occurrence of a miracle. Rather, he left his house because of the distress of Lot, whom he planned to ransom and free. And had he not been able to free him, he would have died with him in captivity. But as soon as he began his journey, he saw the Shechinah shining in front of him and armies of angels surrounding him. At that time, he started to pursue them. While the Holy One blessed be, he slew them. This is why it is written, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. Three hundred and sixty-three. Rabbi Shimon said, There is a secret hidden in the verse. He guards the feet of his pious, who is Abraham. When Abraham set out to wage war on the kings, Itzhak joined him, and they fell before him. If Itzhak had not joined Abraham, he would not have been able to slay. Them as it is written, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. By strength shall no man prevail, even though strength always lies with the right, which is Abraham. If the right was not included within the left side, which is its hot, then the kings would not have retreated before him. 364. Another explanation of the verse he guards the feet of his pious ones is that when a person loves the Holy One, blessed be he, the Holy One, blessed be he, returns that love by guarding all that he does. And his journeys, as it is written, Hashem shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Tehillim 1218. 365. Come and behold, observe how much Abraham loved the Holy One, blessed be he, wherever he went, he had no regard for his possessions at all. All his thoughts were directed toward cleaving to the Holy One, blessed be he alone. Therefore, the verse he guards the feet of his pious alludes to his wife because his feet allude to his wife about whom it is written now Abimelech had not come near her, Bereshit 204 and also therefore I did not allow you to touch her, Abit 6 366 about Pharaoh it is written and Hashem plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues, Bereshit 1217 Sarah spoke out directly to the Holy One, blessed be he asking him to smite and he smote it is written he guards the feet of the pious ones and the wicked are silent in darkness because it was Pharaoh and Abimelech on whom the Holy One, blessed be he inflicted judgments at night by darkness who is the man referred to in the verse for by strength shall no man prevail, this man is Abraham as it is written now therefore restore the man his wife, Bereshit 207 section 26 and the Satan standing at his right to prosecute him, the negative angel Satan stands on the right side of the high priest Joshua who has just been thrown into a pit of fire Kabbalistically the right side signifies the attribute of mercy and Fire signifies the concept of severe judgment in the story the angel Satan tells the creator that if he is going to show mercy upon Joshua then he should be obligated to save all the people who were with Joshua even though they are unworthy in other words Satan is cleverly implying that the creator cannot possibly save Joshua because of these special circumstances nonetheless the creator emancipates Joshua the spiritual lesson of this story is as follows during a time of intense judgment the righteous can still be saved amidst all the upheaval and destruction according to the Kabbalah another example of the creator performing the difficult task of concurrently emitting the forces of mercy and judgment was during the splitting of the Red Sea when the Israelites crossed over to safety while the Egyptians were drowning the relevance of this passage both wicked and righteous people dwell among us and their behavioral actions have an appropriate effect on the state of the world but Mending our own ways and choosing the path of spirituality we are securely connected by the section to the Creator's attributes of mercy during times of severe judgment 367 and Hashem visited Sarah as he had said Bereshit 211 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse and he showed me Yahashua the high priest standing before the angel of Hashem and the Satan standing at his right to prosecute him Zechariah 31 This passage should be studied carefully and he showed me Yahashua the high priest refers to Yahashua the son of Yahat Sadak in the phrase standing before the angel of Hashem who is the angel of Hashem it is the region that is called the bundle to which the soul of the righteous is attached and all the souls of the righteous are there this is the angel of Hashem which is mentioned in the verse 368 the phrase and the Satan standing at his right to prosecute him refers to the evil inclination which roams the world snatching souls and taking spirits from human beings by bringing accusations against humankind above as well as below this occurred when Nebuch had Nitzar cast Yahashua the high priest into the fire together with all the false prophets at that time the Satan brought accusations against him above so that he would be burned with them 369 this is the way of the Satan who shows his indictment at the hour of danger or when the world is in distress at those times he is allowed to prosecute and punish even without justice as it is written but sometimes ruin comes for want of judgment Mishlei 1323 what is meant by to prosecute him in other words what did he accuse him of he was asking that they all be saved or all be burned when the angel of destruction is granted permission to destroy the righteous are in as much danger as the wicked 370 therefore when judgment hangs over a city a man should flee before he is captured there and falls into the hands of the destroyer once the angel of destruction resides in a Place he treats the righteous the same as the wicked, all the more so as all three of them were together. This refers to Yahashua the high priest and the other two false prophets, Akab the son of Kaliah and Sitiyahu the son of Maasiyah. The Satan was demanded that all be burned or all be saved, because if a miracle is to occur, there cannot be half a miracle, it must be the same for all either miracle or judgment. 371 Rabbi Yussi said to him, That is not so, for when the Holy One blessed be he split the sea for Israel, he divided the sea only for those, namely the children of Israel. They walked on dry land while the waters came together again and drowned the others, namely the Egyptians who perished. So there was a miracle on one side and judgment on the other, even though they both occurred together. 372 He said to him, This is why the splitting of the Red Sea was so
But Satan Hashem rebuke you Satan therefore it is Hashem who says so and not an angel come and behold the same is true of Moshe in the bush about which it is written and the angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of fire Shema 32 and and when Hashem saw that he turned aside to see it before sometimes it is written the angel of Hashem sometimes an angel and sometimes Hashem therefore here as before and Hashem said to the Satan may refer to an angel as with Moshe this is why he said to him may Hashem rebuke you Satan rather than I hereby rebuke you Satan had it been Hashem who had said this it would have been written I hereby rebuke you Satan therefore we conclude that the one who said this was an angel 375 come and behold the same applies when judgment hangs over the world and the Holy One blessed be he sits upon the throne of judgment then the Satan who accuses above and below comes to destroy the world and snatch away the souls of human beings because the Satan is also the angel of death as is already known section 27 and the elders of that city shall break the heifer's neck in the ravine when someone is murdered and the killer is not brought to justice for whatever reason the soul of the dead person remains in this realm as a negative force and influence upon the community in ancient times the elders of the town performed a ritual slaughter on a heifer calf to remove this negativity the relevance of this passage situations in life unexpectedly turn negative for no apparent reason whatever can possibly go wrong does so to the detriment of our well-being there are no coincidences in life no random events of chaos it is our inability to perceive the metaphysical influences that manifest in our environment that creates the illusion of disorder the spiritual energy of this passage eliminates unseen negative forces and influences from our life 376 while studying Torah Rabbi Shimon. Examine the meaning of the verse and the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer to a rough ravine and shall break the heifer's neck in the ravine. Devarim 214 according to the law's head should be severed with the hatchet that is with an AX rabbi laser asked him why 377 rabbi Shimon wept and said woe to the world that has been lured after this referring to the heifer because of this they have to break its neck ever since the day that Adam was enticed by that evil serpent that obtained control over Adam and all the people in the world and so the serpent persecutes humankind who cannot evade its inflictions namely the punishment of death until King Mashiach appears then the Holy One blessed be he will revive those who sleep in the dust as it is written he will swallow up death forever Yeshua 258 and I will cause the unclean spirit to pass out of the land Zechariah 132 but until then he remains to seize the souls from all human beings who live in this world. 378 Come and behold it is written if a corpse is found slain Devarim 211 The souls of all human beings are taken away by the angel of death but if you say that the angel of death took away the soul of this person who was found slain you would be in error he who killed him has taken his soul away before it was time for the angel of death to rule 379 This is why it is written and the land cannot be cleansed Demidbar 3533 The killers are not satisfied that the evil serpent inflicts punishments on the world without reason and falsely accuses them constantly of sin so that they have to take away that which he is entitled to receive but the Holy One blessed be he has mercy on his children this is why they sacrifice a heifer in so doing they correct two things so that the soul of the man was taken from him referring to the man found slain and be they prevent him from prosecuting the world 380 We have here a deep and sublime secret because a bullet cow calf and a heifer. All follow a supernal and secret pattern therefore with the heifer everything is properly atoned for as it is written our hands have not shed this blood Devarim 217 thus we have not shed this blood nor have we caused his death as a result they are free from any accusations thus the Holy One blessed be he provides a solution for every problem in the world section 28 Rosh Hashanah and Yom Hakipurim through the Zohar various mysteries about Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are revealed the penetrating sound of the shofar has the power to confuse the negative angel called Satan who acts as prosecutor during these days of judgment and repentance the ten days that fall between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are likened to a great gift this time frame provides us with the chance to remove all the negativity and decrees of judgment that we have brought down upon ourselves through our wrongful actions over the prior year the prerequisite for accomplishing. This goal is accountability and genuine permanent change in our character. The relevance of this passage, the act of repentance, is a profound tool available to each of us anytime we truly choose to change our ways. The energy radiating from the verses revealing the hidden mysteries of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur allow us to continually draw upon the forces of purification throughout the entire year. 381 Come and behold, the same applies for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Hakipurim when judgment hovers over the world and the Satan is there to prosecute the children of Israel should be aroused by the shofar to create a voice. Also, sound that is a combination of water, fire, and wind, which are Shisid, Bura, and Typhorite, which become one in it and sound that voice from within the Shfar 382. And this voice rises up to the throne of judgment, strikes it, and rises further. And after this voice has reached above, then the voice of Yaakov is established on high, and the Holy One blessed be he is. Aroused with mercy just as Yisrael uses the shofar to release a voice from below which includes fire water and air so a voice is released from on high from the supernal shofar which is bind to the power to blow the shofar is fire and the voice is formed by the air the air is mingled with sweat and hot breath which are the secret of water and these arouse the three upper columns of Bina from where the Mokin are drawn down to Zeir and Ben and Malchut and this voice which consists of fire water and air and has risen from below it is established and appears from below and another appears from above so the world which is Malchut is established and mercy prevails 383 now the prosecutor is confused because he thought that by executing judgment he would punish the world but when he realizes that mercy was aroused he is perplexed his strength fails and he is unable to do anything then the Holy One blessed be he judges the world with mercy you may say that judgment has been executed but it is not so judgment and mercy are joined and the world is judged mercifully 384 come and behold it is written blow the shofar at the new moon at the time appointed lit when the moon is covered on our solemn feast day Tehillim 814 when the moon which is Malchut is covered because at that time as a result of the illumination of the left that evil serpent prevails and may bring harm to the world but when mercy is aroused by blowing the shofar the moon rises and moves away from it. Illumination of the left thus the Satan is confused and loses control then he is removed from the moon and never comes near again this is why on Rosh Hashanah New Year the Satan is dumbfounded as is a person who has just been awakened and is still half asleep 385 on Yom Hakipurim we should pacify and appease the Satan by offering him a scapegoat by sending it to the desert which is his place then he will become a defender for Israel but on Rosh Hashanah he is confused and loses his abilities he does not know nor is he able to do anything as he sees mercy aroused from below and endowed from on high and the moon which is the Malchut rises in between them this is when he is perplexed and no longer knows anything thus he loses his power 386 then the Holy One blessed be he judges Israel with mercy he has pity on the children of Israel and gives them time the ten days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Hakipurim to accept those who repent before him and atone for their since then he raises them up to the sanctity of Yom Hakipurim 387 from that day forward to keep all in order the Holy One blessed be he commanded Israel to perform the precept of the blowing of the shofar so that the Satan would not have dominion over them this means to abolish the Satan and his persecution so that mercy and not judgment will prevail and so they will be worthy on earth of the mercy of the Holy One blessed be he which is like the mercy of the Father towards his children all this depends on the arousal of the lower beings by action and words and all this has already been explained section 29 and Hashem visited Sarah a beautiful discussion takes place between the great sages concerning the mysteries of the resurrection of the dead and the events that will unfold at the end of days the end of days will see the dawning of an abundance of spiritual energy unprecedented in human history the determining factor as to who will Harness this energy and generate a radiance of light and who will short circuit and suffer will be based upon one parameter treating our fellow man with human dignity whereas in the past the consequences of our intolerant behavior were delayed for years or even lifetimes the end of days will see the distance between cause and effect contract and the repercussions of our actions positive or negative will be felt immediately judgment and mercy will coexist side by side the relevance of this passage according to the wisdom of Kabbalah it is the behavioral interactions of mankind that drive the cosmos establishing the positive and negative
was enslaved by him by his son and by the son of his son it is written your head upon you is like Carmel which applies to Neba Shadnitzar and it is also written the beast of the field had shadow under it Daniel 49 the phrase and the hair of your head like purple applies to Belshazzar who said shall be clothed with scarlet purple Daniel 57 the king is held in the galleries refers to evil Merodach the king of Babylon who was imprisoned until the death of his father and then ruled in his Place 389 Rabbi Yehuda asked why does this description appear in the Song of Songs then he continued to explain that seven items were created before the creation of the universe the first is the throne of glory as it is written your throne is established of old you are from everlasting Tehillim 932 and a glorious high throne from the beginning your Mea 1712 hence this was the beginning it preceded everything else and the Holy One blessed be he took the pure soul from the throne of glory so it would shine on the body this is as it is written your head upon you is like Carmel which refers to the throne of glory which is the head over everything and the phrase the hair of your head like purple refers to the soul that is taken from it the king is held in the galleries is the body imprisoned in the grave and consumed in the dust nothing remains of it except for a scrap of rot but from this the entire body will be rebuilt and when the Holy One blessed be he visits the body. He will tell the earth to cast it out as it is written and the earth shall cast out the dead. Yeshea 2619 390 Rabbi Yoshanan said the dead of the land of Israel shall be the first to live as it is written your dead men shall live. Yeshea 2619 dead bodies shall arise refers to those who have died away from the land of Israel. Awake and sing you who dwell in dust refers to those who have died in the desert as Rabbi Yoshanan asked why did Moshe die away from the land of Israel. It was to show the entire world that just as the Holy One blessed be he shall resurrect Moshe in the future so shall he resurrect his generation who received the Torah and of them it is written I remember in your favor the kindness of your youth the love of your espousals when you went after me in the wilderness in a land that was not so near. Mea 22391 another explanation of the verse awake and sing you that dwell in dust is that it refers to the patriarchs and the bodies of those who Died away from the land of Israel will be rebuilt and they shall roll under the ground until they reach the land of Israel there and not away from the land of Israel they shall receive their souls as it is written therefore prophecy and say to them thus says Hashem Elohim behold my people I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel Yeshua 3712 which is followed by and I shall put my spirit in you and you shall live a bit 14. 392 Rabbi Pincha said the soul is taken from the throne of glory which is the head as it is written your head upon you is like caramel and the hair of your head like purple means the soul that is the hair of the head finally the king is held in the galleries means the body that is held in the grave this refers to the body Sarah and the king so the holy one blessed be he shall visit it at the appointed time as it is written and Hashem visited Sarah as he had said he shall visit it. Body at the appointed time when he shall visit upon the righteous 393 Rabbi Pincha said in the future the Holy One blessed be he will make the bodies of the righteous as beautiful as Adam was when when he entered the garden of Eden as it is written and Hashem shall guide you continually and you shall be like a watered garden Yeshua 5811 Rabbi Levi then said as long as the soul remains in its exalted position it is nourished by the light from above and is enclosed with it and when it enters the body in the future it shall enter with that same light then the body will shine as the brightness of the firmament this is as it is written and they that are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament Daniel 123 and people will attain full knowledge as it is written for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Hashem Yeshua 119 how do we reach this conclusion from the verse and Hashem shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought Yeshua 5811 this is the light of above and make that your bones is the visiting of the body while and you shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not is the knowledge of the blessed creator then all creatures shall know of the soul that entered them that it is the soul of life the soul of delight which has received all pleasures and delights for the body from above and all are amazed by it saying how fair and how pleasant are you love and delights sure hasherim 73 all of which refers to the soul 394 rabbi yehuda said come and behold it is indeed so it is written the king is held in the galleries and then how fair and how pleasant are you rabbi yehuda continued at that time the holy one blessed be he will make his world happy and rejoice in his created beings as it is written hashem shall rejoice in his works tehillim 10431 and then there will be laughter in the world which we do not see now as it is written then will our mouth be filled with laughter Tehillim 1262 this is according to the verse and Sarah said Elohim has made for me to laugh Beersheet 216 so at that time people will chant songs as it is a time of laughter Rabbi Abba added that on the day when the Holy One blessed be he will rejoice together with his created beings there will be joy such as has not existed since the world was created and the righteous that remain in Jerusalem shall return no more to dust as it is written and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Sion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy Yeshua 43 precisely he that is left in Sion and he that remains in Jerusalem 395 Rabbi Acha asked then there will only be a few rather the rule that applies to Jerusalem and Sion applies to all those who remained in the Holy Land of Israel this teaches us that the whole land of Israel is included within Jerusalem based on what is written and when you shall come into the land Vayikra 1923 the entire land as a whole 396 Rabbi Yehuda the son of Rabbi Eliezer asked Rabbi Shizkia about the dead that the Holy One blessed be he shall resurrect why does he not give them back their souls in the places where they were buried and let them come to live in the land of Israel Rabbi Shizkia responded the Holy One blessed be he took an oath to build Jerusalem and to see that it shall never be destroyed as Rabbi Yermeah said the Holy One blessed be he shall renew his world and build Jerusalem he shall bring it down from above completely built so that it may never be destroyed and he took a solemn oath that the congregation of Israel shall never be exiled again and that Jerusalem shall never be destroyed as it is written you shall no more be termed forsaken neither shall your land any more be termed desolate Yeshua 624 everywhere you find a double negative there is an oath as it is written neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth, Beersheet 911, and it is written, For as I have sworn that the waters of notes should no more go over the earth, Yeshua 549. From this we conclude that a double negative is a solemn oath, and from that negative we can hear an affirmative, so the Holy One blessed be he shall re-establish his world in the future in such a manner that the congregation of Israel shall never be exiled and the temple will never be destroyed, therefore they shall not be given back their souls except in a place that is forever established, so that the soul will forever dwell in the body. Thus it is written, He that is left in sign and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy. 397 Rabbi Shizkia said, Thus he is holy, Jerusalem is holy, and he who remains in it is holy, he is holy as it is written, Holy is Hashem Tzvoti, Yeshua 63, and the Holy One in your midst, Hashia 119, Jerusalem is holy as is written, had gone from the holy place, Kahilat 810, and he that remains in it is. Holy as it is written, and it shall come to pass that he that is left in sign and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Yeshua 43. So as the first holy one is established, so are the other two holy ones. 398. Rabbi Yitzhak asked what is meant by the verse. Once again, old men and old women will dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand because of old age. Zechariah 84. What is the good in phrasing it thus? And every man with his staff, Rabbi Yitzhak replied that the righteous shall revive the dead in the future, as did Elisha the prophet, as it is written, and take my staff in your hand and go your way and lay my staff upon the face of the child. 2 Melashim 429. The holy one blessed be. He said to him, What the righteous are to perform in the future, which is to come, you wish to accomplish now, and what is written, and he laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor sound. Dibit 31. But the righteous in the future shall succeed in accomplishing this promise as it is written and every man with the staff in his hand will use it to revive the dead those who have converted from among the nations of the world as it is written of him for the child shall die a hundred years old and the sinner being a hundred years old shall be deemed cursed Yeshua 6520 
His salvation Yeshaya 259 and sing to Hashem for he has done wonders. This is known in all the earth. Yeshaya 125, 400 Rabbi Yojain and said that we have not seen a person who has explained this term better than King David who said, You hide your face, they are troubled. Tehillim 10,429 According to this, the Holy One blessed be he never harms anyone, but if he does not supervise a person, he simply dies on his own. As it is written, You hide your face, they are troubled, you take away their breath. Spirit, they die and return to their dust. But then you send forth your spirit, they are created, and finally the glory of Hashem shall endure forever. Hashem shall rejoice in his works. But 30 to 31, then shall there be laughter in the world, as it is written, then will our mouth be filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. This is as we read, and Sarah said, Elohim has made for me to laugh to rejoice in his salvation. 401 Rabbi Shia said, Come and behold when the body exists in this world it has not yet reached perfection after it becomes righteous walks the paths of honesty and dies in its righteousness then it is called Sarah lit provided what is necessary as it has been perfected when it reaches the resurrection of the dead it is still called Sarah so that nobody will say that the Holy One blessed be he has revived a different body and after it becomes alive and rejoices with the Shechina and the Holy One blessed be he has wiped all distress from the world as it is written he will swallow up death forever and Hashem Elohim will wipe away tears from off all faces Yeshayah 258 then it shall be called its hot lip be laughed because of the laughter and happiness of the righteous in the future 402 Rabbi Yehuda arrived at the village of Shinnah and all the inhabitants sent him a gift Rabbi Abba came to him and asked sir when are you leaving he replied I shall pay for what the people of the village have given me and be on my way he said to him sir do not Feel troubled because of the gift it was offered for in honor of the Torah so they will not accept anything from you. He responded, will they accept words of Torah? He said, yes, all the people of the village came. Rabbi Yehuda said, are they all Yeshiva deans? He then said, if there is anyone who does not attend the Yeshiva, let him get up and leave. Rabbi Abba stood up and separated ten men from them all to receive the leanings from Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Abba said to them, be seated here, you masters. Teachers, while the rest of us will sit with him tomorrow and receive the learnings, they went and the ten who stayed sat down, but he said nothing. They said to him, If it pleases sir, let us welcome the Shechinah. He said to them, While Rabbi Abba is not here, so they sent for him, and he came four hundred and three. He opened the discussion with the verse, and Hashem visited Sarah as he had said, Why is it written this way? It should have been written, and Hashem remembered Sarah as he said, and Elohim remembered. Rachel Bershi 3022 This is because there is no visiting unless it was previously mentioned but it was previously written I will certainly return to you this season Bershi 1810 And in relation to this issue it is now said that he visited this we derive from the words as he had said because had it not been said as he had said it would have said he remembered so the visiting is connected to the phrase he said at the time appointed I will return to you with 14404 afterward. He said the image of this righteous man who has merited to be elevated up to that glory on high is engraved on the throne of glory and each and every righteous person has his image above in the garden of Eden just as it was down below in this world this secures the holy soul and ensures its resurrection in a body in this world 405 This is what Rabbi Yochanan said that the verse the sun and moon stood still in their habitation Shabbakah 311 teaches us that the body and the soul are in the Holy supernal chamber above and shine in the same image there as they had on the earth in this world and the sustenance of this image of this world comes from the pleasure of the soul and it shall enter into this bone which is called loose that remains intact in the earth until the dead shall rise the earth is conceived by it and throws out its refuse this image is called holy 406 so when this image of this world exists above it then comes on every first day of the month to bow before the holy one blessed be he as it is written and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another Yeshaya 6623 and he the holy king says to it at the time appointed I will return to you referring to the time when he shall resurrect the dead in the future when it will be visited as was promised and this is why it is written and Hashem visited Sarah as he had said this is the day when the holy one blessed be he shall rejoice with his creations as it is written Hashem shall rejoice in his works tell him 10,431, 407. Rabbi Abba said to him as he heard him begin with the verse, Hashem shall rejoice in his works. May sir speak and tell us his explanation of the verses in this portion and not of the verses of tell him. Rabbi Yehuda said to them, It is appropriate for you to open with this passage. He said, And it came to pass after these things that the Elohim did test Abraham, and he said, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love. Bereshit 221 to 2. We should study this verse. Carefully, this is similar to a craftsman who takes silver from the earth. What does he do with it? First, he puts the raw material into the burning fire until all the dirt of the earth is removed and only the silver remains, but even this is not yet pure silver. So, what does he do next? He puts it into the fire again and extracts the dross as we may read. Take away the dross from the silver. Mishlei 254, and then the silver is pure. 408. So, does the Holy One bless be he put the body under the ground until it is completely petrified and all the rotten defilement completely leaves it and a handful of rot is all that is left and the body is rebuilt from this but it is still an incomplete body 409 this is after that great day as it is written but it shall be one day which shall be known to Hashem not day nor night Zechariah 147 this is the day when everyone shall hide in the earth as they did in the beginning that is as they were in the grave before the resurrection because of the fear and the mighty power of the Holy One blessed be he as it is written and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of Hashem and for the glory of his majesty Yeshayah 219 and their souls shall leave and a handful of rot shall be digested there the body that is rebuilt shall remain there as the light of the sun and the splendor of the firmament as it is written and they who are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament Daniel 123 and then the silver is pure which means that the body is pure without any other mixture 410 as Rabbi Yaakov said the Holy One blessed be he shall cast down a shining body from above as it is written for your dew is as the dew had tall of the herbs Yeshayah 2619 and behold Hashem will carry you away at metal telcha Yeshayah 2217 and then they shall be called celestial holy ones as it is written and Hashem shall be called holy Yeshayah 43 this is what is called the last resurrection of it dead as they shall never taste death anymore as it is written by myself I have sworn says Hashem because you have done this thing that I will exceedingly bless you Bereshit 2216 to 17 during that period the righteous pray that they may never experience this again 411 what is then written and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram Bereshit 2213 which alludes to the other wicked people of the world who are called rams as it is written the rams of Nebaioth shall Minister to you, Yeshaya 607, and this phrase is translated into Aramaic as the high ranks also, the proud people of Nebaioth caught in a thicket. This is as you may read, all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. Tehillim 7511, the phrase, and Abraham went and took the ram, means that they are about to go through all kinds of bad experiences, but the righteous in the future shall remain as the holy supernal angels to bring about the unison of his name. Therefore it is written in that, Day Hashem shall be one and his name one. Zechariah 149, 412, Rabbi Yehuda said to him from here on open up the gate, which means that from now on whoever wants to enter may do so because he has finished revealing all the most sublime mysteries. All the people of the village came to him, they said, May sir tell us a few words of the Torah about the portion of the week that we read on the day of Shabbat. And Hashem visited Sarah, he stood up between the pillars opened and said, and Hashem visited. Sarah dash the Holy One blessed be he has three keys in his hands which he did not hand over to any angel they are the key of life the key of rain and the key of resurrecting the dead Eliyahu came and took to the one of rain and the one of resurrecting the dead Rabbi Yochanan disagreed and said Eliyahu was handed only one Rabbi Yochanan explained when Eliyahu wanted to revive the son of the woman of Zarephath the Holy One blessed be he said to him it is not proper for you to take two keys and hold them in your hands so give me the key of rain and go and, and revive the dead this is as it is written go show yourself to a cap and I will send rain upon the earth I may lodge him 181 he did not say and send rain but rather and I will send rain 413 and then El
All that the Holy One blessed be he does he can do by word as soon as he says from the place of his holiness let this be done it immediately occurs behold the power of the Holy One blessed be he and his might as it is written by the word of Hashem were the heavens made Tehillim 336 Rabbi Yochanan then asked why is it written for I will pass through the land of Egypt I am not an angel Shemot 1212 415 if so it is a great honor for Egypt because it is not the same to be caught by a king and as to be caught by a simple man even more so as there is no nation that is as defiled with all sorts of impurity as Egypt of which it is written whose flesh is as the flesh of asses Yachitskal 2320 because they are suspected of sodomy and they issue from Sham who did what he did to his father who then cursed him and his son CNA and did not the Holy One blessed be he have an angel or a messenger to send to take revenge on Egypt as he had done to Ashur who was the son of Shem as it is written the children of Shem Elam and Ashur Bershi 1022 and Shem was a high priest who was blessed as it is written blessed be Hashem the Elohim of Shem Bershi 926 thus Shem received blessings and attained superiority over his brothers of them it is written and the angel of Hashem went forth and smote in the camp of Ashur Yeshayah 3736 so this revenge was accomplished by a messenger so much more so with Egypt the most impure of all nations nevertheless he said I am not an angel 416 Rabbi Yehuda said that from this we learn the great might of the Holy One blessed be he and his exaltedness which is high above all the Holy One blessed be he said this nation of Egypt is impure and full of filth so it is not proper to send an angel or anything holy among filthy impure and cursedly wicked people so I will perform what cannot be done by an angel or a messenger or a seraph from the place of my holiness I announce let this be done and immediately what cannot be done by an Angel is done so the Holy One blessed be he from his place of holiness announces let thus happen so and all that he wanted done occurs immediately therefore this revenge was not accomplished by an angel or a messenger for the dishonor of the Egyptians and to display the greatness of the Creator who did not want anything holy to enter among them according to this it is written I am not an angel I alone am able to perform this 417 Rabbi Yehuda continued by asking why is it written and Hashem spoke to the fish Yonah 211 how many righteous and pious men of Israel did the Holy One blessed be he never speak to while he came to speak to the fish who does not know or recognize him Rabbi Yehuda continued because Yonah's prayers reached to the Holy One blessed be he spoke from the place of his holiness so that the fish would vomit Yonah out and cast him ashore so why did he speak to the fish Hashem spoke to the fish so that Yonah would be thrown back to the shore so from it Place of his holiness the Holy One blessed be he said let this happen and immediately it was done something that no messenger was able to do 418 we learned as Rabbi Shimon said the key of life is in the hands of the Holy One blessed be he so while the mother still lies in labor the Holy One blessed be he examines the newborn if he is worthy of emerging and coming into this world then he opens the gates of her womb and he comes out if not then he shuts the gates and they both die if so an evil person will never come into the world rather we have learned that women die because of three transgressions Rabbi Yitzhak asked why should any woman have a miscarriage and lose the fruit of her womb Rabbi Yitzhak responded the Holy One blessed be he examines the fetus that is not fit to come into the world and kills it while it is still in the womb of its mother as it is written there were giants had Nephilim on the earth in those days Bear sheet 64 Nephilim is spelled without the first Yud had Nephilim more miscarriages and why because later the sons of Elohim came onto the daughters of men and they bore children to them by prostitution and so the number of bastards grew in the world 419 they were the men of renown which were of old bear sheet 64 because there is no greater tyrant robber or mighty man than a bastard they were recognized as men of renown lit men of the name by all and called by that known brand bastard because they all see by his actions that he is a tyrant a robber and mighty man they call him by that name and Rabbi Shimon said that the Holy One blessed be he examines the newborn there is no wicked person in the world who is not examined by the Holy One blessed be he and he checks whether that person will ever beget a righteous son or save somebody from Israel from a cruel death or do even one good deed and if the answer is yes the Holy One blessed be he allows him to come out into the world 420 in the days of Rabbi Yossi there were bandits who robbed people in the mountains along with bandits from other nations of the world when they found someone they seized him for the purpose of killing him they said to him what is your name if he was a Jew they accompanied him bringing him out and away from the mountains but if he was not a Jew they killed him Rabbi Yossi said nevertheless they are yet suitable to enter the world to come and attain its life 421 the sages taught that the following three things do not come into the world except through voices the voice of a woman giving birth as it is written in sorrow shall you bring four children bear she 316 and an Elohim here can to her bear she 3022 the voice of the rains as it is written the voice of Hashem is upon the waters tail 293 and the sound of the rumbling of the rainstorm my male Hashem 1841 the voice of the resurrection of the dead as it is written the voice cries in the wilderness Yeshua 403 what is the purpose of the voice in it? Wilderness Rabbi Zirikah says this voice came to raise the dead of the wilderness from this we derive that it is true for the whole world Rabbi Yochanan says we learn that when a man enters the grave he does so with voices and when they rise at the resurrection of the dead should they not also rise with great voices 422 Rabbi Yaakov said that a divine voice will burst in the graveyard saying awake and sing you who dwell in dust Yeshayah 2619 and they will live by the dew of a great supernal life from above as it is written for your dew is as the dew of the herbs lights and the earth shall cast out the dead Yeshayah 2619 amen may it be so end of Midrash Hanilam 423 and Hashem visited Sarah as he had said this is in accordance with what is written I will certainly return to you at the season and Sarah shall have a son and we have learned in relation to visit Sarah that visitation is related to the female while remembrance is related to the male. Therefore it is written about Sarah and Hashem visited Sarah and Hashem Bavwa Yudi Hei Bavhei is the secret of the Mukba Namely Him and His Court of Judgment the words as he had said refer to what is written as the time appointed I will return to you from this we learned that the verse and he said as the time appointed I will return to you is written as he said in a general way thus it was he namely the Mukba who had said and not any other messenger otherwise how could it be written? Here and Hashem Bavwa Yudi Hei Bavhei visited Sarah as he had said where else did he say the section 30 and Hashem did to Sarah children help their parents earn and enhance a connection to the light of the Creator when they pursue a spiritual path in life the relevance of this passage a spiritual umbilical cord between parent and child remains in place for all eternity hence the actions of a parent influence the child and the actions of the child bear. Spiritual consequences for the parents we arouse and bestow tremendous light upon our children that will help motivate and guide them towards a spiritual lifestyle and existence 424 and Hashem did to Sarah Bershi 219 he asked it is said and Hashem visited Sarah why then do we also knees and Hashem did to Sarah and he replied we have learned that the fruits of the works of the Holy One blessed be he come from the river that flows and issues from Eden which is Zeir and Benet are the souls of the righteous in other words his works are the souls of the righteous and this is Mazel it flow from where all the good blessings and blessed rains flow and from there the issue as it is written to water the garden Bershi 210 as it flows and irrigates from above downward because bearing children depends on Mazel and no other place 425 so in reference to this it is written and Hashem visited Sarah in which visit only which is the secret of Mukta is mentioned in the Phrase and Hashem did to Sarah this doing which is the secret of children and the souls of the righteous which are the fruits of his handiwork is higher than the grade of the visit which depends on Mazel as previously explained this is why it is described here as a visit which is related to the Mukbah and there as a doing which is related to Zeir and, and therefore it is said and Hashem and again and Hashem both being the same of the visit it is written and Hashem Bab Yudihe Bab visited which is the secret of him and his court of judgment which is the Mukbah while in the doing it is written Hashem Yudihe Bab did which relates to Zeir and 426 Rabbi Lazer opened the discussion with the verse for children are the heritage of Hashem and fruit of the womb is a reward Tehillim 1273 for children are the heritage of Hashem means a heritage by which one can cleave to Hashem and never
world. So because of this fruit of the womb, a person deserves to enter the eternal world. 428. Come and behold, four children are the heritage of Hashem. This refers to the inheritance and heritage of the fruit of the handiwork of the Holy One. Blessed be he, namely the tree of life as the Holy One. Blessed be he is called the tree of life because a person merits his children from there as it is written from me is your fruit found. Hashia 149. What is written happy is the man that has his. Quiver full of them, they shall not be ashamed. Tehillim 1275. Happy is he in this world, and happy is he in the world to come. 429 of the verse, they shall not be ashamed when they shall speak with the enemies at the gate of it. He asks who are the enemies at the gate, and he answers, These are the accusers, because when the soul departs from this world, many accusers are standing ready before it as it enters into its place. The gate is the gate through which it enters to reach its place, and there they wait, but it is saved from them because he has left offspring in this world, referring to his children, and because of them he shall merit the world of eternity. This is why they shall not be ashamed when they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. 430 while walking together, Rabbi Yehuda said to Rabbi Yussi, Open your mouth and delve into the teachings of Torah, for the Shechinah dwells upon you whenever a person delves into the study of Torah, the Shechinah joins him, and even more. So when walking along the road and the Shechina comes and welcomes him and goes in front of those who have merited the faith in the Holy One, blessed be he. Section 31 Your wife shall be as a fruitful vine. The importance of modesty and spiritual behavior for the wife of a man is examined through the teachings of the Holy Zohar. A woman corresponds to the sphere of Malchud which is the receptacle and vessel for the light of the Creator in this physical realm. A woman plays the same role in the physical world of family manifesting spiritual energy for the entire household. The more pure her vessel is the more light she generates for her loved ones. The relevance of this passage the letters that form these mystical texts arouse a greater sense of appreciation for the dynamic role that a woman's virtue plays in the family. This appreciation helps to purify a woman's vessel making her a more effective channel of energy for her family. 431 Rabbi Yussi. Began the discussion with the verse Your wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of your house, your children like olive plants round about your table. Tehillim 1283 Your wife shall be as a fruitful vine means that as long as the woman remains by the sides of the house and does not go outside, she is modest and worthy of bearing worthy children. As a fruitful vine means that just as a vine is always planted with its own kind, so shall an honorable wife never grow any sprouts, namely children from another man, and just as a vine is never grafted with another kind of tree, so an honorable wife never mates with another man. 432 What is her reward? It is your children like olive plants, just as the leaves of the olive plants never fall but are attached to the tree all the time, so the children like olive plants round about your table shall always be attached to you. 433 What is written next? Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that fears Hashem. Tehillim 1284 and he asks what is meant by behold that thus shall the man be blessed should it not be written behold thus and he replies this is another issue that is learned from her as long as the Shechinah was kept modestly in her place as is properly suited for her then it is as though your children like olive plants these are the children of Israel living in the land of Israel round about your table as they eat drink offer sacrifices and rejoice before the Holy One blessed be he and the upper end. Lower beings are blessed because of them 434 after the Shechinah departed from her place the children of Israel were exiled from the table of their father and dispersed among the nations and they cry out all day long but there is no one who takes heed except the Holy One blessed be he as it is written and yet for all that when they are in the land of their enemies they I cry 2644 and we do see how many holy and saintly men did perish under harsh decrees all this being a punishment of it. Torah which Israel did not observe when they lived in the Holy Land 435 as it is written because you do not serve Hashem your Elohim with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Devarim 2847 there is a secret in this verse the verse because you serve not Hashem your Elohim with joyfulness refers to when the priests offered sacrifices and burnt offerings which is done with joyfulness and with gladness of heart refers to the Levites and for the abundance of all things refers to the Israelites who are positioned in the middle between the priests and the Levites and receive blessings from both sides from the right and the left. 436 as it is written you have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. Yeshayah 92 this refers to the priests Israel rejoice before you as the joy in harvest refers to the Israelites who are blessed by the Holy One blessed be he with the harvest of the fields as they offer a tenth of everything. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil refers to the Levites who receive a tenth from the threshing floor 437 a different meaning of you have multiplied the nation is that it refers to Israel who properly keep faith in the Holy One blessed be he this is the secret of the central column which includes the right and left columns as was said before the words and increased its joy mean the grade of the supernal head referring to Chisa that has become Chakma to which Abraham has cleaved because it is called great and joyfulness can be found in it this is the secret of the right column which is Chisa 438 they rejoice before you refers to the time when they rose to cleave to you as the joy in harvest which is the congregation of Israel namely the Nukba which rejoiced in his harvest this is the secret of the left column because the reaping of the crop of the field comes from the illumination of the left and the harvest is the desired result of working it. Field so when it is said the joy in harvest this is the secret of her husband being crowned by her while she in return is not crowned by her husband as men rejoice when they divide the spoil refers to rejoicing by the other hosts and chariots those beneath the nukba while they divide among themselves the spoil and fall upon the prey before everyone else this refers to the supernal head which Abraham cleaved to and which is the secret of the right column which is Jesus. Section 32 The reckoning of the messianic era the Zohar reveals two potential ways in which the Messiah will appear in our world one is the path of mercy the other is the path of harsh judgment when we facilitate this process through our own proactive initiative towards self-transformation we can usher in the age of Messiah through the path of mercy if however heaven forbid man remains in his self-indulgent ways it will be through a path of judgment that the Messiah will appear. The relevance of this passage Kabbalistically the Messiah is not a righteous individual who will emancipate the world performing all the spiritual work on our behalf rather the concept of Messiah refers to both a personal state of existence and a global happening the toil of our own spiritual work will produce personal peace through a merciful path global turmoil will force change upon those who reject transformation as people change a critical mass will eventually be met and the global Messiah will appear to signify a new world a proactive desire for self-transformation is awakened within us so that our spiritual development occurs within a framework of mercy and positivity 439 Rabbi Yehuda opened with the verse it is time to work for Hashem for they have made void your Torah Tehillim 119126 and he asks what is the meaning of it is time to work for Hashem and he replies this has already been explained nevertheless time alludes to the congregation of Israel namely the Mukba which is called time as it is written that he come not at all times into the holy place Vayikra 162 and what is meant by that he come not at all times the meaning is similar to what is written that they may keep you from a strange woman Mishlei 75 and this also relates to the verse and offered strange fire before Hashem Vayikra 101 in other words the Mukba of the Klippot is also called time which is a strange woman a strange fire this is why it is written that he come not at all times into the holy place but only at the times of holiness and he asks why is the Mukba called time and he replies because there is a time and a period for everything this refers to the 28 periods of time that appear in the book of Kehillah in order to come closer to shine from and cleave to Zeir and properly as it is written but as for me my prayer is to you Hashem in an acceptable time Tehillim 6914 440 to work or make for Hashem is similar to what is written and David made himself a name to Shmuel 813 which means that he amended the Nukba that is called a name and in the same manner whoever studies Torah it is as though he made and prepared the time which is the Nukba to attach her to the Holy One blessed be he and why do all that why should anyone have to work and prepare the Nukba because they have made void your Torah had they not made void your Torah then there would not have ever been a separation of the Holy One blessed be he from Israel because the union of the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechina would never have been interrupted 441 Rabbi Yussi said that the same applies to the verse I Hashem will
and behold the secret that I learned at the time when the congregation of Israel was exiled from her place it was as if the letters of the holy name were separated from one another Hey was separated from Bob in the name Yudhi Hey Bob Hey as a result of the separation it is written I was done with stillness Tehillim 393 because the Bob departed from the Hey the voice disappeared as a result speech was silenced 443 and because of this she lies in the dust of exile during all that day of the Hey and when is this it is during the fifth millennium even though she was exiled before it began because the temple was destroyed during the fourth millennium it was not a full millennium and we do not count IT 444 and when the sixth millennium arrives which is the secret of the Bob namely the is it spelled with the Bob which is Z-E-I-R and then the Bob shall elevate the Hey which is the Mukba at the time of six multiplied by ten as the Bob equals six rises up to the Yud equals ten of Yudhi Hey. Bob Hay which is Chakma and then the Bob descends to the Hay and brings to it abundance 445 and when the Bob which is the secret of Z-E-I-R and then reaches completion by reaching 60 by multiplying 6 times 10 the Mukba is raised from the dust so every 60 years during the 6th millennium the Hay is strengthened and rises up through its own grades to become firm and in the year 600 of the 6th millennium the gates of wisdom of above and the fountains of wisdom below shall be opened. And the world shall be prepared to enter the 7th millennium as a person who prepares himself on the 6th day Friday as the sun sets to enter the Shabbat and as a mnemonic for this we take the verse in the 600th year of Noach's life heal the fountains of the great deep were broken open bare sheet 711 446 Rabbi Yossi said to him this is more time than the friends have said the exile of the congregation of Israel is only for one day and no more as it is written he has made me. Desolate and faint all the day each 113 this is the secret of one day of the Holy One blessed be he which I as 1000 years as explained above he said to him I have learned so from my father among the secrets of the letters of the Holy Name while you behave up and in the years of the world and the days of creation all is one secret 447 and then the rainbow will be seen in the clouds in shining colors as a woman who adorns herself for her husband because the rainbow is the mystery of it. Mukba as it is written and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant Bereshit 916 and this has already been carefully explained however and I will look upon it means in its shining colors as should properly be 448 and then it shall be said that I may remember the everlasting covenant and what is the everlasting covenant it is the congregation of Israel namely the Mukba which is the covenant and the Bob will join the hay and raise it from the dust as it is. Written and Elohim remembered his covenant. Shema 224. This is the congregation of Israel, which is the covenant as it is written, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant. Bereshit 913, 449. When the Bob, which is Zeir and Ben, is aroused toward the Hay, which is the Mukba, then signs from above shall reach the world. The children of Reuben shall wage war throughout the world, and the Holy One, blessed be he, shall remember the congregation of Israel and raise her up and out from the dust of exile. 450. And the Holy One, blessed be he, shall be with her in exile during the sixth millennium, according to the count of Bob. Bob six times yet ten equals sixty, and ten yet times sixty equals six hundred, namely the year six hundred of the sixth millennium. And then he shall rise and visit the world, which is the Mukba, to execute vengeance. And whoever is humble shall be elevated. 451. Rabbi Yossi said to him, You have spoken well because you have explained the secret of the letters of the name Yudhi Hay Bob Hay and we. Should not delve into the other calculations and end of times which are not related to the secret of these letters, for we have found an essay similar in content to this calculation of yours in the book of Rabbi Abbasabah the Elder, as it is written, and shall the land enjoy or desire her Shabbat's Vayakra 2634. And this is the secret of the Bob, which means that this desire shall not be revealed to the land which is the Mukba, except when the Bob has reached completion, as Rabbi Yehuda has explained, and it is written, and I will remember my covenant with Yaakov Vayakra 2642. Observe that Yaakov is spelled with the Bob, this is Bob fully spelled as Bob, because when the letter Bob is pronounced, we hear another Bob, the first Bob alludes to Yaakov, who is Tiferet, and the second Bob alludes to the Yazid of Zeir and which is the secret of the Bob that appears in the name Yaakov, and all is one, which means that in the name Yaakov spelled with Bob, Tiferet, and Yazid are united as. One and this is why the verse is written I will remember and later I will remember the land of it which is the congregation of Israel namely the Mukba enjoy or be a peace means that the land shall be a peace by the Holy One blessed be he as he shall raise her enjoy is read as passive be a peace for desire does not depend on the Mukba herself but on the will of Zeir and 452 as for that one day which our friends have mentioned in relation to the time of exile it is certain that everything is hidden and concealed before the Holy One blessed be he and everything is revealed through the secret of the letters of the Holy Name thus the exile which is the secret of concealment has been revealed to us by Rabbi Yesa through these letters and now through these letters the secret of redemption is revealed to us which means that it depends on the Bob of the name Yudhi Hay achieving completion 453 he said to him come and behold even when Sarah was visited she was not visited by this great of visitation which is the Mukba the Lord Hay of Yudhi Hay Bob Hay but by the secret of the Bob is written and Hashem visited Sarah Dash because and Hashem Bob Yudhi Hay Bob Hay refers to him and his court of judgment him is the secret of Zeir and but namely the Bob while his court of judgment is the Mukba therefore even the visitation of Sarah was by the letter Bob of Yudhi Hay Bob Hay because everything is according to the secret of the Bob and everything is included within it that is everything is concealed within the letter Bob and everything is revealed there as well in other words everything becomes revealed by the completion of the letter Bob for everything that is concealed may reveal all that is concealed but nothing that is revealed may come and reveal what is concealed 454 Rabbi Yossi said how long do we have to endure the exile until we reach that time and the Holy One blessed be he made everything depend on whether they atone for their sins and repented whether they merited redemption or not whether they repented or not as it is written I Hashem will hasten it in its time Yeshayah 6022 if they are worthy that is if they repent it will hasten it but if they are unworthy that is they do not repent then in its time 455 as they walked on Rabbi Yossi said I have just remembered that I once sat in this place with my father he said to me my son when you are 60 years old you will find in this place a treasure of sublime wisdom and I have just reached this age yet I have still found nothing and I do not know if these new explanations are that wisdom that he told me I shall find 456 and he further said to me when strikes of fire shall reach the palms of your hands and the wisdom shall disappear from you I said to him my father how do you know this he replied I know this by these two birds that have passed over your head 457 in the meantime Rabbi Yossi left Rabbi Yehuda and entered a cave where he found a hidden book in a cleft of a rock at the far end he took it and left with it 458 as he opened the book he saw 72 forms of letters that were handed down to Adam by these letters Adam knew the entire wisdom of the holy supernal beings and all the clipot that abide behind the millstones which revolve around behind the veil that covers the supernal lights together with all the things that are destined to come upon the world until the day when a cloud will rise from the west and the world will be dark in 459 he called to Rabbi Yehuda and they both started to study the book after examining only two or three pages they were already contemplating the supernal wisdom as soon as they read further and spoke with each other a flame and a strong wind struck their hands and the book vanished Rabbi Yossi went and said it could be that we have sinned or we are not worthy of knowing this 460 when they told Rabbi Shimon the story he said maybe you dealt into those letters that deal with the days of Mashiach they answered we do not know because we have forgotten everything Rabbi Shimon continued the Holy One blessed be he does not wish that too much be revealed to the world but when the days of Mashiach are near even infants in the world will discover the secrets of wisdom and through them know how to calculate the time of the redemption and figure the end of days at that time it will be revealed to everyone therefore it is written for then will I turn to the people's a pure language Sephania 39 what is meant by then it means at the time when the congregation of Israel shall rise from the dust and the Holy One blessed be he shall raise her up then I will turn to the people's a pure language that they may all call upon Hashem and serve him with one consent if it 
pertains to the removal of man's desire to receive for the self alone the relevance of this passage. The first step in transformation involves a recognition and admittance of our self-indulgent desires. The self-acknowledgement is 90% of the battle. The light of the Creator is then free to enter and eradicate the dark recesses of our nature towards that end. This passage arouses self-awareness, thus banishing our own evil inclinations and negative attributes from our character. 463 and Sarah. Saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian which she had born to Abraham mocking Bershi 219 Rabbi she has said from that day when Itzhak was born Yishmael was not mentioned by his name as long as he was still present in the house of Abraham this is because in the presence of gold refuse cannot be mentioned why is it written the son of Hagar the Egyptian and not Yishmael the son of Hagar because his name should not be mentioned in the presence of Itzhak 464 Rabbi Itzhak said and Sarah saw she looked at him disdainfully as she did not look at him as the son of Abraham but rather as the son of Hagar the Egyptian thus it is written and Sarah saw because only Sarah saw him this way not Abraham so with Abraham it is not written the son of Hagar but his son 465 come and behold after this it is written and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's eyes because of his son Bershi 2111 it is not written because of the son of Hagar the Egyptian and in contrast to this. It is written and Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian as she did not see him as the son of Abraham 466 Rabbi Shimon said this passage shows that Sarah is praiseworthy because she saw him participating in idolatrous practices she said this boy is definitely not the son of Abraham who shall follow the example of Abraham rather he is the son of Hagar the Egyptian as he has returned to his mother's way of life because of this she said to Abraham cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be here with my son with its hockey but 10 467 now Sarah was not jealous or envious of her or her son if she were the holy one blessed be he would not have supported with the words and all that Sarah says to you hearken to her voice bear she 2112 in fact it was only because she saw him indulging in idolatrous practices and his mother teaching him the laws of idol worshiping that she said for the son of this bondwoman shall not be here I know. That he shall never inherit a portion of the faith and he shall have no share with my son not in this world and not in the world to come and this is why the holy one blessed be he supported her 468 and the holy one blessed be he wanted the holy seed separated for that was why he created the world Israel was already in the mind of the holy one blessed be he even before he created the world this is why Abraham appeared in the world which continued to exist because of him so Abraham and Itzhak remained insecurely in their places until Yaakov appeared in the world 469 as soon as Yaakov came into the world Abraham and Itzhak were established as was the whole world from there from Yaakov the holy nation was born in a holy way this is why the holy one blessed be he said to him and all that Sarah says to you hearken to her voice for in Itzhak shall your seed be called dash and not in Yishmael 470 after this it is written and she departed and wandered in it. Wilderness of Beersheba Beershe 2114 it is written here and wondered have Beta in the wilderness and elsewhere it is written they are vanity and the works of delusion have tied to you I'm your male 1015 from this we learn by analogy that because it refers to idol worshipping in the latter verse so it refers to idol worshipping in the former and for the sake of Abraham the holy one blessed be he did not abandon her and her son but saved them from thirst even though she indulged in idol worshipping 471 come and behold in the beginning when she ran away from Sarah it is written because Hashem has heard your affliction Beershe 1611 now however that she went astray and followed idolatrous practices even though it is written and she lifted up her voice and wept Beershe 2116 Elohim heard the voice of the latter bit 17 instead of and Elohim heard your voice 472 the words where he is a bit have already been explained Yishmael was not yet punishable by the Heavenly Court of Judgment At the earthly court of judgment the person can be punished after the age of 13 but at the heavenly court of judgment the person must be at least 20 years of age to be punished as a result even though he was wicked he was too young to be punished this is why it is written where he is which means that because he was younger than 20 years of age the Holy One blessed be he spared his life 473 Rabbi Lazar asked if this is so then why punish anyone before? He reaches the age of 20 under the age of 13 years even though he is not yet punishable he can be sentenced to death because of the sins of his father because he is under his father's authority but after the age of 13 why does this happen as he is no longer subject to his father's authority could it be that he is punished and sentenced to death while he is still too young and therefore unpunishable he replied the Holy One blessed be he has mercy on him so that he may die as a Righteous person and he gives him a good reward in the world of eternity so that he may not die as a wicked person and be punished in that world. This has already been explained. 474 He said to him, If he is a wicked person who has not yet reached the age of 20 years, how is this resolved? If he departs from this world, where is he punished? You cannot say that he may die a righteous person because he is a wicked person and a not righteous one. He responded in this case, the verse, but sometimes ruin comes for want of judgment. Michele 1323 is fulfilled. He is punished without judgment because when a punishment descends into the world, he referring to the person under 20 years of age meets the angel of destruction who punishes him without it being intended from above or below. This means that without any express intention from the heavenly court of judgment above or earthly court of judgment below, he is punished for the sole reason that he was not protected from the angel of Destruction from above once he meets the angel of destruction he no longer distinguishes between good and bad 475 of him it is written his own iniquities shall trap the wicked man Michele 522 here the particle et is written to include those who are not a punishable age his own iniquities shall trap the wicked man and not the heavenly court of judgment and he shall be caught fast in the cords of his sins and not by the earthly court of judgment this is why it is written for Elohim has heard the voice of the lad where he is as he was not yet old enough to be punished for his sins therefore Elohim heard his voice even though he was evil section 34 the signs heralding Mashiach there are various windows of opportunity during a 6,000 year period of transformation where we can bring about world peace through a proactive change of our nature the Zohar expounds upon these opportunities and the signs that signal their arrival it Relevance of this passage oftentimes hardships and obstacles appear to provide us with an opportunity to grow and evolve spiritually if we are not cognizant of this truth our tendency is to react in despair and with distress consciousness creates our reality therefore our negative thoughts and doubts become akin to self-fulfilling prophecies the light of this passage helps us recognize and connect to positive transformational opportunities when they appear throughout our life this ensures a life filled with meaning as opposed to the illusion of random chaos 476 Rabbi Shimon opened the discourse with the verse and I will remember my covenant with Yaakov Vayikra 2642 the name Yaakov is written in full it includes the Vav he asks why and he answers it appears from two sides the first is the secret of wisdom namely the Vav which is the secret of the great of Chakma where Yaakov dwells the second is because this passage refers to the exile of the children of Israel while in Captivity they will be visited also redeemed by the power of the letter Vav which symbolizes the sixth millennium through the letter Vav their exile is ended this is why Yaakov is spelled with Vav the children of Israel shall be redeemed from exile by the Vav equals six which represents the sixth millennium 477 and the visitation according to the secret of the Vav occurs at six and one half moments after the sixtieth year to the bar on the door of the sixth millennium the Vav namely Tiferet which is the secret of the middle bar of the tabernacle that runs through the boards from one end to the other and is therefore described as the bar of the door dash shall Elohim of heaven visit the daughter of Yaakov and after six and a half years have passed she shall be remembered this is the duration of the visitation and from that time another six years shall pass which is the duration of the remembrance this total seventy two and a half years four hundred and seventy eight in the year sixty six the king Mashiach will appear. In the land of Galilee and he is called Mashiach ben Yosef Messiah the son of Yosef he will therefore appear in the Galilee in the possession of Yosef a star from the east will swallow up seven stars from the north and a flame of black fire will be suspended from the heavens for sixty days wars will be begun in the world from the north and two kings will fall in these wars 479 and all the nations will be united against the daughter of Yaakov in order to drive her out of this world and of that time it is written and it is a time of
will join the Hay and they shall bring all your brethren out of all the nations for an offering to Hashem Yeshea 6620. This is when they shall be gathered from the diaspora of the children of Yishmael who are the head also leaders of all the forces of the Klippa from the right as Rome is for the left shall join together at that time with all the nations of the world who have not gone to Rome and come to Jerusalem to wage war as it is written for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem too. Battle Zechariah 142 The kings of the earth stand up and the rulers take counsel together against Hashem and against his anointed Tehillim 22 and he that sits in heaven laughs Hashem has them in derision Tehillim 24 482 After all the forces of the other side the right and the left are wiped out of the world the small Bob which is Yezid of Zeir and Ben will join the hay and renew old souls namely all the souls that were in the body since the creation of the world in order to renew the world which is Malchut as it is written let Hashem rejoice in his works and may the glory of Hashem endure forever Tehillim 10431 which means that in order for the hay to join the Bob properly let Hashem rejoice in his works let him bring his works down referring to the renewed souls into the world so they all become new creatures and all the worlds are united 483 Happy are all those who shall remain in the world at the end of the sixth millennium and enter the Shabbat which is the Seventh millennium because that is a day for Hashem alone to join the hay properly and call new souls in order to bring them into the world. This refers to the souls that have not yet come into the world together with the renewed souls that have been there from the beginning as it is written and it shall come to pass that he that is left in sign and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy everyone that is written for life in Jerusalem. Yeshua 43 section. 35 and Elohim tested Abraham the Zohar explores the story of the binding of Isaac the biblical character of Isaac is a code referring to the left column energy or reactive self-centered nature Abraham corresponds to the right column or positive sharing attributes the story is a metaphor for man's spiritual work which is to bind and transform his selfish reactive desires into positive and sharing qualities that embody care and concern for others the relevance of this passage repeatedly. Something in our nature provokes us to indulge in negative behavior even though it goes against our very will. Likewise, we're compelled to forsake positive actions despite our best intentions to follow through this uniquely human idiosyncrasy is a depiction of the ongoing conflict between the body's desire to receive and the soul's desire to share. We arouse the inner strength and willpower to bind our own evil inclination and negative impulses known cabalistically as the desire to receive for the self alone. 484 And it came to pass after these things that Elohim tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he replied, Behold, here I am. Verse 221 Rabbi Yehuda began the discussion with the verse, You are making Elohim Tehillim 445. This symbolizes the complete unification of all the grades as one they are attached to one another. This is because in this verse are the Sfirat Chesed, Burat Tiferet, and Malchut, which represent all the grades because you alludes to Chesed. According to the mystery of the verse, you are a priest forever. Tehillim 1104 Elohim is Burar is Tiferet and Mikhing is Malchut 485. Command deliverances for Yaakov. Tehillim 445 means that all the messengers who accomplish their missions in the world shall be from the side of mercy and not from the side of judgment. There are emissaries from both sides, some from the side of mercy and some from the side of harsh judgment. Those messengers who come from the side of mercy never take on themselves a mission of judgment in the world. 486 You might say, but we have learned that the angel that was revealed to Balaam was a messenger of mercy who changed to a messenger of judgment, thereby showing that a messenger of mercy can execute judgment. However, the answer is no, he never changed to execute judgment. Rather, he was a messenger of mercy who came to protect Israel and to be in their favor. But toward Balaam, he was a messenger of judgment. So these are the ways of it. Holy One, blessed be he when he does good to someone, we can see that this benefit to one person may be a punishment for another person, and so first he was a messenger of mercy for Israel, but for Balaam he was a messenger of judgment because of this he pleaded command deliverances for Yaakov. Thus David said, Command this for the world, so that when a messenger will be sent, he will be from the side of mercy. 487 Rabbi Abba said, Command deliverances for Yaakov means that he prayed for Yaakov, he prayed for those in exile that they might receive salvation. Come and behold, Yaakov was the glory of the patriarchs. Had it not been for Itzhak, Yaakov would not have appeared in the world for this reason. Command deliverances for Yaakov alludes to Itzhak, who is the deliverer of Yaakov, because when Itzhak was saved during the binding of Itzhak, this was the deliverance of Yaakov. 488 And it came to pass after these things, Rabbi Shimon said, We have learned that the words. And it came to pass had Vayahi in the days are said concerning trouble thus even though it is not written in the days of there is still a certain tinge of distress as it says Vayahi and it came to pass after means that it happened after the lowest of the supernal grades of Atzala and what is it it is these things had Devarim namely Malchut as it is written I am not a man of words had Devarim Shemot 410 489 and what is after this grade that is after Malchut this is a reference to the words that Elohim tested Abraham which mean that the evil inclination came from there to lay accusations before the Holy One blessed be he therefore Elohim tested Abraham this phrase should be studied carefully it should have been written tested Itzhak because Itzhak was already 37 years old and his father could no longer be punished for his sin so if Itzhak had said I refuse to obey his father would not have been punished because of him so then why is it written that Elohim tested Abraham rather than tested Itzhak 490 and he replies it should definitely be written tested Abraham because he was supposed to be included within judgment as there was no judgment in Abraham previously he had consisted entirely of Chesed now water was mixed with fire Chesed was mixed with judgment so Abraham did not achieve perfection until he crowned prepared himself to execute judgment and establish it in its place 491 so all his life he did not reach perfection until now until water mixed with fire right mixed with left and fire with water left with right this is why Elohim tested Abraham and not Itzhak because the Holy One blessed be he invited Abraham to be included with judgment according to the secret of the left so when he performed the act of binding Itzhak the fire entered the water that is judgment entered Chesed and they were perfected by each other as was said before this is what the act of judgment accomplished it Included one within the other. This is also the reason why the evil inclination came and accused Abraham of not being properly perfected until he performed the act of judgment by binding its hot. The place of the evil inclination is after beyond these things which alludes to Malchut according to the secret of the verse sin crouches at the door. Verse 47 And so he came to persecute 492. Come and behold, observe the mystery behind this issue, even though it is written Abraham and not its hot. Its hot is still included in the passage. It is written Elohim tested et Abraham rather than tested Abraham instead of a data particle. It uses et et is accurate and alludes to its hot because at that time its hot resided in lower bureau, which refers to the Nukba. And as he was bound and underwent the trial of judgment performed by Abraham, its hot was crowned in its place together with Abraham and the fire combined with the water and rose upward and Abraham with Chesed rose up. To Chakma and Itzhak with Bura rose up to Bana then the dispute was settled properly because they made peace between themselves as fire and water were combined and became inclusive of each other. 493 Who has ever seen a merciful father do a cruel thing to his son? It is only to settle the dispute and combine water with fire. This refers to the attribute of Chesed of Abraham with the fire of Itzhak and each one is properly crowned in its place and this remains so until Yaakov appeared who was the secret of the central column and everything was properly established and all three patriarchs achieved perfection which means that they became a chariot for the upper three columns and so the upper and lower beings were properly established. 494 of the verse and he said take now your son. Verse 222 He asked how could Abraham have taken Itzhak his son by force when he was old if you say that Itzhak was still under his authority and therefore had to obey his Father's commandments it would be a good explanation but this is similar to take Aaron and Eleazar his son Demidbar 2025 where the meaning is only to convince them with words and remind them that they should fulfill the will of the Holy One blessed be he so here as well with Abraham the meaning is to take by verbal persuasion your son your only son whom you love it's hot and go to the land of Moriah as it is written I will go to the mountain of Merhad Morshur Hashirim 
eyes and saw the place afar off Bereshit 224 The meaning of on the third day has already been explained but since it has already been stated and he rose up and went to the place of which the Elohim had told him Abit 3 one should ask why does it then say on the third day and he saw the place afar off what do we learn from this repetition he replies it is written for in Itzhak shall your seed be called Bereshit 2112 because Yaakov came from him Itzhak is the secret of the left column which has no existence without the central column which is Yaakov and he is called the third day because Abraham Itzhak and Yaakov are the secret of Chesed Bira and Tiferet which are called three days thus Yaakov who is Tiferet is equivalent to the third day this is why he looked for Yaakov who is the cause of the existence of Itzhak 496 the words and saw the place afar off are similar to from afar off as Hashem appeared to me your Mayah 313 which is the secret of the central column the phrase and he saw the place refers to Yaakov of whom it is written and he took of the stones of that place Bereshit 2811 so Abraham looked into the third day which is the third grade namely Tiferet and there he saw Yaakov who was to issue from him but afar off means at some distant time as we have already explained rather than in the near future 497 Rabbi Lazar said to him what is Abraham praised for as he already saw that Yaakov was destined to issue from him since he was on his way to sacrifice Itzhak this cannot be such a great praise for him this is particularly true because this must have brought some doubt into his mind about the Holy One blessed be he if he is about to offer him as a sacrifice how then will Yaakov be born 498 he said to him it is certain that he saw Yaakov because even before the sacrifice Abraham had knowledge of wisdom this means that he had already attained the supernal mokin that flow over the three Columns the third column of which is Yaakov so now he looked into the third day which is the third grade Tiferet to draw perfection from it that is to complete his mokin because perfection cannot be reached except through the central column and the scriptures say that he saw Yaakov as it is written and he saw the place meaning he saw the central column which is called Yaakov but this still remained far off from him as he could not achieve it now he was on his way to bind Itzhak and did not wish to have any doubts about the Holy One blessed be he who told him to offer Itzhak as a sacrifice and therefore he did not achieve the central column completely as is further explained 499 the words of far off mean that he only saw him through a clouded mirror which is why he did not see him clearly if the illuminating mirror had been over the opaque mirror then Abraham would have grasped him properly but this was not the case thus Abraham saw him only from afar off. 500 and he asks why did the clear shining mirror disappear and he replies because this is the grade of Yaakov and as Yaakov was not yet born his aspect was not yet present over this grade furthermore it disappeared so that Abraham could go and bind his son and receive his reward so accordingly he saw the place afar off means that he saw Yaakov as is explained afar off meaning that he did not reach him 501 the verse and they came to the place which the Elohim had told him of. Bereshit 229 implies that even though he had the ability to see Yaakov Abraham said that the Holy One blessed be he who told him to bind Itzhak certainly knows another way to achieve this end so immediately Abraham built an altar there which means that even though he saw that Itzhak would bear Yaakov he had no doubts about the commands of the Holy One blessed be he and because of his trust in the Holy One blessed be he, he built an altar 502 but before this it is written and Itzhak spoke to Abraham his father and said my father Ibit 7 which has already been explained but why did he not reply to him at all and he replied because Abraham ceased to have the mercy of the father towards his son instead the attribute of judgment came upon him this is the reason why he did not answer him the first time thus it is written here I am my son here I am as if to say the mercy has gone and changed into judgment 503 note that it is written and Abraham said rather then and his father said this is because he was no longer like a father but had become an adversary of the verse Elohim will provide himself a lamb he said it should have been written will provide us and not himself and he replies that he said to him Elohim will provide for his own needs at the time when he shall need it but now my son and not the lamb I asked the offering immediately it is written they went both of them together which means that Itzhak followed the will of his father. 504 Rabbi Shimon began with the verse Behold the mighty ones shall cry outside ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly Yeshayah 337 in this verse the mighty ones also angels are the celestial angels who cried out at the time when Itzhak was bound upon the altar and wanted the holy one blessed be he to remember and fulfill the promise in the verse and he took him outside Bereshit 155 which alludes to the blessing of his offspring therefore they shall cry outside is written 505. Ambassadors of peace are other angels who were destined to walk in front of Yaakov for Yaakov's sake the Holy One blessed be he promised them perfection as it is written and Yaakov went on his way and the angels of Elohim met him Bereshit 322 these are called the angels of peace and they all wept as they saw Abraham binding Itzhak the upper and lower beings trembled and shook for the sake of Itzhak section 37 Abraham Abraham during the binding of Itzhak an angel calls out the name of Abraham twice Kabbalistically Isaac corresponds to man's negative and selfish desire to receive the root of all egotistic and self-centered behavior Abraham is a metaphor for the positive sharing attributes of man Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son Isaac is a code signifying the complete subjugation of Abraham's negative desire to receive the second utterance of Abraham's name by the angel indicates the complete transformation of Abraham's nature into the desire to share the relevance of this passage Abraham's extraordinary actions and faith created a reservoir of spiritual energy for all future generations to draw upon in their effort to completely transform their nature the change in Abraham's name and its appearance in this text of Zohar is the portal through which the energy flows these metaphysical forces arouse an awareness of our own negative attributes and generates the desire and strength to subjugate our ego transforming all our wanted desires into positive attributes that embody care and compassion for others 506 and the angel of Hashem called to him Abraham Abraham Bereshit 2211 there is a disjunctive mark between the two Abrahams which means that the second Abraham is not the same as the first Abraham after the binding has achieved perfection because he has been included with Itzhak while the first Abraham has not yet achieved perfection because he was not yet included within Itzhak Similarly Shmuel Shmuel I Shmuel 310 also has a disjunctive mark between the two names which means that the latter is perfected while the first is not why because the latter was already a prophet while the former had not yet achieved that grade but in Moshe Moshe Shema 34 there is no pause between the names because ever since the day Moshe was born the Sheshana never left him thus there is no difference between the latter and the former Abraham Abraham Rabbi Shia said the reason why he called his name twice was to arouse him with a different spirit a different action and a different heart 507 Rabbi Yehuda said Itzhak was purified and elevated properly before the Holy One blessed be he by being bound upon the altar like the odor of the incense of spices which the priests offered before him twice a day thus the sacrifice was perfected as if it were offered and burned as a sweet savor before Hashem Abraham felt sorry when he was told lay not your hand upon the lad neither do anything to him Bereshit 2212 because he thought it meant that his offering was not perfect that all his preparations and the building of the altar were in vain but immediately it is written and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket of it 13 and he offered it instead of its hawk and so achieved perfection 508 we have learned that this ram was the one that was created at twilight on Friday of creation but he was one year old as it is written one he lamb a year old Emit bar 763 it was required for him to be one year old just as a daily offering if so how can you say that the ram was born at twilight and he replies it was predestined and at twilight on Shabbat that the ram would be at hand for Abraham when he should be in need of it so it was really born at twilight and when it was one year old it chanced upon Abraham it was like all the other things created on Shabbat at twilight which means that they were predestined to actually appear at the time of need and so was that ram which was sacrificed instead of its hawk section 38 in all their affliction he was afflicted in the same way that a parent suffers when his or her child is hurting the Zohar reveals that the creator equally suffers when anyone in this world undergoes pain the relevance of this passage the conventional religious view of the creator is of a deity who meets out punishments and rewards in reality the creator is an infinite force of sharing whose essence is only
Letter Aleph, but pronounced low he was with the letter Vav because the Holy One blessed be he is distressed by their affliction so low with an Aleph which means that he was not distressed refers to a higher place even though there is no sorrow or grief up there at the place described by the words strength and gladness are in his place I Abraham in 1627 nevertheless the afflictions of Israel reach this high place the term low with an Aleph is used similarly and it is he that has made us and not have low ourselves tail in 1003 where low is written with an Aleph but pronounced with a Vav which literally means and we belong to him have low 510 of the verse and the angel of his presence saved them in 639 he asked but he is together with them in their affliction as the beginning of the verse states now you are saying that he saved them if he is still together with them in their affliction and he has not yet saved them and he replies it is not written saves them but saved them in the past tense meaning that they had already been saved this means that he saved them by staying together with them in the same affliction and suffering with them come and behold every time the children of Israel are in exile the Shechinah is with them this has already been explained as it is written then Hashem your Elohim will return your captivity and have compassion upon you Devarim 303 the verse will return your captivity literally means will return using the intransitive meaning to inform us that the Shechinah is with them in exile namely will sit 511 a different explanation of the verse and the angel of his presence saved them is that it refers to the Shechinah which is with them in exile as is stated in the beginning of the verse you claim that he saved them but if he is together with them in exile then he has not yet saved them and he replies it is certainly true that the residing places of the Holy One blessed be he in exile are Wherever the afflictions of Israel are meaning that the Holy One blessed be he is present in every single affliction and sorrow brought upon Israel and because the Shechinah resides with them the Holy One blessed be he remembers to benefit them and draw them out of exile as it is first written and I have remembered my covenant Shema 65 which refers to the Shechinah later it is written and now behold the cry of the children of Israel has come to me Shema 39 so he actually saved them by being with them in their affliction and even though the former verse appears after the latter there is no contradiction here because there is no chronological sequence in the Torah 512 the phrase moreover I have seen includes another scene which is the first among all as it is written and Elohim remembered his covenant Shema 224 which is the Shechinah this verse appears before the verse and I have remembered my covenant with E.T. Abraham he asks it should have been written Remembered his covenant for Abraham's sake and he answers with Abraham alludes to the unison and joining of the Shechinah with the patriarchs because the particle ET written before Abraham is the name of the Shechinah so with Abraham means the southwest that is the embracing of the right because the south is the secret of the right and of Chesed which is Abraham the west is the secret of the Shechinah which is called ET and which Abraham embraces with Chesedim with its hawk. Refers to the northwest namely the embracing of the left because the north is the secret of the left and of Bura which is called its hawk and the west is the secret of the Shechinah which is called ET and which its hawk embraces with its Gavurat and with Yaakov means one union one holy perfect and complete union as should properly be this alludes to the mating of Zeir and which is called Yaakov with the Shechinah which is called ET and the mating cannot be completed without. The central column which is Yaikov so with Abraham and its hawk there was only embracing therefore it is written of Yaikov one union thus the phrase and with have VET Yaikov consists of them both as one whole so the extra letter Bob in VET alludes to the perfection of this mating which is a perfect and complete mating 513 similarly IT is written ET the heavens bear sheet 11 which is the quality of the night which is the nukbah with day which is ZEIR and the VET earth refers to the union of the quality of the day with the quality of the night as one this refers to the inclusion of ZEIR and in the nukbah because the letter Bob in VET and the alludes to union of the male with the female so the term ET though appears in them all as in with ET Abraham and with ET its hawk however in reference to Yaikov it is written and with VET which shows that they are in complete unison for the male and female never depart from each other and the holy one. Blessed be he in the future shall make his voice heard and announce to all the world for he said surely they are my people children that will not deal falsely so he was their savior Yeshua 638 blessed be Hashem forevermore amen and amen.